gonna take you on a ride Till we find answers within Location I'm not here In shadows we all disappear Hold on, switch gears We're gone as fast as we appear
History, strategy, and mystery. Across the ages, wars have been won and lost on a knife's edge. Yet these three themes have remained true. From the battle cries of ancient barbarian hordes to the crack of gunpowder sparking. Age of Empires is all around us. A truly global game with a community that spans the length of the world. And many on this planet have played since they could barely walk. With players sliding up to a computer hearing the soft whir of the fans as it turns on. Eyes gleaming at the prospect of controlling your empire's destiny. In this realm, you cease to be yourself and become a hero of an age-long past. But these heroes are not gone. They are undying. They live on through our actions and deeds. So when these heroes all meet on the field of battle, something unique is created. Stories are made that transcend time itself. And these stories, well, they become something more. They become legend. ladies and gents welcome back man i'm actually seeing a lot of first messages today on day three that's exciting maybe people didn't want to chat at this point and they're finally coming out of the woodwork welcome also seeing a lot of return faces welcome to the third day of hidden cup five you're staring at the trophy in our in our trophy room looking pretty snazzy if you ask me and uh, we'll see which hero is going to lift that. We are still early days here in Hidden Cup 5. Uh, the first two days, we had some big names guests. Very curious to see what you guys think on that, because we, are, we got eight more, eight more players to meet, and we're going to meet four more today. Uh, but anyways, welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here again. I appreciate you guys. Nice to see everybody. And uh, there we go. Nice to be seen here this morning. I know it's not morning. I, I watched the... Well, it's not morning for some of you. As I, I look at the data and some of you guys are watching, it's, it's actually near midnight. So welcome in those of you who stayed up late and will continue to wreck your sleep schedules or your work schedules or whatever else for Hidden Cup. Uh, so thank you guys for that in advance. Uh, let's go to the bracket and talk about what has happened already over the first two days. Uh, we are going to do that in a moment and go through just the schedule of things so you kind of know what, how things are breaking down. Uh, before, well, no, not before we do that. After we do that, I'll get to some shout outs here because apparently somebody quit their job to watch this. Hey, uh, you, well done. I'm not going to say your name because the start starts with Ligma and I, I'm experienced on the internet. Uh, so after the first two, uh, sets and, or sorry, after the first four sets and the first two days in Hidden Cup 5, these are the results. We had Vasco da Gama taking down Patrick Cutie. We had Sumanguru taking down Jean Biro. It, the craziest set so far was Otto the Great against Jadwiga yesterday, where Otto the Great moved on. And Otto the Great will be up against the great Gajamata. Gajamata with a crazy 4-0 over Gregory the Seventh. But for those that didn't see the games, for those that didn't have time, it's all good. There's been lots of Age of Empires. That Gregory the Seventh character was extremely strong and... That 4-0 does not tell the whole story of that series, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people were speculating on who that Gregory VII could be. We had big names mentioned uh, as, as, you know, could be our fallen hero there. So let's, let's go through some of the, what I have the, as the categories of players before we start our day. Uh, this is tough to do because we have the top 16, but we're going to start with who I call the rising stars of Hidden Cup 5. Because... I want to break down what to look for, what these players are known for, what they can do, and uh, what they're capable of, maybe what their preferences are. And these, these players I would consider the rising stars. So you've got Hart. Now Hart uh, has actually been around longer than all of these players, but he did have a hiatus where he was away from the game, and he's had a very strong year or two. Um, obviously, S-tier results for these guys, pretty slim pickings, at least being top four. But Hart, in my opinion, of these four, has improved the most and has looked incredibly strong coming into Hidden Cup. 
you can see kind of his preferences there with the with the power graph uh as far as his preferences with civilizations and win rates and things like that as well moving on to mihai uh mihai the only other player who is known to pick yellow we have yet to see a single player pick yellow for their color so far in hidden cup mihai extremely consistent many people think we saw mihai already i'm not so sure many people think if it wasn't mihai that was john bureau it was Sebastian, the young gun from Uruguay. And uh, we'll see. You know, time will tell. I, I, I still am not sure if I've seen Sebastian. Still holding out hope, though, that maybe Mihai is still out there and was not defeated as Jean Bureau. And then we have Ganji. Ganji is, is possibly our greatest monk player. We'll have a graphic for that later on in the day uh, out of everybody here in Hidden Cup. So if you're looking for one particular thing, it would be a player who can instantly get his monks targeted onto different knights. But uh, or or whatever it may be, actually, and we have seen some players very good at that. But yeah, that's your information on Ganji. As we move on to the next category, a category that let's say you don't know all top six top sixteen players here, and you only know let's say ten names, you might know this next category. Now, production, uh, I have forgotten the name of this category. Thank you, the Dark Horses. Thank you. Uh, I think Dark uh, Production was hoping for me to prompt them there. It is still early for me, <laughs> um, and we've got some we've got some big names here, man. MBL, MBL with a lot of top four performances, never quite getting that win, but he's been around a long time. Uh, then you have Vinchester. Vinchester has accomplished so much. Vinchester, such talent, such such aggression. Again, people were talking a lot about those two players, saying we already saw them. I'm not so certain. Sato. Like Sato is an extremely aggressive player, a player that many people could confuse for some other top few names. And then you have Barles, and Barles is extremely strategic, extremely solid. There's nothing of, of note that I can really stand out except for that, just being extremely on top of it all the time for Barles. So if you see a player that doesn't really waver, that brings the same level all the time, it might be Barles. But then we move on, and we move on to players that have gotten a lot closer to winning a Hidden Cup. Have never won a Hidden Cup, but have done well in Hidden Cup and also done well in many other events. We have Leary there. I mean, the S-tier results for Leary is just insane. 11 second-place S-tier results. 11. Doesn't have as many first-place finishes, which will be a bummer for Leary fans and for him as well, but 11 second-place finishes is wild. And then you've got Doubt, who's been around as, I mean, well, I was going to say as long as the game. Doubt has been playing the game as long as Leary has been alive. That is an actual stat. Doubt has been playing the game as long as Leary has been alive. And he has accomplished a lot. And he's a very unique player. And then you've got Jordan, who's been around a long time. Jordan was our second place finisher in Hidden Cup 4. And then ACCM. You know, ACCM may be a player who doesn't have as many big top four finishes as many of these guys. But he is the pro player that everyone seems to speak to saying how good his strategy is, how good he can be, and that he has the, that ability to take it to the next level. But it is from there, we move on to the big four. And it was tough to choose big four, but, well, not really, actually. We've got the Viper with a whopping 15 S-tier results in first. Uh, FYI, viewers, my neighbor decided this would be a great time to, I don't know, weed whack or whatever he's doing right outside so if you happen to hear a noise beyond my voice, that is my freaking neighbor being diligent outside. Did he not know it was Hidden Cup? I put flyers on everyone's door. I was wondering why no one was talking to me. Anyways, um, Viper has done so much in Age of Empires. He's been around for so long, and he's accomplished so much. And then you've got Hera, who has inched into that position where he now is the new favorite. He won Hidden Cup 4 the last year or two. has been incredibly dominant for him. People wondering, will Viper and Hera meet possibly in the first rounds? Because that is possible in Hidden Cup. Where Will they meet at all? Who knows? Beyond that, we have Tato. Now, many people feel very strongly that they, we saw Hera and Vasco da Gama, and then that we saw Tato yesterday as Gajimata. And Tato, he might not have as many first place finishes, but his big win in Red Bull, uh, Red Bull Legacy, I believe it was, uh, was one of the best S-tier results any player could ever have. 
amazing accomplishment from Tato. And I believe Tato is only getting better as time progresses here. And then you've got old, old Mr. Consistent Yo. Yo, we, we looked at some of the formation stats yesterday. He might not switch formations as, as much as other people, but uh, Yo is really solid. And he's always, he's always around, man. He's always consistent. He is like always top four, it feels like. And he was top four in Hidden Cup 4, and we'll see if he makes it back to top four again. Uh, and with that, friends, we are going to talk. What are we talking about here? I, I'm fully, I, I'm okay with, okay, I, I'm okay with admitting to you at the start of day three that I haven't drank my coffee here yet. So I'm trying to pace myself with that. We're going to move on and we're going to sum up what happened yesterday. How many people here smile at me in chat if missed some of yesterday? We're going to go through it briefly right now before we move on. Trust me. You are going to want a recap on what happened yesterday. Yesterday was unbelievable. This, the first series, you had Viga against Out of the Great, had so much diversity, so much strategy. Started all off on Hidden Forts, where we had Yadviga cutting through the middle, bringing in tons of Rhinos, which you can do on this map. And Otto said, screw that, man. I'm Tootins, and I'm farming. We had villagers repairing rams underneath the castle which is pretty wild. We had petards countering the Rams. In the end, it wasn't enough. Out of the Great won that game. Game two, Yadviga bringing in the boar on the new map evacuation towards the TC. That, that's something we've only seen from one player. And then Out of the Great, <clears throat> Out of the Great stealing cows, which kind of eliminated the positive of taking in the boar. Honestly, Out of the Great, even at this point, People were saying, could this be a messy player? Because he didn't even take any fishing ships there. Ended up getting castle dropped, and we moved on to the next game. Then we have Out of the Great Laming again in game three. This game was crazy, though. Like, this game was so chaotic, and it was so different from both players. I don't know if we've had a game so far where the approach has been more different. We had a fast castle versus, like, a tower fish boom situation. And then in the later stages... Things got even crazier. I mean, we got a castle here, but there ends up being like heavy demos, galleons. We saw cannon galleons. We saw bombard towers. We saw monks. We saw the Inquisition tech from Spanish research. We also saw uh, the uh, supremacy upgrade get denied at like 90%. And what ended up happening was there was points where Otto the Great tried to vil rush in that game, thinking that supremacy was in and it didn't happen. Obviously, that put Otto the Great behind. Otto the Great then needed to come back. And the theme with Otto the Great was, if the map doesn't have water on it, I'm winning, basically. And Otto the Great went right to Arabia and dominated this one. Byzantines against Vietnamese. Next to the Megan L here. Confidence takes it out. And Viga definitely seemed to be a little bit outpaced, a little bit outclassed here. Look at the split micro there from Otto. And I'd love to say, like, this was the peak moment of the series. No, it wasn't. We're not even close to the peak moment of the series. Like, this series was unreal. So everyone's like, is this MBL? Is this a player who's known for being messy? And then at the start of game five, Otto the Great went forward and walled in the opponent's gold. Uh, double dock turned into triple dock. Uh, we had demos. We had fires. It was crazy there. And somehow, despite how crazy the start was, this game ended up making it to the Imperial Age, where we had castles stacked in the middle, it turned into this massive dread war, and both players were exchanging blows both sides, but at the end of the day, Edvigo was able to keep the siege alive, and those three castles that were there eventually had to be taken out. It wasn't just that, it was like four, five castles actually that ended up needing to be taken out. And then Edvigo goes up on top, and again, it's like a map that has water. I guess technically Slopes has water, but not a lot of it. And Otto the Great then responds with what many people felt like was a Civ disadvantage. He wins game number six and then goes into game number seven. And here he's thwarting the attack. And he's going to win this game, win game seven and move on in Hidden Cup with his most created unit being something like 32 Spearmen. I think he only made five scouts the entire game, which is very uncommon. And then that, that series ended, obviously. Now... The level in this series, I think, was higher. So if you're trying to guess names and you're looking at the best players, I think that we might have had two of our very best players here because Gajamada was playing Unreal. Gregory the Seventh maybe should have banned Cumans. 
didn't end up banning the Cuban civilization. Gajamada gets the first win. And just, just honestly stomped Gregory. I do not know what Gregory could have done different because of how well executed the Cuban play here ended up being. Now, now watch this. Next game, guys, it might be 10 minutes of replay. Okay, so we we start the replay at 40 minutes. Obviously, we're not going to have 10 minutes of replay for this. But um, here's the deal. This game went on till there was seven trees left on the map. Seven. And look at the mini-map. Look at all the trees. Seven trees. I'm not kidding. Okay? And uh, I found out later some of the trees were actually behind the mountain. It was They were inaccessible trees. So I don't know how many trees were actually available. We could not believe it. Right? Goth late game, spamming halves against mainly Hussars. But Gajamada just kept raiding. Look at the eco KD at the bottom left. Gajamada killed 570 villagers. This was actually the final fight. All the all the wood was gone. And it got to a point where even if Halbs counter Hussars, maybe this wasn't the final fight, but even though Halbs counter Hussars, the opponent, the, the red player could make Hussars because they only cost food. And even the cheap Goth Halbs couldn't be created because there was no more wood left on the map. And in my opinion, that's going to be the craziest game of Hidden Cup. Now, obviously, it's early rounds, so it, it's going to be tough to say. Like, I think the stakes will be higher, so hopefully we have some epic ones too. But Gashimata from there, basically, I think, had undone Gregory mentally. And I think Gregory was thinking, how on earth am I supposed to beat this guy? And losing a two-hour game like that certainly doesn't feel good. And then we moved on. Obviously, game three was a stomp. Game four, then Gashimata just said, let me put you out of your misery. And that's pretty much it. That's the update on what happens uh, yesterday. So again, like, if you want to go back and watch that two and a half hour game, go ahead. But there were seven trees left on the map that had like 200,000 wood or something crazy. I think it might even been more than that. Uh, it was a crazy day yesterday. So uh, we're going to go back to the schedule real quick. Talk about what's upcoming and the matchups at hand today. Uh, we have some crazy matchups coming. We've got our first series of the day, King Steven against Salim the Grim. Many of you may know, I picked Salim the Grim to be my hero, okay? Uh, my co-caster for this first set picked Gregory the Seventh to be his hero. And I do not feel bad for him. He honestly, he picked the wrong horse here. Salim the Grim is going to show you all today why he is the superior hero to King Steven. That'll be our first series. Second series will then be Khosrow versus Emperor Sigismund. And I think that should be a fantastic series. Of course, we do not know who the players are, so that's kind of tricky. According to the viewers, though, according to all the votes that we have done, this is what has happened so far in Hidden Cup 5. We have had Hera beating Ganji, Jordan beating Mihai, Barles beating, M uh, sorry, MBL beating Barles, and then Tato winning against Vinchester. I do not think this is correct. I think that at the end of day today, we may have people voting for players that are already there on screen. But that's the nature of Hidden Cup. We don't really know. We can only guess. And we are going off of limited information. We don't have all the info right now. So uh, anyways, I'm excited to see how things end up going. And we should have some epic games today. Did want to do just a big thanks again to everyone who has donated towards the prize pool. 50% uh, of all donations go towards the prize pool. Muzino and Look Around, thank you. Uh, here, here's the live pr prize pool update, by the way. We're very close to getting the 9th through 16th position to the 2,000 mark. Um, I mean, we had a donation of $200 when I was offline yesterday. Maybe it was during the rerun. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and it was from Well Called. Thank you, Well Called, for the $200 donation. Means a lot. The support's been unreal. Everybody who is subscribed to Twitch Prime, thank you. The new subs, the old subs, the emotes being used in chat has been awesome. Of course, we have an emote for every single hero. We've got some funny emotes as well, which will you could you could find out because chat will probably be using them. All right. Um, so that's the deal. You guys kind of understand at this point. Thank you all again for being here for the ride so far. And we're gonna start our first series here soon. But before we fart before we fart, yes, uh, before we start our first series. We do need to introduce our first hero, okay? And this is going to be the hero that is going up against Salim the Grim. We are going to introduce King Stephen. And uh, after we learn about King Stephen, we will learn about the great Salim the Grim. Production, save me, please. What's going on, mate? 
This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Fast History here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. King Stephen of England was a grandson of William the Conqueror, and I tell you what, he had a very difficult time holding on to the English throne once he actually got his hands on it. Initially, his career as an Anglo-Norman noble got off to a great start. As Stephen of Bois, he held great big tracts of land across both France and England that saw him a massive fair bit of wealth and power. But then everything changed after the White Ship Disaster, which left the reigning King Henry I without any living legitimate sons. Everyone knows how dangerous it can be to fill a transport ship full of key units, and in 1120, this is exactly what happened in England. Henry's only legitimate son and heir set sail across the English Channel aboard the White Ship, along with a ton of other notable Anglo-Norman nobles, and then the ship sank, and all but one of the people aboard died, which is what prompted a succession crisis and long-standing civil war after Henry's death 15 years later. He should have just researched dry dock, got across the Channel way faster. Actually, no, wait, hang on. Don't do that, that would have been terrible, would have been even worse, then 10 more units would have died, actually. Anyway, after the White Ship disaster, King Henry I nominated Stephen, his nephew, as his appointed successor, which would prove to be a very controversial move, because after Henry died uh, in 1135, Stephen inherited the throne as his nephew, and this ended up marking the beginning of a period of English history known as the Anarchy. And the anarchy was brought about because Henry's daughter, Matilda, didn't think much of her cousin Stephen succeeding her father, and so mounted a challenge to Stephen's rule. She pressed her claim for the throne, which tore England in two. Half the realm supported Stephen, and half supported Matilda, and then another half, yep, three halves, didn't really care who was in charge, and instead just took the opportunity to cause some mischief and mayhem. I mentioned before this period was called the anarchy, and it's very well named. Common people, the villagers and the like, they suffered terribly as bandits, rogue barons and unscrupulous knights all took advantage of them. Perhaps this is the uh, the historical basis for the Britain shepherding bonus. You know, they all had to work extra quickly to gather food because otherwise some nefarious baron would come along and lame all their sheep. Anyway, because of this ongoing conflict, England was in chaos, and for almost 20 years, a civil war raged between the factions supporting Stephen and Matilda. Even his capture by Matilda's forces after the Battle of Lincoln in 1141, even this didn't have a decisive effect on the war. You'd think capturing an enemy king would snag a victory on the spot, but obviously these two weren't playing with regicide rules. It didn't come to an end until after 1153, which was when Matilda's son, also called Henry, same as his grandpa, invaded England with the intention of overthrowing his uncle, and Stephen finally decided enough was enough. The two sides came together to the negotiating table and signed the Treaty of Winchester, under the terms of which Stephen would remain king, but after his death, it would be Henry who would inherit, not Stephen's son Eustace. And very obligingly, Stephen died the very next year. Very convenient for Henry, who took the throne as King Henry II. So, Stephen is remembered for bringing conflict and strife and civil war to England, and, to be honest, not for all that much else. Rather than bowing out with a peace treaty, however, will Stephen go further to claim total victory in Hidden Cup 5, or... Will his ambitions be cut short by his foes? Find out as the Hidden Cup 5 broadcast continues. Well, thank you, Riley, for introducing King Stephen. It's so fascinating, man, to learn all these things. Uh, and I'm excited to learn about Slim the Grim. Did want to mention, though, to live viewers, if you have the emote, we do have the Riley emote, which would spam the face of our wonderful historian, Riley Knight. But let's go over to Slim the Grim. Selim I of the Ottoman Empire was a famous Turkish sultan who had a huge impact on the empire's history thanks to both his internal reforms and his external conquests. Born in 1470, he took the throne in 1512 after more or less forcing his old man, Bayezid II, to abdicate, and he did this by, quite literally, massing janissaries, a classic Turk technique, 
uh, Salim won over the uh, the Imperial Janissaries and convinced them to support him rather than his dad. And this wasn't the last time that his ambition propelled his career to new heights, as, as you'll see. But in 1512, he inherited a realm that was in turmoil, with unrest throughout the Empire and enemies circling outside it. The Safavid Empire, for instance, with the Persian Ismail I at the helm, they came into conflict with Selim, which resulted in the Safavids and the Ottomans clashing in the Battle of Chaldiran in 1514. And this famous battle is actually represented in-game. It's the fifth scenario of the Ismail campaign, and I don't want to spoil too much for you here, but the Turks absolutely wiped the floor with the Persians, and this was principally thanks to the power of Turkish gunpowder. So, I mean, no wonder he beat the Persians, right? This is... They're an Arabia sieve, but he brings them to an arena game. He's bloody castle dropping me. I'm sorry. I mean, he's castle dropping them and my bills. I mean, sorry, their bills are dying. And look, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. The, the point is, no wonder, right? No wonder the Persians go down to the Turks uh, with, uh, with the power of their gunpowder. Anyway, the win at Chaldaran not only enormously bolstered Selim's authority, but allowed the Ottomans to annex a huge amount of Safavid land. And it also resulted in a heated rivalry and decades of military conflict between the two empires. Selim, however, he wasn't just going to stop at fighting the Safavids. He uh, didn't only expand into the east, into Persian lands, but also into the southwest, into the Mamluk Sultanate in the Levant and Egypt. And this campaign against the Mamluks saw Selim annex not a part of, but all of their lands, completely conquering the Sultanate and absorbing it into his empire by 1517. He got his conquests done very quickly. He was just, again, going full sweat lord, castle dropping people on arena. It's just, but no, honest, okay, look, it's fine. Part of the game. It's just, it's just what happens, right? It's okay. We can move on. Anyway, Selim. He expanded Ottoman territory enormously. He began to style himself with the title Servant of the Two Holy Cities, as both Mecca and Medina, the two holiest cities in the Islamic faith, were now under Ottoman authority. And between his victories over both the Safavids and the Mamluks, Selim didn't do a lot of losing. But there's a reason that he's known to history as the Grim, rather than anything else. He uh, wasn't a very nice bloke, uh, quite aside from the whole, you know, castle dropping everyone on arena thing. He also dethroned his own father, he had a terrible temper, he had a bad habit of executing people, uh, lots of people, particularly his religious enemies. Um, as a dedicated Sunni Muslim, he did massacre a uh, a lot of Shias, but he killed Sunnis too, um, continuing the proud Ottoman tradition of fratricide, for example, by killing his own brothers when he came to power so they wouldn't be a threat to his rule. And uh, this worked. No one stood up to contest Salim's rule at any point. He was able to get a lot done as a result, and not just in terms of conquest. He undertook a whole lot of internal reform, tax reform, land reform, military reform. And this helped to centralise and strengthen imperial authority, as well as laying the groundwork for his successor to propel the Ottoman Empire to even greater heights. When Salim died in 1520, his son Suleiman the Magnificent took the Ottoman throne, guiding the empire into a golden age, further expanding and modernising it. But with this, we're well and truly into Age of Empires III territory uh, when talking about Suleiman, as magnificent as he was. Selim the Grim was an effective and successful ruler. There's no denying that, and he left behind a powerful legacy that helped the Ottomans rise to become a major power in the coming centuries. But he was also a brutal and uncompromising figure, very well named as the Grim, whose successes came off the back of rivers of spilt blood. Will Selim be grim enough in Hidden Cup 5 and spill enough blood to claim yet another victory? We'll find out as Hidden Cup 5 continues. Well, um, I don't know if I should feel bad or not for rooting for Selim the Grim, but uh, good morning, Dave. Welcome to Hidden Cup finally. People have been spamming for you. Good to have you, dude. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been enjoying Hidden Cup so far. This is the first of many sets we're going to cast together, so I'm looking forward to it. Hey, chat. Hello. Thank you for the emote. God, why'd you have to make that, dude? <laughs> like, what? I mean, why? how could I not? It, I'm, at this point, I'm not even in charge. We've got Riley making fun of me. we got production making fun of me. Sorry about that one. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm sorry about your loss in the first round against Suman Guru. I, I hope you're over it at this point. You should be good to be able to cast. Dude, he wasn't even my guy. There was a better bald. And then the other bald got beat even worse than, like, presumably my bald. So that's that's terrible. I also love how, you know, Riley said Salim had a bad habit of murdering people. 
It's like, <laughs> dude, that's not a bad habit. You know, chewing with your mouth open is a bad habit. Like that's, that's an illness, <laughs> man. That's like, that's really bad. Yeah, I, I just thought it was a cool name, but it turns out uh, when you when you go that far back, people, they're actually named based on their actions in life. It's not just like a, a, a username you use in the chat to spam an emote. So, um, okay, so we've had, we're halfway through the first round of Hidden Cup 5, and uh, people have been guessing away on who they think these players are. And last night I was thinking... Like, have we seen the best yet? Have we seen the, like, how has this been distributed because of the fact this is random seeding? So I'm very curious. This is obviously the results. Very curious of what you think. Uh, what, where have the viewers been right? Where have the viewers been wrong? I think the viewers were right on the first set. Um, I, I really think that Hera was Vasco. I'm not sure about his opponent. Uh, I'm not sure about whether that was Jordan, the second set. I'm almost 100% sure on Mihai, and then I'm almost 100% sure on MBL. But that, uh, that's as far as I will go. As Margugu put it yesterday, it's important in Hidden Cup to stay humble. Or as he says, <laughs> stay humble. Stay <laughs> humble, chat. Everybody stay <laughs> humble, okay? You can't get too behind anybody except for MBL. That's definitely auto auto micro auto macro auto guesses auto everything on that one margugu 100%. margugu on his little paint sheet and i'm still trying to find out if we want to bring that into the main broadcast he wrote <laughs> in a scribble mbl or i quit aoe so he's he's yeah. that certain that it was mbl that he's putting his age of empires career on the line uh, we will have margugu casting with me at some point throughout the week but uh, yeah, I just, I was curious. I think I agree with you. I think it's really difficult to truly know. I think uh, it's also not wrong of people to guess a really big name if there's a big performance. That's just part of how it goes. But it will be fun after we complete the next two days to see where the community guesses are. Uh, but with that, we move into our first series. King Steven versus Salim the Grim here. We have a sieve drop to speculate on and we're talking players. We'll see uh, what preferences these guys have on maps and civilizations. In just a moment, there's King Steven on the left side. And we've got Salim the Grim on the right. And so the way the Civ Draft is situated, folks, is they go top to bottom with their maps first. So they get a free pick, and then it goes to the bands. Islands continues to hit the ban list, which is wild to me. But we've got Evacuation, Bay, and Cup for King Steven. And Salim the Grim mm -hmm. has gone for Mud Flow, Hidden Forts, and Slopes with bypass being our first map so a uh, lot to take in here dave is there anything in particular that stands out to you uh all hybrid maps for king steven that one really really stands out right evacuation bay cup and then we have bypass as well also the goth pick now goths are more common now than they used to be um but that pick is really kind of a vinchester slash doubt kind of special right so you always yep. got to keep an eye on the Goths. And <laughs> Riley would attest to that <laughs> as a historian. Always got to keep an eye on the Goths, right? That'll, they'll tell you a lot. Yeah, I, I like that point. I think Goths... I mean, I'm curious to see where Goths are played now because Goths and Georgians were actually played on evacuation So yesterday. So it feels like King Stephen maybe has both of those options. Armenians also there. Yeah, actually, King Stephen has both the new civilizations, the mule cart civilizations, where... I thought maybe the mule cart could be helpful on hidden forts in some ways and mm -hmm. evacuation, but that's a big point. It's I, like hybrid against non-hybrid, more standard approach from Salim. I'm looking at uh, Steven's draft and I'm immediately thinking doubt, like immediately. But uh, it, huh. it's important to stay humble, Tristan. You have to stay <laughs> humble, okay? Yeah. Um. I, what for? What reason though? Are you thinking doubt for Salim? Just the Dravidians pick, or some of the other things here? Or I said Stephen. Sorry, not not Salim. Oh. So I'm looking at. Oh, Stephen's maybe I got draft, it wrong. And we have both both mule cart sieves, and we have Goss. So okay. You know, say what you will, but it, it's also bypass being game one, right? It wasn't banned out. You look at the bands as well. He bans high tides and open map. He bans gold rush and open map and then cross as well, which is kind of an open-ish land hybrid mix. 
but it, it, it could be. It could be. That's all I'm speculating okay. for now. Could be dope. Okay, I like it. I like it. I, I do see people when talking about players saying, where is the mezzo, right? Like, yo, uh, doubt. They love their Aztecs, Mayans, Incas. Um, I don't know if the maps are particularly suited towards mezzo to the people saying that. We'll see as things go, but that's something to keep in mind. But anyways, game one's going to be on bypass. Yesterday, for two best of sevens, was over an eight-hour day. It was an extremely long day, so we're going to get into it here. Thank you, ladies and gents, for being here. Thank you for playing your part so far in Hidden Cup 5. Best thing you can do if you're having fun, let other people know about it. We obviously have quite a few more days ahead of us, but we are going to 14, as we say in this community, and dive into Bypass. And here we are, game number one on Bypass. In the first round of Hidden Cup 5, we have King Steven in the blue playing as the Vietnamese against the Lim the Grim playing as the Spanish. Uh, Dave, break it down for us. Well, Spanish, I mean, you can see the potential on this map, right? It, you can usually get to Castle Age fairly safely and reliably. And then there's that one corner, through, or sorry, corridor through the middle where you can push with maybe conquistadors or monks or a castle or something like that. So understand the pick from Salim. Vietnamese can also be strong here, but I think you're going to be have to be the defensive player against the Spanish, and you're going to have to try and hit that imp timing before they do. Yeah, I agree. I also think Spanish can speak to the type of player we have. There are great civilization on closed maps, but not all players feel comfortable going for them. And I think more specifically, uh, the gunpowder aspect. Uh, yesterday was a great example, or, or the other day was a great example. We didn't have the, the castle drop Janissary play. We actually had a fast imp, which was so much more epic and rare, but, but still, very curious to see how Salim plays this. Some players may just play scouts here to contest the outsides of the map anyways. But my thinking is, if, if you picked Spanish, you've got to go to for Conquistadors. That unit is just simply too strong to ignore. And then I wonder, what creative things can you do as the Vietnamese to try and stop that? What do you think about a stonewall through the middle here? Is that too crazy? A uh, stonewall through the middle is doable, but I mean, if you're up against conks and a castle anyway, that stonewall is not going to last very long, right? It's going to buy you mm -hmm. like 20, 30 seconds, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they'll have a petard and they'll have conks or they'll have a castle shooting it down if they get a good position on it. Can you actually... How much area in that center can you actually build on? Because I know there's like yeah, so, that beach terrain or whatever. Yeah, it's a good point. So, so the um, the sand, I guess it's all sand. But the the um, how do I describe this? The area with the bodies, Dave, the little blob of uh, mm -hmm. discolored sand. That area cannot be built on, which means a castle would have to be more defensive. So I think. In theory, to your point about the stone walls, you could probably wall right in front of or right behind your own palisades. And then that will at least force the Spanish player to have to make a petard or two to break through, which adds a bit more resistance. Okay, but you can't squeeze the castle into that middle middle section, right? Yeah, exactly. You would have to go... Like, what you could do is you could go towers. In theory, you could tower rush the front. But yeah, the, the castle's not a possibility there. So that might be why we're not seeing as many castle drops. I'm pretty sure, actually, if there wasn't that terrain change, that every single game would be a castle drop because a castle on someone's walls is just simply too hard to stop. Oh, 100%. Uh, 100%. Also, I've noticed that King Steven has been holding the, the gate open with the goat, which is like, you know, a little thing to notice, but we're in Hidden Cup, yep. so we got to really examine everything. And he just left it there the entire time, has been pushing in the zebra, and Salim... Didn't care. He just deleted the wall. Now, I think that Doubt would be more of the player to keep the goat there and never move it. Okay. And push okay. those in. And then the player who deleted the wall and then goes for the house later is going to be someone that has a little bit higher APM and more trust in themselves to go back there and rewall it. <laughs> People are so all in on Doubt already. I believe you, Dave. You put Doubt in their mind from the draft conversation. Stay humble. And... Stay humble, chat. <laughs> you have to stay humble, okay? I love it, though. I love it. This is what Hidden Cup's about, right? And, and you know, what I found has been the problem for me, right? I spend the whole day casting. I didn't have my opinions. And then I'm running the rerun and just kind of keeping my eye on things there. And I will feel so certain about players. And then I watch the mm -hmm. rerun, and I'm disagreeing with myself. 
it's horrible so I, I can't imagine what it's like for a viewer i don't know if the viewers are re-watching things i don't know if they just like form their opinion and then it stays the same all the time but for me man i think if i think about it too much if i really try and get too crazy with my predictions and my guesses i just i veer all over the place but that's that's part of the fun, right? And we've been through this before. Me and you have yep. been through this four times already. So like we already know we're gonna be wrong on probably sixty <laughs> to seventy percent of our guesses, right? And 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 like we just have to remember that. And it's it's just all part of the fun to try and see who is who, to play the mental gymnastics, to switch up your guesses. I, I will say that Vietnamese, this might be the absolute worst map to take advantage of their civilization bonus of seeing the opponent's team down center. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> You're over there? Well, yeah, so you are, I yeah, never it's already knew. guaranteed at this point. Yeah. I guess that also speaks to the Vietnamese, right? Because we the majority of the time we see the Vietnamese these days, you are not seeing that bonus even be utilized. It's the other bonuses, like the high HP on their archers, the good economy, the good late game. But man, I'm just, I'm very curious on what King Steven is going to do here. Obviously, it's a fast castle, which is what most players do on this map. But with only Palisade walls through the middle and with the Spanish player being on stone, I really need to know, like, what, what's the play here? Also, fun little builds here from Salim. Now, most players, all players should know this, but you could argue this is more for players who are more experienced on Arena. So mm -hmm. Salim collected 10 gold from that one gold tile. And is going to sell uh, something. Usually it's just a little bit of your stone or maybe a little bit of excess wood. To get 91 gold in return for that sale. Thus taking it to 200 gold, which is what you need to go castle age. Typically it's selling the stone though. Because I think you only get 91 stone for the first sell. Uh, or 91 gold for the first sell if you're selling stone. If you sell wood, yeah, if it's you're, like if... in the 70s or something. It's 70, yeah. So if you're going to go with that approach, chat, just remember, if, you, if you're like, oh man, that's such a great idea, I'm going to do that from now on, you have to be up sooner than your opponent because if they sell stone, your entire strategy <laughs> falls apart. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, and, and more... <laughs> more gold. More consistent, uh, more, more specifically here, because I know why you are saying this. Don't try this in a 4v4 arena game, okay? Because then there's seven mm -hmm. other people that could have the same idea... And I have played enough team games with Dave to know that in team games, one time we both didn't communicate we were going to do this. And I forget who got it first, but the other one was like, did you sell? And I was like, yeah. I was like, of course I did. It's like, no. And then they had to go over and get gold. And yeah, it becomes this whole thing. So I guess the greater lesson here is actually communicate with your teammates, which we struggle with. But uh, yeah, little fun fact for you there. I'm still not seeing a stone wall. And we know Salim's going to drop a castle. King Steven's gotta be worried about that. No, he can't be worried about it. He can't see it, but surely you have to expect it. He has to know. It's Spanish, man. Like, Spanish is one of those civilizations where you know what they're going to do, and you just have to come up with a plan to stop it. And your opponent yep. that's playing the Spanish knows that you know, but, but you also know that they know that you know. So it's like Ooh. this, it, it, it's just this back and forth, right? And the only thing they don't know along with us, is the player identities right now. So they don't know how aggressive this castle each time is going to be or how aggressive this castle is going to be. However, on this map, with the scout in the middle, the castle is going to have to go at home. And then you make the conks, and then you try and bust through. It's just interesting to me that Steven has gone for the house wall so far back. So he's almost giving up that territory already. Yep. It seems like King Steven is going to drop a town center on the opening to the side of the house wall. And is keeping a close eye on things to see if a castle is going to go up there. Now, we'll get that information. We'll see the castle foundation. It would be interesting to see if these players stay in this fight. There's lots of reasons to back away. And Slim the Grim Oof. does not back away. So King Steven has a scout for the outer area of the map. And immediately reacts by dropping some stone walls in front. Dude, losing that scout, or rather not killing the scout from blue, is actually kind of frustrating. Because there are relics on the outside. And now you can't just safely go out and take those relics if you're yep. slim, right? And you're looking for some extra resources coming in. So that's a really great win there from Steven. It's a little thing, but it might end up mattering. And there's the stone walls you were talking about. Second town center as well. The eco is looking good for our Vietnamese player. And it's all going to be about timings, whether they can withstand the push in the castle age, and then whether they can get up to Imperial age 
sooner because it feels like Salim's going to get through these walls, get a castle up there somewhere, and then Steven will have a castle of his own and try and tread that back. Yeah, very likely. Here comes the first Conquistador. Now, of course, Salim didn't have a scout, so Salim couldn't see ahead of time that these stone walls were going down. And I really like this from King Steven. Not just the initial layer, but the fact that King Steven didn't just want to stonewall blindly here. King Steven scouted it, then walled, and has even gone for a double layer. Normally here, what you're going to want is a petard, but it is two petards per stonewall piece. Mm -hmm. So we might need to see somewhere in the department of three uh, petards. And that is not something you want to do when you want to spend food and gold on your conquistador. So it's a tricky decision right now for Salim. But Salim, back to my point earlier, Dave, it just seems like the type of player to know what to do in these situations. And I'm sure he'll figure something out soon. I mean, you want that follow-up castle too, if you're Salim, right? At some point, you want a castle closer because the one back in your base isn't going to give you much value against these yep. town centers. And especially once the... Uh, the towers are up here from Steven. I was wondering why he went on to stone so early. I thought it might be a defensive castle, but it's actually the towers. Now the conks will shift. They can't get through the main area. They're going to shift around to the edges. And Steven is going to need a counter to those coming towards his back wall. Now, what's the timer here on Steven uh, knowing that those conquistadors are, are leaving? He's figured it out already, it looks like. He's going to go for some houses at the back. And he's going to start up a wall there because he hasn't seen the conks yep. in a very long time. This King Steven player is incredibly smart. But again, wants to be informed before making decisions, which I keep coming mm -hmm. back to. The fact that the wall came up after the intel. Now you have the houses coming. And of course, this is King Steven recognizing the conks aren't attacking my walls anymore. They must be coming the other direction. And honestly, normally conquistadors have some type of payoff already. It hasn't happened yet, and I'm beginning to worry for Salim the Grim here that these Kikisadors might not be able to accomplish much. But then again, it is Kikisador. If there's a hole in a wall, if they get into your eco at any point against no army, they could win the entire game for you. I know a couple players that Steven isn't already because that scout has been idle for like a <laughs> long time, four, four or five minutes, and I, I'm Garrett. I'm a hundred percent on this not being Hera already. Because he would never just uh, keep that scout there. But we'll see. The conks are in here. The gate is up just on time. But that gate will not last very long against those conquistadors. Yeah, I mean, there are two players that come to mind that are really lazy with that. That, uh, Well, I actually is one player that comes to mind who's really lazy with the leftover scout. And that would be Doubt, who we already talked about before. I didn't feel like we had a crazy Doubt sighting yet in Hidden Cup. Uh, I thought maybe Patchy with the whole Sicilians play on evacuation, but mm -hmm. tower drops here from King Steven. The Conquistadors are oh, way too close to these towers. It's it's a doubt tower times two. And uh, we now have another tower here from King Steven. So the Conquistadors have found some reward, and I don't even think that tower is good. I think that one could also be denied here. So dicey times here for King Steven, and these conks are wrecking him, and Dave, oh no! He knew it was coming, but he didn't have enough yet. Well, I mean, he still has 63 villagers against 46, right? And now the towers are going to go up. Hasn't lost a vill yet. And the university was presumably for guard tower. Um, or maybe he wanted to click up, but it feels like he's going to have a castle in time. So he won't need that university yeah. as one of his buildings. I think that was for guard tower and maybe for ballistics as well. Man, I'm, I am getting, again, very early here, people. Okay, stay humble. But I, I'm getting a Doubt versus Yo vibe from this series right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Yo with the gunpowder, expanding the eco behind, happy to play with lots of unique units. King Steven playing more of the eco approach into some guard towers and defense. Could be anybody. So we see ballistics now. That's an interesting choice. Typically, you're going to see guard tower first. But maybe it's a why not both situation for King Steven. I think he might not have had the food at the time, but he had the wood and the gold, right? So it's like kind of pick your pick your choice. What which one's it gonna be? Man, if this is a forward siege workshop here from Salim, it's definitely yo. It's yo versus stout. We already confirmed it. Hundred percent. If it's <laughs> a siege workshop. Confirmed. 
Yeah, I mean, it would make sense for it to be a siege workshop. If you were to see guard tower, though, you might not want to siege push. So, fun fact, by the way, um, I have a, a compiled a lot of stats for the players. And I don't know if we'll have a video made for it in time, but we have an auto scout stat for that leftover weak scout that players could, could use auto scout like all the noobs do. And Yo is actually the most auto scout player out of everyone in Hidden Cup, which surprised me. Viper was number two, which did not surprise me. But that starting scout for King Steven is just standing there. Has not used it to scout Hello? manually or automatically. Can you get off the siege workshop, please? I'm trying to do my that thing. That thing's never gonna move. I'm trying to do my job. Thank you. <laughs> Look at this imp time here from King Steven. Castle's gonna go up. He's built a castle in the perfect position to be able to treb down his opponent. Still doesn't have an answer to conquistadors. It doesn't have an answer to the siege push, but it does feel like he can get at least one treb. And Dave, if he gets one treb in the middle, there's nothing Salim can really do about that here. Guard tower is coming in right now. The university is very, very low. And if he uses, loses that university, no chemistry for Bombard cannons, right? He does have a castle now, like you said, and Imperial Age is on the way. So could go for trebs, but still, that could slow down Steven a little bit. The eco behind from Salim, the expansion has actually been pretty good. And the scout moves just in time to find the TC. Are you kidding me? So he patrolled it and on there's a no loom? stance there. Those are villagers with no loom. And Salim the Grim, if he notices, can kill the scout. But he's distracted right now. And that scout did move at the perfect time. And good fortune for King what? Steven. It looks like the TC is going to be denied. Will King Steven notice? Wow, dude, the scout's like, that's why I stood there. I was just, I was just building up my power. Unbelievable find. So Imperial Age and the Trebs pushing forward are a threat to Slim. But Steven still kind of has all this stuff in the back, right? So yep. it's, it's a risk when you try and push forward here, even with the guard towers, it's a big risk to try and send your army forward when you've got, what, 12 conks and a siege workshop in the back of your base. Big, big risk, because you could look back suddenly, all your towers are gone and a lot of your villagers are dying. And then Salim is expanding his eco on the other side as Salim is now on the way to Imperial Age. Bracer coming in, second castle, Rat and Archer should be able to deal with the Conquistadors. And we'll need to go for another market because the university and the market were already taken out. What a sick job here from King Steven to defend from this. But I'm also really impressed with Salim. Salim is on the way to the Imperial Age. Salim has quite a few TCs. Salim is a forward position. Salim's going to make it difficult for King Steven to expand to the sides. But I'm worried for Salim the Grim's uh, castle. That will likely be trepped down. And I don't know if Salim's going to be able to stop that. And still no TC on the outside for Salim either because of that freaking scout. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, King Steven thought he was safe, and Salim is going to turn around before he finds that town center. Oh, no, dude. That's good timing there from Steven to get that up, but still lucky that Salim didn't go investigate a little bit more near that gold. If you're Salim, you're still pushing with Ram, so, and you were afraid to kill the Ram, so he didn't want to leave the position. The Light Cap will see the TC, though, so he knows about that. Rams again. It's a ram batter down the Rams. Messy. It's now for King Steven. Well, we don't know what's going on with T90, but hopefully you can hear me as uh, Salim still trying to get some damage done with the Conquistadors and the villagers uh, building that town center. Finally, the castle in the center is being trebbed down, but we've got a skirmisher switch here from Salim. 90 villagers with Bracer on the way, chemistry also on the way. It's only 15 Rattans for King Steven, but the eco is looking really, really solid. Now, if we're thinking about Civ matchups late game, I actually think Spanish might be better if they're fully boomed, but we have to take the eco discrepancy into account here as the Rattans just push right 
under the castle. Oh my goodness, there's no potential to repair this castle yet. The villagers are quarantined inside, and it's a Cavalier Skirmisher army composition that Salim is trying to go for as he solidifies his position over on that left side of the map. Another university coming up from Steven. Remember, the first one was taken out, and that's probably for chemistry himself. And the Conquistadors, I mean, the control just isn't there at the moment because of all the distractions on the front side. So he's not able to deny that university, not able to kill the villagers. And now Steven going into a cavalry switch of his own. So potentially light cab coming out from our Vietnamese player as chemistry now comes in from that university. I don't know if it's working, but I'm here. Ecos. Oh, Thank can God. you hear me? Okay. Are we you're good? Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're really back. Yeah, you're back. You were you were cooking, dude. You were cooking. Yeah, we're we're good. Uh, what a game here. Slim the Grim's got a castle on the left side, and he still has skirms in defense. But the worry here is, can you get enough skirmishers to deal with ratans? Because mm -hmm. ratan archers are actually a really good archer against skirmishers. And King Stevens doing a great job to pressure the middle, Dave. He just needs to make sure that the outside of his base does not get compromised by those conquistadors. I mean, the, the Treb is taking out the town center. Chemistry is going to come in. The Conquistadors are still there. And the Cavalier switch that he wanted to make, there's no Cavalier on the field yet. It's just Skirms. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Skirms are a soft counter to Rathens. Uh, They're not really the unit that's going to win the fight against them. The only advantage is that you can produce them out of archer ranges. You don't need a ton of castles to get them rolling. But right now... Steven is rolling forward, and Steven is even mixing in those light cap, which is going to make life very difficult for those skirmishers. And Slim's going to abandon his starting base. <laughs> he wanted to push King Steven's base, was never able to do so. Now abandons his base. Now, the funny thing is, there is not a lot of gold accessible right now for King Steven. He has a little bit of gold mm -hmm. left in his base, but the other area of gold is currently being trapped. So there is actually a chance here for Slim to hold if he can control the sides and prevent King Steven from getting a lot more gold. I, I think the issue here for Slim is that he just lost like 20 of his farms, right? So that's a lot of food investment to get that, or sorry, wood investment to get that food eco rolling again. And all yeah, the units yeah. he wants to make are costing food. So Cavalier, Hand Cannon, Elite Skirm, even the upgrades for the, the Cavalry coming in. He's really going to need to expand that food eco. There are some sources over here that are free, but, I mean, it's it's going to be very difficult, especially with Steven knocking at the door. 52 military, by the way. Yeah, and it feels like Steven can actually only spend food. Sure, the gold income's not great, but simply just like Cav could possibly break Slim the Grim right here. And we're seeing that now. The Rats and Archers will also see a castle, and the Trebs will be happy to see that. And King Steven, 200 population. A lot of that is, of course, jam-packed in that one single area. But this is solid pop from him. And if he could just push a little bit further here, Salim the Grim will probably be broken. I, I, the outer food sources are great, but it's not as good as farming eco. That gets found. King Steven finds the stone miners. And this is looking worse and worse for my boy Salim right now. Yeah, Steven just waited, didn't he? He just waited and waited and waited, found his opportunity, got to Imperial Age faster, started pushing, and now with an army count of 57 against 26. And 10 of those are these conks, which have just been kind of locked down in this area the entire time. They're finally finding value, but it's not the early game value that you usually want to find with Conquistadors as he tries to go for a town center. You're not building that. And Salim notices right away. That's impressive. <laughs> he is building it. Oh. Wait, what? Huh? Okay, TC is going to... Oh, it's just going to be a castle. Okay, that's smart from King Steven. All right, Dave, so... Maybe too early to speculate, but things are not looking good for Slim. Obviously, it could be the most important moment of this person's career, right? But there are two players who are known to love unique units and who are known to not resign when they are dead. Uh, and oh, we have the GG call. Went down to 90 population, but it does make people speculate a little bit on who these players mm -hmm. may be. What a performance from King Steven. Slim the Grim probably couldn't believe that he died so easily to that push because King Steven got 57 rats and archers, 55 light cap, and those four trebuchets that he made initially just took down the entire base. That was very well executed. 
I think just a bunch of little things combined there, and it really, really stalled out Slim from getting the damage he needed with the conks, right? We had the scout win, the 1v1 scouts at the beginning, which meant that yep. Slim couldn't come forward and scout that there were multiple layers of stone wall early. And then you start, when, when you see something like that, maybe you send the conks around back initially and then try and harass, right? You don't try and go through that middle area. Also, the timing from Steven to go out and make two layers of stone wall, not just one, two layers of stone wall, and then the timing to come to the back and make that house wall with the watchtowers was really, really brilliant. So Steven definitely playing to their strengths, maybe as a slower player, as a build-up player, and then winning there with Vietnamese against Spanish on a map where Spanish should feel really, really nice is great accomplishment. So really well done. Yep, I agree. Now, there is a small thing here, a tiny little detail, which Salim could have maybe tried. I just thought of. So you know how you know how important that two layer of stone wall was when the conquistadors were coming out and there could be petards. My think mm -hmm. is, or my, my thought is, Spanish get fortified wall. He was on the way to imp. If he goes two layer of stone wall in, in his choke point, Salim, I know there was trebs there, but trebs take a long time to take out walls. So maybe could have bought him a little they, bit of extra time. Just something to think about in the future here on Bypass uh, if someone's going to get pushed. I think stonewalling that choke point is really valuable. But we're going to move on. They don't take they don't take very long to take out trees, though. Oh, you just true. chop the trees. You can trap the trees. Yeah, but only you would do that. Dude. Yeah. Only you would do that. Okay. Well, mud flow, hidden fort slopes for Slim, available. We'll get to find out what type of player he is. These are all more standard-ish maps. I say that, of course, with Hidden Forts having some pretty complex elements. Mud Flow as well being very messy. Um, Salim doesn't have to choose those maps if he doesn't want to. It would be his choice now on where we go. And we're going to hop into game number two here. Still staring at Dravidians there for Salim the Grim. That is a civilization that is strong on maps that incorporate water, but it's a civ that a lot of players are in love with and ooh, mud flow is what salim wants so after dropping a castle and going conquistadors in game one he now wants an open messy map fascinating stuff and salim's gone for the portuguese and king stephen dave's gone for the armenians armenians can be a very very strong pick here especially with the mule carts right the wood lines are very far away and uh you want as much diversity in those wood lines as you can because one demo could ruin your day, right? But we'll we'll see if if so Stevens uh, tries to go for the infantry approach with the Armenians, and that'll give us a clue if he does that it might be someone like Doubt, which we suspected mm. going into that first game and after the performance in the first game. Doubt is really in love with the mule cart saves and really really likes the infantry openings here with the Armenians. Yeah, it's a fair point. We did have another player in the qualifier didn't end up making it. I think it was Baba Rum with the Armenians, try and go Feudal Age Longswords. I no doubt tried that in another tournament. Now, I think the, the most difficult resource to really hold access to long-term here would be the wood. And uh, that is mm -hmm. due to the fact that in the middle, uh, there's amphibious terrain. So ships can also go through there. And we've seen lots of demos uh, against villagers and against scouts. But... You, you normally need the bigger chunks of wood if you're a normal civilization. But if you're the Armenians, you don't actually have to take that risk at all with the mule carts. And you could also use the mule carts to maybe bring in some other things. Like if there's a gold next to a little chunk of wood, you could maybe take gold and wood at the same time. There's flexibility. And I feel like the last time we covered a game together with mule carts, I think it was the Georgians from Mihai. And the player didn't take any risks. It was just like full wall stayed through with all yep. this little backwood area gold area and uh played it very differently than most mud flow games so i could definitely see king steven with how safe he played in game number one wanting to do something similar and never mind he's going to the big wood anyways i love when people prove you wrong instantly it's just <laughs> one of my little joys in life you know uh thanks for that you don't do that very frequently but <laughs> Portuguese also do get some wood from the berries. So Salim can work with that. And uh, I guess that is helpful. It's not something you really base your builds around too frequently. But having said that, 
Having said that, he didn't place the lumber camp. He's on the berries and he's shopping the straggler trees. So this is a calculated build from him. And this is the first time we've ever seen this, actually. I don't remember a single qualifier game where players tried the early berries with the Portuguese. I, I mean, the one thing about this map that's so difficult. Now, you're talking about the wood lines being far away and whatnot, but is that transition period when the food runs out underneath your town center. You have so much at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You have the rhinos or elephants, then you have the fish, then you have some water buffalo. It seems like a lot, but once you've clicked up to feudal age, there's a, a, a point where you run out of that food and suddenly you're very exposed going out for those berries. So taking the berries early is probably a really, really good thing before your opponent can punish it with military. And then you can start getting into the farms a little bit earlier right and you're not as exposed you can start walling up you just have a lot more of a comfort level on mud flow because these games can get crazy and the more secure your food eco is earlier the better i think the trend with that that i'm noticing here is if you try and go for lots of scouts and then your opponent does the same so you then need all the spears you're just spending mm -hmm. resources so quickly and then it catches up with you. So I've noticed that uh, some players, and we saw it from uh, Otto yesterday, they're actually starting to not make scouts all that much initially, make sure they have enough spears to protect where they need to expand with their eco. And once they're at like six to eight spears, then they're starting to add scouts. But I said scouts, hold on. We've got Dark Age spearmen right now from the Armenians. That's something that only the Armenians could do. And I also saw villagers headed over towards golds here for King Stephen. So King Stephen, maybe with a prepped build order here, try something different. Gold. I wonder, could you go spears and ships, Dave? Like maybe galleys with the Armenians here? I mean, I think galleys is an underutilized unit on this map, right? Because if you get five or six galleys, it's basically an unstoppable army until yeah. your opponent adds in ships of their own um yep. on the middle you would have to however if you're going for that approach you would either have to be against the player who's playing really defensively or you'd have to figure out a way to lock down your own base because the the risk with that is that you don't have that much land military to defend yourself at home especially if they go into archers and there's the range right there from salim is salim you know walls to that town center it's still going to be an issue for him because eventually he'll have to leave with those villagers around the town center but for now it's pretty safe, and there's the dock from Steven. Does he open galleys, or does he go into demolition rest? Wow, we thought this was a scout rush map, right? Because we've got an archer range now from Salim. A great job from Salim. That could have been a problem. The, the spearmen and the scouts almost got through. So I don't know. Maybe it's something that, at this point, these players are expecting, but certainly hasn't been meta to see that. And to your point, Dave, it's going to be fires. I think this comes back to Fire. the issue with the whole fire v galley conversation it's just that galleys need to be masked and microed a lot more efficiently and the fire is more of the more effective in low numbers i don't know with his scouting i mean you can see that the wall is up you can see you're not going to get much value with a demo it feels like galley would be the the better choice here but i mean fire might just be an opening a precursor to something as he's going around and scouting the other side and now he's going to discover the blacksmith and presumably the wow. range right there. So he knows what's going on. Great scouting from Steven already. Dude, I mean, both of them, right? Salim also saw the dock and the walls. Like, that just gave me some chills to see the scouting like oh that. My goodness. Look at that gold. I didn't he's know taking right. the one all the way at the back. That, that's smart, too. Yeah, taking it in the back. I mean, it's smart until archers show up <laughs> because you're so far away from your base. Uh, you're not going to be able to get home, but we'll see if that eventually gets found. And I'm worried for King Steven right now on land where the ships cannot help him, right? So he's going to make some skirms, it looks like, at home. And a demo is going to be waiting. Wow. And there's the dock from Salim. And the dock won't be able to, to be seen by that scout. So great positioning there. We'll go for a gate behind. The fire starts working away on the wall but the archers are still looping around to the right side now fletching is in but i think it was only what two archers a skirm and a scout this could this could be dangerous if that demo is forward and there's the galley now so demo fire galley 
skirm spear scout <laughs> it's a lot of units on the field right now from steven yeah it's a lot of units and and this is not something we have seen throughout the qualifier and even the main event so far i wonder if slim will think of the fact that if his opponent has a dock he needs to be careful here and he sees the demo and king steven maybe could have been a bit stealthier with that but the demo can't help him now i think he's got enough though i think he's got skirms so that should help i agree with you though the fire didn't really help him that much it's a weird game to really break down right now. Because, again, this is now hitting that point where they're out of food underneath the TC. They need to transition into farms. And it's just not easy to get the timings right. Okay, Galley running into the fire Galley. And that's the issue we were talking about earlier. Where they're kind of countered until you get a lot of them. Even with that extra projectile that the Armenians uh, fire. From their galley and he's gonna be able to clear that up maybe unless slim can repair he does but the demo might be on the way no galley's on the way yeah demo is probably gonna stay at home for now nice repairs here from slim the extra hp on the portuguese ships really helping there and slim has done a great job but he still hasn't killed much he just killed one unit in this game it's crazy the diversity of this game we've had the spearman opening and the dock opening into the range and now we have a dock follow-up big demo coming in though the demo is going to connect the demo will hit both ships not as good as you would have liked but still it's something and the skirms are going to find this army as well so yeah it doesn't really feel like it's slim certainly going to try his hardest here it doesn't feel like once this scout goes down that this attack for slim is going to accomplish too much yeah even without the armor can't really fight that he's he's gotten some great value with the scout but i mean the scout is on one hp right now so one he's HP. gonna need to leave there is another scout following up though and Ooh. apparently you know he's found he's found some additional food eco i don't know if uh salim has dropped farms yet or if he's just on full on the berries right now but scout production Dude. here is impressive Dude. from him as follow-up from Salim is incredible and that market just screams doubt to me right now doubt. yeah <laughs> It just screams down to me. Gets surprised by an enemy transition and immediately goes into the market. Oh, man. That tower is needed here for King Steven. He could lose villagers. The tower will likely go up. They're defending on water and land right now. It feels like the defense will happen here for King Steven. He'll push the fire galleys away. This is now where a demo could be so useful for both players. Well, look at the resources. Even with the market from King Steven. Look at the res from Salim. He's done a really good job expanding the food eco and those early walls kind of gave him that security right and then king stephen needed to deal with the counter attack so the farms could be added the market's now being added from slim and slim might be the first player to click up to castle age yeah really nice transitions here and it's interesting because game number one was more of a closed map obviously that was a neutral map Slim the Grim played well, did end up losing that. Clearly, this is where his comfort zone is. I think we're going to see a whole bunch of Navy in Castlage. If they're making this much Navy now, I think we'll see the War Galley upgrade. Maybe even, like, ballistics on, on War Galleys themselves. Yeah, Caravels with Portuguese? Ooh. Caravel against Galley. I'm, a, a Caravel against Armenian War Galley. Imagine that. That'd be sick. The Caravels should be really good here. I think we probably won't see caravels for the same reasons I mentioned before. They're, they can't invest into that many ships. But I see a second dock now. I think fast fire, or or not fast fire, but just the upgraded fires in Castle Age would make sense. And maybe a random knight or two from both players. Uh, King Steven still hasn't clicked up yet, despite having that market earlier. We'll finally do so. And Salim the Grim up faster, has more ships at the moment. We'll have a demo, still has the archers and the scouts, and Salim is looking good right now. So once Steven gets to Castle Age, he can go for fortified churches to secure a lot of this open eco back here, which could be really, really nice. And he'll go for at least one to get that relic. But yep. I mean, for now, the scouts and the archers, he still has to be concerned about them as he goes for another dock and the fires are already here from Salim and there's the demo coming in from Salim how fast will Steven realize no, I can't find it doesn't that end up noticing and yeah, it's not it's not like the demo itself didn't do that much 
But the fight was still amazing there for Slim because of the Portuguese HP. And he also has a lot more ship production right now because he's had that second dock for a while. Here comes the demo from King Steven. He does land a hit. But War Galley upgrade might come in. Food is still kind of hard to come by right now, I'm noticing, for both players. And the demo went directly no. into the dock. <laughs> so that is not Tato in the red. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. All right, War Galley research coming in. Another demo in the queue, and there's a monastery there for Salim. And I saw a couple knights added in too. So, just a, a high variance of units so far. I think we've seen, you know, scouts, skirms, archers, spears, galleys, fires, demos, almost everything available so far. And now knights added to this as the fires work away, and the quick walls come down from Steven. Good job. Yeah, Steven wasn't expecting the knight. Remember, he was like, okay, this is a navy battle now. And he's definitely not going to be expecting what is coming on the water. And that is a caravel or two, Dave. They're going to be right behind this wood line. And Salim the Grim seems so comfortable playing in towards water. And he's made it so difficult for King Steven to take wood here. I mean, if a demo can get through... Oh, the demo gets through and the demo lands! And villagers get massacred. King Steven is up against it right now. That was four villagers. I'm honestly surprised it wasn't more because what a wonderful demo that was. And the knights are in. Oh, no. There was a hole there. It didn't look like there was one. And now Steven has to manage not only the villagers, but also the mule carts blocking the... Get out of the way! <laughs> and that right there, I mean, this is enough damage to be happy with to, to take this to the later stages of the game. I don't know if you think that way if you're playing Mudflow, but... Beautiful stuff from Salim. Salim now has a nice eco lead. Of course, has all the momentum here. Did end up losing a knight to a conversion there, but I'm really impressed with, with how aggressive Salim has been. The variety of units he's brought forward. He even brought a villager to repair those mm -hmm. ships right next to all of this. There's not many players that do that. God, Salim is teasing us with these caravels, isn't he? Keeps queuing them up and then unqueuing them again. Yeah, Jeez. here's a oh, demo again. I, I agree with you, though. It's one of those things you don't expect to be able to hit with the demo. I think if he had a little bit more patience there, he could have killed like eight if he just went a bit further in. Mm -hmm. Man, this this Slim gameplay really, really reminds me of Yo. Just like the random yeah. units attacking everywhere, right? The variance in units and uh, just kind of not focusing on a single area, pushing in three different spots making things crazy and still having a solid economy behind yeah and then you've got king steven on the other side who defended so nicely in the first game obviously some bad things have happened to here but he is continuing to play quite well he's got more ships now than his opponent he's gotten some conversions here or there to help with that and i'm sure that will continue on both sides king steven is behind right now david he's going to try and find a, an avenue to come back and that idea right now is actually a fortified church drop in the middle of the map, you can garrison in that with villagers and shoot arrows. I actually really like that idea on this map. Okay. Who would say sec 14? E everybody. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the monks! Um, Don't lose the monks! No, dude! And who would lose monks on the shoreline immediately after the pause? I don't know, dude. <laughs> like, Salim is just enough bright moments to get excited. But on occasion, some things are going south. I've also noticed that both players are just having some food issues right now. Back to our point earlier, you need more food eco. There's currently three fires for Salim. And there's ten fires for King Steven. And, dude, fires, as you know, will take out town centers very quickly. Which would leave the villagers exposed here for Salim. And it feels like King Steven's coming back. I see monks going down. There's navy everywhere. What is happening? Yeah, if you control this water area, you force your opponent into the uh, the outside wood lines, which just don't have a lot of wood available on them. And great investment onto the navy here by King Steven. There's a bit of a choke point there. So he's going to have to be careful with demos potentially coming out of that dock. But... It's a good comeback here. And like you said, Slim kind of struggling with that food eco, just like Steven is. Trying to keep those town centers producing, not really able to go for any land army at the same time. 
You know, the thing I think that actually hurt Salim was the Caravels. Like, I haven't seen the Caravels take any good engagements. They're dead now or gone now. Maybe he queued them up and canceled no, them. No, ne he never made he never made any. Yeah, he, he never made them. Yeah, so them. I think, like, he, he needed a plan here. And I think the plan was, was great initially just to continue with ships. But he definitely didn't keep the production up. And this is, there's more fire ships on this map than maybe we saw in the whole qualifier. This navy after navy after naval unit here. And it's so messy. It's really hard for us to break this down, right? So many different things happening. That demo lands. Still no idols everywhere for Slim. And then you've got random knights running into your eco as well. This is not the mud flow game that many people who came to watch today were expecting. Where's this castle go from Slim? Surely you can't make it in the center. Surely no, not. There's no, no, just no, too no, much no. navy. I think on the shoreline, um, in a position that that gives you less of a headache with that TC would make sense. The Slim is God, still a nice crazy. villager lead. That knight's that's knight's been been microing around and killed four vills. It does seem like Salim is waiting. Like he thinks he's gonna take a good fight, and then he can place a castle in a more like definitive spot. Mm -hmm. I would just be building that castle immediately. Also making war galleys instead of fires, which I, I don't know, man. It's just, it's really hard for me to know what's right because oh we haven't seen the situation before, but there's no way. Oh Slim. God. Oh, hold, hold me chat. <clears throat> Dude, this is going to be, I mean, risky. if he, if he tries to build this doubt confirmed, right? No one would build this castle. M doubt or yo, maybe this is crazy. Oh my god. Well, here we go. Castle's on the way. We've got three monks and two war galleys against a bunch of monks and some fires and everything else. From our perspective, there are monks it seems there, quite though. risky. There are monks and the houses on each side were genius. And if he converts the fires, he could switch these naval numbers around really, really quick. And look at this. The fight is suddenly going in favor of Salim. And Salim's going to have the castle there, which will protect the wood lines also able to take out that fortified church a great turnaround here for salim and now we look at the economies he's still very far ahead tristan like this is a really good position now for salim because he's got that castle to retreat back to never a doubt <laughs> never a doubt yep. i knew i knew the castle was gonna go up and so did everybody nobody thought that that castle would be risky everyone thought that that castle was the perfect castle to place in this situation and Salim the Grim is going to continue to spam in Navy here. It feels like the fortified church is going to be taken out. With the additional eco, Dave, with the extra HP on the Portuguese ships, it feels like you could just continue to do this. The wood is not far away. And King Stephen is just hoping that these Armenian galleys are doing something special for him here. They do fire the extra bolt, but he's still missing Vod Canero right now. God, the food eco is still so grim for Salim. Like, seven on food right now is barely enough to keep those town centers running. It's not in the long term, but right now he's yep. still got a couple villagers queued. He does have enough stone for another castle, but you need to get that stuff sorted ASAP. Because long term, this is going to be a huge problem, and it's almost allowing Steven to catch up in villagers. He's, he wants to drop another castle right now. I, I, maybe it mm -hmm. wasn't part of his plan. Maybe it's just the eco balance issue, because the whole... 38 on wood and 8 on food is, is part of the problem, but I mean, I think we're going to see another castle close to these docks maybe here. The villagers are chopping wood. It would make sense, unless you want to place a more defensive castle on a gold or something, that he might do this. I actually wouldn't mind, Dave, for him to walk up onto the grass next to the TC of King Stephen and drop the castle there. Don't even drop yep. it on the water. Okay, I mean, Stephen definitely isn't Tato. Yeah, the Tata was not in this set because Tata would have a dock at least with a demo in it, just in case the yeah. castle drop was coming. And the way he threw that demo in to those war galleys. Oof. Yeah, th there's been a couple. You, you can tell the players understand the need for demos, but not necessarily how to use them, which Tata's the best at, at doing. Still waiting. It's a very scrappy game at the moment. Remember, King Stephen is taking wood and stone in this area. And King Stephen also has enough stone to maybe drop a castle. But the the ship count for Slim and having... Well, I guess they both have Bod Canero now, but... So just the, the monks and the ship count he has seems this... really tough for King Stephen to engage against. 
is this where you start adding in the caravels now if you want to go full water investment you have enough war galleys to deal with the fires which are the natural counter to caravels and your opponent is going into war galleys maybe you want to add that in but i guess your war galleys are working right now so keep doing that thing as he pushes forward and now slim wants a castle on that right side he's got a demo uh... over there and steven is looping villagers around too Okay. The demo goes underneath the gate and doesn't hit anything. And uh, we have a just passing moment. And Salim the Grim realizes exactly what these villagers are doing here. And is going to drop his own castle. I think Salim should be able to complete this castle. But King Steven, who's already behind, is thinking, maybe I need to build my castle in this guy's base then. And so there he goes. And uh, he's going to try and drop a castle oh, there. Alert. We what? have a doubt. This is doubt. We have a doubt. Day three hidden cup alert. This is doubt. A hundred percent. I mean, he's be. either he's going to win the game. He's going to lose the game from this castle. <laughs> Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to lose. This one doesn't feel like it's going up, but you never know. And also, no walling wall attempt on the Vils, right? Doubt confirmed. Doubt confirmed. GG. Salim the Grim ties it up and gets the win beautiful series so far and two very unique players uh we of course don't know exactly who these players are we can only speculate we find out who the players are at the conclusion of the tournament but uh that uh that that last moment there with the castle definitely had some doubt vibes for me yeah. oh man great kd there for uh, slim think... and great control i don't think i've ever seen that amount of investment onto water on this map like i've always thought about it it seems like a good idea but players usually mix it up and then go land and then you can't go water because then you die on land mm -hmm. but both of those guys really hard invested into that as we saw the demo could have got better value there but still really solid and then of course this castle the houses on both sides were really nice and the monks behind got the conversions they needed and then swung this completely around ever since this moment steven was on the back foot yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a great game. Great series. I mean, I think that what what was the most impressive is that Salim possibly faced something there he'd never seen before. The initial Spearman rush he was able to be, he defended from. Uh, then he saw the dock opening and decided to do the same. So I really wonder if Salim was planning on going Navy like that, or if Salim just said, oh, this is the type of strategy you're going for. Great. I'm Portuguese. I also get more HP on my ships. And uh, was happy to play in towards that. But uh, Dave, Dude, talk Salim... to us about. Yep, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, so, no, go ahead because I... <laughs> my 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 point is not is not high value. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I need I need a a that's perfect because I need a point which is not high value, <laughs> so I can step away a, a, for a moment. So go ahead, have at it. I'll be right back, that's and a... we'll hop into game number three. All right. I just saying, like Salim, kind of looks like. He just walked into a room and he smelled a really bad fart. Like I said, the buildup wasn't worth the final result there for that point, but it's still true. It is still true. Somebody crop dusted Salim. All right. We're not sure who it is, but it happened. Don't minus seven K me. I, I'm spitting facts, all right? And now he's gone, which makes this situation way worse because I'm stuck with it. Like Salim is stuck with this fart in the room. I'm literally stuck here and he's not talking and there's no exit plan for me. Can I go get a drink? No. Okay, well, uh, uh, I have we returned don't know to save map, you. Thank God. <laughs> I have returned to save you. I, I just see the minus seven Ks, so I imagine you've you bombed a little bit, but it's okay. People are used to that here. So thank you everybody for giving Dave a warm welcome in the way that you know how. And I will definitely load up the VOD later on tonight to see exactly what Dave said to you. Uh, but I am back. Uh, it is important casters are hydrated, and uh, I had a pounding headache yesterday in the middle of the two hour game that went down to less than 10 trees. And in that moment, when I didn't have water next to me, I said, for the rest of this week, need to hydrate up a little bit. So uh, that explains the break. So um, 
very different players so far. I'm really getting excited for this now because it, it definitely feels like a doubt yo matchup. And when we've seen them play in the past, it's always been very close. Um, King Steven excelled defensively game one against aggression, then struggled on the more open aggressive map in game two. Uh, the available maps would be Evacuation, Bay, and Cup, uh, or technically Hidden Forts and Slopes. I think it would make sense for King Steven to probably go for a prep strategy. Evacuation mm -hmm. is brand new. Uh, these players didn't get to see any of the games we covered the first two, get, first two days, right? The games already happened. So I would be shocked if it's not evacuation for game number three. But uh, willing to be proven wrong here, King Steven. Let's hop into game number three and see what we have. And, uh, dude, I'm also excited to talk to you a little bit about, if we have the time, of course, depending on how action-packed this is, but just what you think of these maps. But it is not Evacuation. It is actually Hidden Forts for game number three. But, again, Hidden Forts is a map that's brand new here in Hidden Cup 5. And kind of my hope, my dream, was that players would practice this and they would come up with strategies that differed from each other. And Lithuanians was one of the strategies that you pudding showed me in our practice games Going Lithuanians and going to chop the wood early, he said, was one of the best strategies possible for this map. That's what King Steven's going to try. And again, Dave, it's like exactly what you would expect from King Steven. We had game two, fancy little strategy with the dock and the spearmen. And now we have this. I just love this so much from this player. That's a very interesting lumber camp there from steven it's one tile away now if your objective is to get through the wood as quickly as possible that's probably the best lumber camp you can make so that the mm -hmm. villagers aren't bumping uh and you can fit three on that first one if you really want to but long term obviously that's not going to be the greatest but you're not really making a lumber camp here for long-term wood supply right you can go somewhere yeah. else for that so i'm going to just say again and it's half for the memes, but doubt confirmed because of that lumber camp. And I'm going to tell you why. So again, we did testing on this, right? And the idea, of course, mm -hmm. is sound that you can chop through these trees. If you build a, a lumber camp, which is more efficient, which is against the wood, which is what every other player has done on this map, and you just shift cue them onto the trees, on occasion, one of the villagers will get stuck. And if the villager gets stuck for half a second, they will switch to another tree, which is annoying but basically means you need to pay attention to it and micro it. And with all the mm -hmm. jokes around doubt, not wanting to have to do extra work, <laughs> I could definitely see doubt being like, uh, I don't have time to micro my wood line. So let's just build a lumber camp that gets the job done. <laughs> and look, they go right to that other tree and they're immediately chopping it. Beautiful. So yep. he's going to be through really quickly. Dang, that's crazy. And then Bengali's for Salim. So Bengali's kind of a bit awkward at times uh, because they don't get knights, but their economy is insane and they do get extra villagers when they make it to the next stage. Bengali monks are also strong. Could see monks being an option. And apparently Bengali's throughout the qualifier and possibly beyond. I think we maybe had them once in the main event. Uh, this civilization has done very well here, but I, I just, I wonder how the whole middle aspect plays out because we have seen very different approaches, Dave. Sometimes people will take the rhinos and other times people will do pretty much what Salim the Grim has done. And he's happy to place a lumber camp that will get him through eventually. But it doesn't mm -hmm. look like Salim is basing his entire strategy around rushing to the middle right now. Yeah, yesterday we had a very similar kind of style and... I think it was game number one on this map with Otto versus Yadwiga. Yep. And yep. Otto, you know, the thing that convinced me was MBL from game number one was the fact that he just kind of ignored the map. <laughs> you know, like he just did his <laughs> thing behind, didn't chop through the wood line. It was like, all right, you come at me. And it worked out really well for Otto there. Um, but I think that uh, Salim will play this more or less standard and not leave that wood line intact and try and get through. But like you said, Steven, with the prepared strategy, is going to be through first, and we'll see how many rhinos Steven brings in as the scout comes forward now to help out the villager and bringing these in. Yeah, now we envisioned with all the changes we made that maybe people would get two, right? Because we spread mm -hmm. them out. Um, I think we saw six from the middle come in from somebody yesterday. Like, these guys are going crazy for these rhinos. 
which is really fun to see, actually. And it does bring up a point. A lot of players weaken the Rhinos with their TCs. Most players do this. And that there was done a little bit differently than the majority of players do. A lot of players set the rally point for the villagers on top of the Rhino, and the villagers pop out and immediately shoot. That the villagers were sent outside of the TC and then manually shot, and that is how I remember Doubt doing it. But I don't want to dive too deep into the details here. <laughs> oh, man. I think the important thing to remember with the boar luring or rhino luring or whatnot is that everyone basically knows the map. Most players know the math. And they'll adapt based on what villagers they initially select, right? So it's not always yeah. the same thing. If you drag select and you only get four instead of the six that you wanted, you'll just oh. shoot it three times. With okay, the four, so this right? is where there's more stress. Okay, though. can you this save is where this? There's more stress. Huh? A lot of players He's go house one. trick. We have no house trick. He's got loom. This is okay. so doubt, dude. This is this, this is, so, is doubt. so no. Don't lose that other villager on the left side. Just leaves it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> this to me. Just everything about it feels like doubt, and I love it. And that's the beautiful thing about the guy. We had some stats about him. He doesn't. He's maybe isn't as active as some other players. Uh, it maybe isn't as speedy or uses as many formations. Actually, you know what we'll be telling is if we see box formation on the scouts. If we don't see box formation on the scouts, it should be either Barrels, Doubt, or uh, MBL if the stats that I found mean anything. Oh, Rhino, but, come uh, on. He's right there. Come on, come on Rhino. Rhino. Your right, friends now, are over make here. Sure having you a don't party. Shoot it. You don't shoot it with the TC because you've already shot it a bunch. You can't do the 6 plus 7 anymore. Uh, no. uh, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Good. We have faith. We have faith here in King Steven. Yep. So let's look at what By King the way, Steven's Salim doing is going here. For a... oh, okay, go ahead. Salim's going yeah, no, it's thing. Yeah, it's it's like kind of fast castle for King Steven as well because he's using the rhinos for it. But yep, Salim walled up. Salim's also made a second lumber camp. And Salim also is not intentionally chopping through to the middle right now, which I think is because he expects King Steven to have some army. He's played extremely safe here. It will be fast castle. And then we'll see if he comes to the middle. Now, I did want to bring up something that I think you are really going to appreciate, Dave. Um, and you also know the player. So El Matador, right? Like one of the fastest players. Mm -hmm. He just, he needs to find a reason to be nerdy with some unit. Um, with Lithuanians, El Matador was using the Lithuanian Skirm to run around the middle, attack a rhino, <laughs> and lure them all up and i think it's actually good enough where it maybe sh if you're going to make a range anyways everyone should be doing it because you yeah. can have like three or four rhinos chasing one single skirm and it's less risky than using your villagers so i thought it was pretty funny i mean you can do it with uh you can do it with the spearman too you're gonna lose a little bit of hp the skirm yeah, the true. issue with the skirm if you if you played like a bunch of hyper random or whatever where you're trying to lure in those rhinos is sometimes you hit take the first hit and then the rhino gets within your minimum range and you can't get the second hit <laughs> so you're oh, like yeah, ah! true 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 <laughs> you can't bring it in <laughs> it's it's you really have to uh you really have to have the time correctly when you're attacking them so king steven has a unit parked behind both wood lines now he knows that slim is not going to the outside he sees the trees that are being chopped and you cannot wall your opponent out because of that rock terrain. So it gets interesting now. And I'm very curious on what Salim is going to try and do. It looks right now like Salim is building up Spearman. And he will cut through and he will enter the middle in a moment here. People are talking about the formations here on the scouts. We're not seeing box formation. But also we don't really see all the scouts grouped. Let's... I, you know, I think box formation as well, it's something you use when you're actually engaging with the units. That's another part of it. There's the scout from Salim checking things out in the middle, looping around and timing his cut. He is in the middle. Perfect timing here from Salim the Grim. And he's got Spearman. And he is definitely going to be dropping something in the middle here, whether it be a TC or Monastery, I don't know. But the villagers are ready, Dave. And what 
a fun game we have. Resources collected is very even. I think Steven will be in cast late soon. All his scouts are looping around to the middle right now. Look at the resources collected, though. Like you just mentioned it. It's ahead for the guy who hasn't been taking rhinos. Yeah. So it gives you some perspective on it. And it was the same for Otto yesterday when he was mm -hmm. just farming and the other guy was taking rhinos all over the place. Uh, he was like 600 resources collected ahead. Oh. So they okay, feel that... very good and they get you an early boost. That nice quick walls there from Salim as he'll get that town center up perfectly fine. But it gives you a little bit of perspective, right? That resources collected stat on what is actually better long term. Do you want a stable yep. eco or do you want that fast food income? Yeah, I think having just a third rhino and then going into farms is very smooth. Now, Salim didn't have that. And Salim is built up here very greedily, immediately for the TCs, and doesn't actually have the farming eco to sustain this forever. Also, pikeman upgrade is coming in, and there's only one pike that's going to be on the field. King Steven, light cav upgrade, and second TC is going to be on the outside. Interesting stuff. Still making sure not to chop through very consciously, right? Yeah. Steven is fine opening this one up and there's the town center. There's the monastery. So we'll be able to collect some relics and with each town center you build with the you will get an additional hundred food floating a lot of food right now. Steven needs to find something to invest that into might be a heavy plow. <laughs> like before any of the farms are created that that would also be that would also be something very, very doubt esque to yeah. squeeze that yeah. in but i do think with the way the eco is looking right now and the fact he doesn't have horse collar he probably is going to want to just add farms with horse collar going for heavy plow would maybe be too greedy arms looking good for slim dave and I, I just love the theme of the map right it's just like the auto game where the player who took the rhinos falls back but goes for map control with army. And then the player who didn't take the rhinos actually pushes the middle in some capacity, which is what we've seen here from Salim. Arms before no horse collar. After it was floating like 500 food there for a bit. Wow. Yeah. Tricky to get that balance down. And it's just such a complex map. These guys, who, regardless of who they are, have played tens of thousands of games probably, and maybe only at most a few dozen on this map. So it's it's tough to get that balance down. It's similar to Fortified Clearing for those that know other tournament maps, but there's other elements to it which make it more difficult than that. But who Still would you say is the advantage right color. now? Mm. Uh, I, I'd mm. say Salim, definitely. Like, Salim has that uh, town center in the middle. The Light Cav from Steven have found basically no value yet until maybe <laughs> able to snipe the smug. Nope. No value whatsoever. And already Pikeman in from uh, from Salim. So already has something to maybe deal with that. And he's going to spot the Siege Workshop potentially. Yeah, he definitely sees it. So. Also, we nice had a quick, quick wall. wall over there on the mining camp. So something about the middle. There's no stone. And then if you small wall yourself like Salim has done, there's also no stone available. So you have to go to the outside for the stone, which King Steven has done. And King Steven will also now know, okay, my opponent's going to stone, so uh -oh. he's thinking about a castle, but I'll win the race to that castle. Yep. That was a nice trap there on those light cav. As he managed to clear a couple of those up. Sanctity on the way for the monks. Bengali monks and pikemen. Really, really strong combination, especially when you're fighting oh, in a God. small area like this. But the villagers are coming forward for the castle. Oh, man. If that castle last game or the castle temp was any indication, this one might be bad, but it l seems like he has enough army to support. It, it's really tricky. If he can get walls down, I think this castle goes up. Pikemen don't do that much damage to villagers, but I could see Salim like pulling his own vills and trying to fight this off because the light cav are, are taking down every, uh, sorry, the, the pikes are taking out everything else. Instead, it looks like Salim wants to maybe buy his own castle, but I don't know if Salim can do that in time, and it's not going to be easy for him to do it if the siege is out there too. Castle will go up, siege will go down, and no, don't tell me Salim walks right into his base here. Just comes for it. Oh my god. I, dude, I think we might be watching Doubt versus Yo, because this has big Yo energy here. He says, okay, you <laughs> dropped the castle on me, 
That's fine. I'll drop a castle on your side. It's okay. <laughs> we'll, we move on. We continue with the game. I love how King Steven is getting all these relics, though. Using the outside focus and getting the relics. It'll be four relics. And now that you have a castle, you can make latest. You're going to have plus four attack on a unit that ignores armor. Mm -hmm. Very strong. Also, the castle being on the TC, I know we laugh about how that castle could have failed. That's textbook right there. You want a castle to deny an important resource or be on an opponent's town center. And that's precisely what that did. But it doesn't take Slim off the gold. And dude, Slim can walk right into King Steven's base if he wishes to uh, with those monks, with any Ratha. I mean, the path is still wide open because King Steven cut earlier on. Mm -hmm. You're saying there's a Patha for the Ratha? There's a there's a path for the wrath. I like that. And there's also a path for the latest. And this is not something Salim wants to deal with. And the pikemen are disappearing. And King Steven says, thank you, bud. He's going to run right through with these latest and the siege. And now Salim's like, no, why did I cut here? Oh, all the farming that's, eco gets That's delayed. what you were trying this to avoid. Brutal. Yeah. That's what he was trying to avoid the entire time. And and that farming eco, there's a lot up there, dude, as the mangonels are there. And Steven will see that. And he could just camp in this area until the monks come along to convert the latest. Great job from Steven to push in there. Another town center behind from Slim. Also, Mapu showed up, but four relics for Steven already collected with the fifth one just there on that left side. Okay, so the monasteries for Slim are in a position where if he sends his monks to where his TC is right here, he might actually run into the castle fire. It's worth pointing that out. Like, that that monastery might be sending monks that direction. He's got to be careful. Now, the redemption tech is great because he can convert the siege. But there should be monks around near the pikemen. And I just don't see any right now. I guess he's making monks from that monastery. But King Steven, I know he's, he, he was late with the horse collar. But he's really shot up with eco here. Unfortunately for him, he did lose all of his latest, and now he's going to lose a lot of his siege. But I'm still very impressed with how Steven has, has played the game, but equally as impressed with how Salim has been able to stay alive against this. Yeah, and Salim can get back on those farms now. At one point, he had like 40 on gold, still 36 on gold right now. Really, really rough, but the Bengalis retain their villager advantage. And he's going for some armored elephants, has the monks, has the pikemen. If he can get the armored elephants attacking that castle, it's really yep. tough for Steven to support against those because it's so far away from where the rest of his, his base is or his military yep. right now. Really, really tough to take out that those elephants. However, Imperial Age on the way. Ooh, okay. So the plan here for King Steven is to, with the castles being so close to each other, it's to get trebuchets out and with trebs win the game. Take down the TCs, take down the castle. It's such an important middle area. But does he see the Siege Workshop? I need to know if he sees the Siege Workshop because if this comes as a complete surprise to him, he might have zero prep for the Siege that's going to come into the right of that castle from Salim. The, the Armored Elephants, as you said, will be coming in. That's also mm -hmm. the Imp TC for King Steven. Oh, no. Sorry. Town Watch no. TC. False alarm. No, no. Calm down. Um, <laughs> <It's> just <kidding. laughs> Calm down. Breathe. But he doesn't see the Siege Workshop, Dave. He doesn't know that the Armored Elephants are going to be coming. And Salim is being patient with this. And if Salim moves soon with four or five armored elephants, I could see King Stephen's castle going down before the Imperial Age. Oh, 100%. And then you look at his stone count, and he's going to hit Imp and then not be able to hit any timings whatsoever. That castle's being attacked now. The elephants there are there. The latest are here. But the pikemen were out of position, so the latest might be able to clear up some of those elephants. The monks Ooh. came in right underneath. They're behind. They're hiding behind the elephant. If you can't see what? them. What? They're very sneaky. The monks zoom in. They are behind. The monks are underneath the castle and converted the latest, which might be the difference between this castle staying up or going down. Crazy stuff. So Lim the Grim will take out this castle, and King Steven's going to be an imp with very little map control. Might not even have this castle soon, Dave, if the elephants make their way over here. Yeah, really, really tough to hit the timings uh, with the Lithuanians here when you don't have the castles, like we said. And now on the way to imp is Salim the Grim, 27 on food now. He's got these four elephants, and the pikemen are still pushing over. The monks are able to heal the elephants. This is a really difficult position here for Steven, especially being behind, behind economically. I will say here's the positive. King Steven has four relics. 
King Steven's food eco is not expanded in the middle. So I actually think if you think you're going to lose the middle if you're King Steven, you could actually just leave. There's still gold outside. There's there's stone outside, which is not in the middle. Maybe then you could stabilize at some other point. But I think trying to hold the middle for too long here, if you know it's going to be lost, could be his downfall. Yeah, this is a really tough push here. The monks can just heal up all the damage being done to the elephants and then the pikemen protect. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, Steven has to keep an eye on that trip. Because if he's fully focused on this pu push through the center, there's a potential for Salim to go over there and snipe that trip. Now, it looks like Salim is going into pikemen, but once again, 51 on gold. Tristan, it's crazy, crazy. eco balance here for him. <laughs> I mean, he also has like 31 farms. Like, his food eco is actually mm -hmm. really good too. And galleys, and then he's gonna it's get just and he's gonna get the extra vills. So it feels like King Stevens always gonna be behind economically, meaning the trebor has to do something in the middle. There are some trebs going after one of the castles that Salim has, but this pressure man, it, it must be so annoying right now to be King Steven. You thought you were gonna be the one applying pressure and controlling the middle, and Suddenly, Salim is the one who is almost full control there. Yeah, I think the issue for Bengali's long term is going to be like, you can't just spam a unit like Latus or Cavalier, yeah. right? You're going to yeah. have to go into a multi-unit composition. However, look at the eco balance from Salim. At one point, probably five minutes ago, he had like 20-something on food. Now he's got 36 on food, still 50 on gold, 144 villagers. It's really I, crazy, the economy, and okay. Halberdier's coming in. This is I, dangerous. It's dangerous. I'm laughing, though, because the worst possible thing just happened to Salim. So he lost his castle, and he didn't have the houses set up, so he got housed. But then he got, like, ten more vills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> So he got super pop lock, super pop lock, And that's a big deal when you're trying to get more monks and more halves out. Elite Latus is in for King Steven. We know all that extra attack is going to be there. And King Steven's trebs have taken out the castles. And King Steven has Latus running around. King Steven is still alive in this game. I, Latus can do disgusting things. All right. There's 16 plus 6 attack that ignores armor. If you think these halves are a threat to these things, well, you're going to have to have at least double the numbers. Because those Latus yeah. can shred absolutely everything. Another barracks behind there from Salim and the Halberdier is still harassing on the farms, but Salim is now down to 22 on food as a lot of those farmers have been uh, have been idled by the latest. So great raids here from King Steven, bringing it back a little bit. Ooh, monk control here. How is it for Salim the Grim? Salim the Grim gets quite a few conversions. Well played. Monks still survive as well, which is big. The Halb numbers now up to 20 and there they are. And this is normally where King Steven, even with the latest, would want to have some oh, other look at them just the shred mix. the helms. I mean, yeah, it's like, this is also why if you ever see someone only make latest, this is why. Because they're so good. I, I still think you've got to get chemistry here, though, Dave. Get chemistry. If you have gunpowder and elite latest, I'm not sure how the opponent can stop you. Dang, man. Nice push in the center with four trebs. But you need the numbers. Of the latest, right? Mm -hmm. He's right now. He's only got sixteen. He's got five more in the queue, but one hundred and forty-one villagers. The Halberdier tech, the monks as well. So your latest or my latest now for Salim, and devotion coming in for Steven. If this is doubt, he will be saying, "I am devoted." I am devoted, so, but he says it after units get converted in frustration i i love how the latest that were converted are now being used to raid that that is the perfect use of them instead of tossing them into the meat grinder listen there's also another thing if we if we're speculating on players we haven't seen box formation from either player so far and yo and doubt are at the bottom of the list as far as that's concerned and then also yo is known for getting what's called yo conversions that's what people say to so fast conversions i've seen some pretty yo conversions at times what a sick game here, Dave. King Steven is, like, kind of pushing, but I'm not so certain he can actually break Salim with Salim's 150 villager count. Yeah, if he loses that castle in the middle, it's going to be really tough because then it splits his forward aggression from his main base, right? And he's and then once yep, that yep, forward yep. aggression of these latest, which are very dangerous, once that gets cleared up, then suddenly you have to kind of reset back to your own base. So... 
It's a good push from Salim to try and go through the center there. I'm not sure what the monks are doing what? over here. Did he yeah, just delete if that? Any other he just sieve. deleted that. He did. Do you see that <laughs> engagement? Uh, I don't deleted. know why, because he killed the monk, but whatever. Dude, he's killing everything here. The latest have found great value here. Villagers are going down. There's also the Trebs from Slim towards the middle, which is, is where Slim is focusing. This is the area. If King Steven can continue to raid with the latest back here, this could be insane. And I think, again, you can actually give up the middle. You have relics. There's gold elsewhere. You don't need to send everything in the middle if it's going to be too big of an investment to defend there. And more conversions for Slim. How many latest does he have? He's got seven latest, and now he's going to use the latest to kill villagers here. Yeah, but look at all the flashing lights in his eco. That was such a great raid that from King Steven, and he killed so many villagers there. It was 150 villagers for Slim, and now it's only 100. That is incredible. What? The latest are Dude, going what is crazy happening? mode in the eco. This is crazy. He's, he's overchopped there, but Dave, like, King Steven can die. King Steven has killed 80 villagers with these latest, but is getting trebbed and getting help pushed right now. It's 140 pop for both. There needs to be some type of an answer out here for these halberdiers and these monks. Once the castles go down, you can't make this broken unit anymore, right? <laughs> Every unit is broken if you use it well enough, but this one truly is. And uh, he's only going to have, I think, one castle remaining on that right side once that one in the center inevitably dies. Not enough stone, not enough villagers repairing against four treads unless you can come in and snipe all of these. Oh, man, he's so scared of those monks, as he should be, because every time he gets close to them, Salim is ready, and the castle falls. There is only one castle now for King Steven to make latest. The positive here, though, is he does have 20 of them. So that's good. There's also still latest finding kills randomly in Slim's eco. But the skirm 41 count on food needs again for Slim. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Also, these latest have killed like a dozen villagers. Like every time he converts latest, he's killing just as many villagers as he lost, it feels like. Oh my god. I think King Steven's starting to expand to the sides a little bit, I'm noticing. Must realize that the middle is a problem. The score is good for him, which certainly boosts the confidence. He doesn't have the gold area in the middle. He would need to find resources elsewhere. We got random activity on the sides here from both players. But there's still that big red blob through the middle from Salim as he refuses to quit. And he sees the skirms. And what's he going to do? He's going to convert them to his side and treb down all the archery ranges. Yeah, it's brutal when you're trying to make a transition and your opponent is right there and killing your production buildings as you're trying to make mm -hmm. that, right? So then you have to replace yep. them behind. You keep falling further and further back. Man, every time we go back to Slim's base, there's another group of latest just absolutely mowing down villagers. <laughs> oh my goodness, Eco KD now 102 to 55. But remember, there needs to be a castle to make the latest. And as far as I could see, that only castle is being trebbed down from the middle right now. There it is. That castle is mm -hmm. getting hit by trebs. King Steven needs to get over there with Latus while still needing to keep his main eco alive and still needing oh to find God. raids. And he is finding the raids. Sim the Slim the Grim probably feels like he has this game, but he's lost 120 villagers to Latus raids now. Well, you know, it, it doesn't help that every single time he sends 10 halves back to deal with five latest, the latest end up winning the fight and then continue yeah, to I kill know, the right? bills, right? You think, you think you've put the fire out, but the fire never stops burning here. The latest are still producing from one castle. It's 90 villagers for Salim, 110 for Steve, and he's got a decent amount of skirms as now Salim tries to make a switch into the light cab and has to roll his treads back. So the push has finally been stalled out a little bit. Dude, this is crazy. This is one of the this is one of the games of Hidden Cup so far. It could still go either way. There's still so much available gold in the middle for Salim. There's there's a, one I guess one castle for him, but it's just one castle for King Steven. They don't really have the fortifications. This is also mm -hmm. where it does get awkward to be Bengalis, right? Because you need that multi comp. He had Halb and Monk. Now the monks are kind of all gone. He's gotta wait for more of them. His opponent has skirms. But as I say oh, the that, the Trebs, Trebs find what they want here. Yeah, four Trebs is wow. really tough to stop. You only have 
a uh, hundred stone in the bank, you're not saving that castle. Yeah, and I think then you have to debate on do you go like Cavalier instead mm -hmm. of Latest? Now here, obviously, Slim the Grim a little distracted, but he takes the castle out. Might end up losing his trebs here. These Latus are insane with the extra attack, but now the latest player does not have a building to make any more of them. And somehow there's still some in the back. <laughs> you know the other thing I'm noticing? villagers only. The other thing I'm noticing is that Salim doesn't actually have a convenient area for wood beyond this little inner circle. Like, he can't take the mm -hmm. outer wood because he keeps getting raided. So there's various instances where I'm seeing lumber camps go up on the little, on the tiny wood areas. And if you don't have the wood, you can't really get the food to go into anything else either. He's down to 80 villagers right now. Yeah, it's really bad. Really, really rough situation for him. I mean, the town centers haven't been producing. He's been very, very distracted. And it, I, it feels like Steven has kind of pulled this back. 43 skirmishers, Tristan. I don't know... He doesn't have tower shields yet, but still, 43 skirmishers is really, really impressive. Yeah, and that's most of them right there, just sitting in the middle. It's actually hit a point where Salim might not even be able to count through skirms because he doesn't have the mm -hmm. food eco, right? Light cap would be the play. He can't afford the final armor upgrade. Of course, the light cap, because of how good Salim is at various points, is going to find the bombard cannon there. But his eco is abysmal at the moment. The only thing I'll say is, like, now the, there won't be many latest raids. Now I see a bunch of latest spread out and King Steven's waiting for him. But if those latest get dealt with, maybe Slim the Grim could expand his eco a little bit. Did he just buy a castle? Know, though. It feels like he did. Yeah. I, I think he I bought think another he did, castle I think in the it, back. <laughs> I think it's also very worth it to do that here. When the latest are a big part of why you've been having success. Skirms are getting massacred here getting absolutely massacred, and the Bombard Cannon is going to get converted, so Salim refuses to quit yet again. And what a game here. The these guys are such fighters. And Lycav finding such a great fight in the middle, and kind of another pushback here from Salim. Both of these guys refusing to quit. As soon as those castles went down for Steven, it makes it hard for him to do serious damage. I say that, and the latest are still finding villager kills somehow. And yeah, as soon yeah. as the... The monks and the halb numbers disappeared for Salim. It was difficult for him to find a serious push. So it's kind of a recovery mode stage of the game for both of these guys. It's just crazy. The Bombard Cannon that was just converted is being attacked by villagers who must have known the guy. Uh, Light Latis is killing all those villagers, though. I, I, listen, I, I know that King Steven has the big vill lead. And I know he's still killing vills. I know I can make more Latis. I'm not ready to give up on Salim yet if Salim has the middle and Salim shows this level of fight. Salim has 105 pop, is getting that gold now, finds the Ecos on the outside. That's starting to, to make him aware that, ooh, maybe King Steven's exposed in other areas where there's no castles. Like, these players are incredibly strategic, but also just mm -hmm. flawed enough for, you know, for the really high-level players, where I think this could go on for another hour at this point. Yeah, and I mean, Steven has the relics, right? Which is great for Lithuanians, double bonus there. But Salim has control of the center, where the majority of the mm -hmm. gold is. So long term, it's going to be better for Steven. But when you can just toss 30 villagers on gold, right now it's going to be better for Salim. And it gives him a little bit more in the way of options. Also, have to mention, Wheelbarrow just coming in like a minute ago really really rough for, for slim. slim and maybe why yeah. his food income even with 30 on farms wasn't really enough to keep the army up and i, I just keep looking i keep waiting to see slim's vill count at least be at 100 which is the minimum you'd want at this point of the game and it's it's still like mm -hmm. 88 at the moment and he continues to lose vills soon it will have been 200 lost king steven buys another castle and he's going to place it towards the opening. So it seems like King Steven realizes I can't give him that gold. And he actually found this oh, as God. well. What a find from King Steven. And I take it all back, guys. I think with King Steven's castle, well, having two castles now, the, with the ability to make Latus, the eco that he has, we might actually be moments away from King Steven mopping up Slim the Grim.
If Salim the Grim wants to accept his defeat, that is. I feel like I've flip-flopped so many times on this game on who I think has the advantage. And yep. the last couple minutes has definitely been definitely been Steven, and the latest raids are helping out a ton. I mean, you just got to look at the Eco Kitty. 189 to 88. As Salim is trying to stay competitive, but the villagers just keep dying, and he has to keep investing more resources into more villagers so that he can get his economy back up there, and then they get killed again, and it's just a, it's a vicious cycle. And then, and then Salim is like, I'm not dead yet. Like, yes, all that stuff's bad for me, but I'm still going to tread push you because I'm Salim the Grim, and I will never give up. And he doesn't lose a single treb. King Steven now needs to have all hands on deck to be able to deal with this. And the raids there got realized, got noticed. Just saying there's a chance. So then the Grim also did kill some villagers in the north with Lycav. Monks into the TC there for Salim. Trebs still need to be protected. Castle. There's no stone, really, to repair it right now. King Stephen's not Those noticing Lycav the raid. Those Lycav are going crazy mode. In the north. What is happening? Who needs latest when you have Lycav? Dave? I, I, is it happening again? Where somehow Salim is staying alive in this game. Uh, no, he's going to... It's The cycle continues, dude. It just keeps looping back <laughs> around. He's going to feel fine. He's going to be like, I'm getting there. I'm going to recover. And then another raid is going to come in. And he goes back down to 75 bills again. And we've been through this 15 <laughs> times before. It will happen again. It is a vicious oh, cycle. The trebs are protected again. The trebs are protected again. It's so easy to accidentally run into that castle and lose those halbs. It is a vicious cycle. I'm still seeing latest. This is the problem. It's like you miss one of them. And by the time you realize, then you've lost 10 villagers. It's and over. now we've got trebs in the middle from King Steven. And King Steven will take the castle. There's skirms again. King Steven will also take the trebs. And maybe this is finally it in the best game of the series. And Salim's gonna drop another castle! Salim's like, no! No! Stop calling the GG, guys! I am Salim, and we are fine! I've got some gold. Uh, I've got, you know, 100. I've got 69 bills. That's nice for me. I see Trebs exposed. I'm gonna kill them with the latest I converted? What? And Dave, the light calf are still going to freaking town, by the way. They're still doing it. How many kills? They're still How many kills? Bills. Like 30? Oh my 30! Oh my god! And now here! What is happening? Oh my god! This game is nuts, dude! There's a 30 population difference between them right now. 30! Oh god. And the converted latest like are that. so frustrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, <laughs> have a taste of your own me This is how it feels, idiot. <laughs> The consistency in which Salim the Grim has used the latest he's converted to kill tons of villagers is wild to me. He has always found the right spots. Like, if the role was reversed, it feels like Salim, he would have won the game already. But how effective he's been with a unit he can't even build. Oh my god, dude. It's 100 pop against 125. This is a complete reset. They're both, like, really in a bad spot right now. I think like 68 bills is harder to come back from though. And especially without, yeah. he doesn't even have like, he doesn't have heavy plow. He doesn't have the final wood upgrade. He doesn't have a hand cart. He doesn't have a ton of things. So this <laughs> 69 villager eco is just not as efficient as it could be, but he still fights on 102 population versus 140. Oh God. Now from Steven. He, convert, he converted a unit. Good luck, King Steven villagers. Good luck. Yeah. Right now, there's been a change of approach from King Steven, and that is to focus on Hussars and not make quite as many latas. And I like this if you think you're going to run out of gold, and you can kind of save up the gold for other things. Uh, I think another thing could be hand cannon. Hand cannon is really tricky for halbs to deal with, for example, but skirms are fine. Okay, there's two latas converted, so we'll wait for those 50... things to kill 30 villagers. 56 on food now. For Steven, this one should be over. Now, we've said that before, but he continues uh -huh, uh -huh. to get the raids in. And I I don't see a way that Salim can come back from this, dude. I, I, I just don't. 58 with Winged Hussar. Like, even if you don't you, take control of that middle, you're just going to be picking away at the eco behind. You would need... What you would actually need 
is you need a tread push in a critical area with the halves before the skirm mass comes in. So you would need like three, four trebs to the right corner. Because that right corner, mm -hmm. there's a lot of eco there. But it does feel like he's still waiting to mass those trebs. And it's going to be King Steven who's hitting him. And King Steven continues to raid. We got more blue dots just running into this eco. And I I'm with you. And I was with you the other three times that you felt this. That this game will be King Steven's. But uh, Slim the Grim certainly has made him fight for it here. Oh my goodness, dude. So, player, player guesses here. I'm feeling doubt yo or doubt ACCM or something along those lines. Any disagreement on that? Yeah. Any other players that come to mind no. on who these? these I think could be? it's. I I'm pretty so. I mean, you gotta stay humble, right? But I'm pretty sold. Yeah. It's yeah. it's yeah. doubt yo right now. Yeah, and people will see okay. the amount of villagers dying and say like, "This is a qualified player. This isn't a top player." No, trust me, trust me. That I've seen doubt and yo lose villagers like this many many times in the past. And uh, that's a win for King Steven. A really, really hard-fought, well-deserved win for him. It, it was. And um, I have to say, with how this series has gone so far, I think we're in for a banger. I think this, uh, this is going to be a six- or seven-game banger. A big name is going to go down. Incredible game. King Steven used his strategy to cut through to the middle, take the Rhinos. But uh, honestly it evened out like it was really close there um and then king steven just shot out of a cannon with the latest raids the relics on the outside and the outside control in general brought him so much gold and i, I think the res collected right now is very deceiving i think when the game was even mm -hmm. uh before the latest killed vills i think that you would have looked at res collected it would have actually been better for salim but then when latest just erased 50 villagers at a time it became really difficult for Slim to keep up. Yeah, I mean, Slim just got nuked by the raids. He just got nuked, and that's it. And then you spend the entire game in recovery mode. You're trying to get your villager yeah. number back up to the 150 where it was. I mean, maybe you could have made some arguments for some walls from him on the left side. Yeah, and then that maybe, doesn't happen. Maybe. Right? You can focus up. If you're playing Halb up against Latus, I feel like walls are a necessity. Even if they're just house walls, you give yourself some warning and you don't get hit that hard there. And then you force him to take the engagement against your Trebs and your Halbs in the center. All right, folks. Well, I know you come to Hidden Cup 5 for the entertaining games, but also for the entertaining stats where we dive into the details. So I have an overlay here, which will give us details on how many players call uh, GG with all caps. Yes, that's right. We have an overlay for this. And we just saw the GG called by Slim the Grim in all caps. So, if we think this is Yo, Yo apparently has only done that 1% of the time. 97% uh, of the time he calls GG in lowercase. Uh, and the other, I guess, 2% is he does some variation of it. For example, Ganji on screen typically does capital G and lowercase g. And Ganji messaged me yesterday. was like, I didn't know I actually did that until this overlay came up. So thanks for pointing that out. You've got, let's see, the, the, the best players with the big GG up there would be uh, Sato, the Viper, and Sebastian, and then Vinchester. Everybody else, typically the lowercase GG. Uh, don't look too much, too far into this, people, but also do it at the same time. It's Hidden Cup, so have fun with it. But I don't know, dude. I, I'm canceling my yo prediction now, all because of that GG. What about you? I mean... I just love the fact that Burles is at zero. It's so fitting for Burles. <laughs> Burles does not care, dude. Burles, Burles is not a capitalization kind of guy. He's he's just like, yeah, GG. Whatever. GG, GG. Yeah, yeah that's pretty funny. I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it's stuff like this that makes it fun. And what also is fun is the first two rounds are played before we even casted the first game. So the players can't see the stats that we're showing, guys, and change what they're doing. Until the semifinals, realistically. So um, we had other stats on formations and whatnot, too. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Just just, just makes you think a little bit. But now Salim the Grim is going to have to think about what he does to tie it up here. And um, I mean, at this point, he's down 2-1. Then he just lost on what was his home map. So you have mm -hmm. one home map remaining in slopes. 
and then the opponent has three home maps remaining. Do you go for the opponent's home map? Do you just use your own home map for a confidence booster, or is it really not that big a deal, Dave? I feel like you've asked me this so many times. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay. You got to. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I also I want to. I want to say the GG thing. I want to go back to that for a second. Is okay, there a sure, correlation sure. between how fat your fingers are? And how many times do you say the capitalized GG? Dope probably has the, well, the biggest uh, fingers here. I'm really so Dave, I'm glad no. you asked because I'm glad you asked because production has a fat finger, a finger size overlay we are gonna toggle to next to see the finger sizes of the No. Uh we don't have that, but I, I don't know. Doubt has big hands. I know that much. Yeah. He's a big but human. he's also had he's also had the same keyboard for like twenty years. So he's probably uh -huh. not like shifting his finger up because when I, I type GG in caps, it's because I've hit the caps lock unintentionally, right? Yeah. So he's yeah. probably like used to it by now. Anyway, we'll get those measurements and get right back to you folks. <clears throat> in the future. I would love it for like, for like Sato, for example, he's like 40%, 55%. What if he has one of his hotkeys in game as caps lock? Yeah. And it's there's like a it just toggles it on and off constantly and depending on whether it was an even or an odd number of use of that hotkey throughout the game determines his gg i don't know it'd be kind mm -hmm. of fun some people do use caps lock as an actual hockey but again we're gonna have more details for you guys more things to think about but what we do know now is that these two players whoever they are are fantastic thank you guys for being here thanks for the supports all the new primes all the new smiles all the new laughs on occasion at some of our jokes um we're gonna hop into game four now so Lim the grim versus king steven i am officially warmed up and ready for this one this one i cannot look away from and we have cup and koreans here for king steven up against Salim the grims gurjaras wow these civilizations dave could not be more different from each other i i've seen koreans here before we saw it in the earlier matchup i believe like the first set someone played koreans right maybe the second set day one for sure um on cup but gajaras i i i can kind of see the potential with being able to garrison your fishing ships should be nice right and also the the camels could be strong the shavamshas could be strong here but it's an unorthodox pick for sure it definitely is now the fishing ship garrison bonus for the Gurjaras is something that is so rarely seen because the nature of playing the Gurjaras is you want the mill right away. And mm -hmm. so you're spending your wood on that, which means your lumber camp's delayed, which means you're not really going to be in a good position to fish. So they, they, those bonuses typically work against each other. So I still don't think the fishing garrison thing will, will play much of a role. But I do think the eco is good for them. I do also think the Shravamsha should be really good against ships, right? Because of how the mm -hmm. how it works. I don't know about fires. Fires, but no, it should do pretty that'll well through the armor against galleys real quick. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Does it? Okay. okay. Does it have armor against demos? Well, the Koreans don't have demos, you dunce. True, actually, yeah, true. So it's not Tato here. We know that. <laughs> I already was thinking about that. I was already like, ooh, how do they do against demos? And then I remembered Koreans do not have it. But Gurjars and Koreans have only been played five times each and they've done decently well, but I don't I don't think anyone knows exactly where those civs are right now. But Vasco de Gama on day one made Koreans look really good here. And mm -hmm. what he did was he played relatively passively uh in the early game, walled up, and then basically played heavy into the eco and if you get to late game with koreans their navy their towers everything on a map which is pretty close quarters pretty squished be really strong i just wondering like what's the opening with Gajaris? You just playing into scouts are you going with an archer range or are you trying to i i don't know that the early mill kind of negates a lot of the possibilities here right you generally won't yeah. have the wood for the dock like you said the barracks is going to be tough because you have to go for the mill and the lumber camp. So getting the timing on that is going to be difficult. And there's the uh, there's the dock there from Steven. So if you're trying for like a drush or something, you're going to be a little slower than a lot of other civs would be. I think scouts is, is a strategy 
The good thing about this map, even though it's wallable, is the fishing ships can always be hit by uh, land units. So I think going scouts mm -hmm. is good for the Gurjaras. I think this would be a scouts into adapt situation for Salim. And then for Steven, we know he's going to have a fishing ship or two. I would expect that he's going to need to find out his opponent's going for scouts, Dude. or maybe expect it. Do Gajara's camels get extra bonus damage against ships? Ooh, because of the whole camels versus ships thing. No, I don't think... Wait, do camels even get bonus damage against ships? I thought it was that ships were classed as camels in the past. They still do. They still do. They still get they, bonus damage against It was, but that was ships? changed, but they still get bonus damage against them, yeah. Which well, is why the Saracen camels were so good. Okay, then. Cool. Okay. Also, I think That's the big nice reason the Saracen bonus. Camels were so good is because of how much HP they had. They survived so many demo hits in that one game. Oh, man. What's the scouting like for Salim? Can we see this? Because he's looking for a dock right now. He doesn't see one. And he did see the original. Okay, so he now knows that that's where the fishing ships are. Now, if just a bit of a zoom out here as we talk about the map briefly. So obviously the players are very close together, but the water element and the land element in the middle is hugely important. If you make ships on one side, you cannot cross over to the other and vice versa. Having the dock in the middle between you and your opponent's base is obviously helpful as that's between you and your opponent's base. But then the other area is more expansive and has a lot more map for later on in the game. So I think it's actually quite likely that we would see both players build multiple docks on the other side of the water in combination with whatever they do on land here. All right, Camel coming over. Could snipe the fishing ships, but you can always hide inside of the deeper waters. And let's take a look. How much damage did it do with that one hit? Let's take a look at the fishing <laughs> ship. It will fight. We, we, I we don't even do know what math. it would normally do. Six. Big. It's also a it's also a camel scout, so it's not a castle age camel that will change. True. That could be a vil kill. Okay, let's see. Quick wall attempts here from King Steven? No. Nothing. Didn't, didn't even try. All right, well scouts are coming out. Very little on food Slim. right now for King Steven. And scouts are gonna be on the way. You can only do this for so long. This whole fishing ship dance. It's really not fun and I guess the fire galley is what King Steven is waiting for. Okay, walls coming up from both now. And two stones in the back, they're really safe from Steven, which is super solid for Koreans. Like, if he gets Ooh. the walls up to the edge of the map, that's a really nice map setup. Two golds, two stones, and the berries back there. Really solid. But here we go. Maybe a villager kill. As Salim comes in, he's blocking with the scout. He's trying to get it with the camel. And... Huh! Got him. Yeah, gets the villager. Well played. Very well executed. King Steven did try a quick gate there to get the walls down. Didn't happen. But there is a spearman on the way now for King Steven, and King Steven has fishing ships. So it's important to remember that. You can lose a villager and still have the three fishing ships and feel okay. Certainly, you feel like you have to kill the opponent's villagers if you don't have the fishing ships if you're Slim. And Slim gets found there. Slim gets found here as well. So definitely quite a few weak scouts out there for Slim. But there is, there are going to be fire galleys coming from Salim's dock there towards the fishing ship. So this is really tricky now if you're King Steven because you're exposed on both sides of the water and on land and you have to prioritize all three. Okay, we'll know if this is, if Steven is doubt. Ooh. If in a minute Ooh. from now, he still has four spearmen running after these scouts Ooh. in the back of his base and they haven't killed them yet. Okay, look at the, look at the distract attempt there with the camel and then also box formation. Micro is not so good here for Salim, but it looks Ooh. like he had box formation for the scouts, which, Ooh. again, it, we, our stats didn't say that Yo doesn't do it, but Yo definitely does it way less than a player that, like ACCM did on our stat graph. Hmm. Yeah, that is a Ooh. box formation scout rush there. MBL doesn't do it. Doubt doesn't really do it. And uh, I did see MBL's stream title last night as he was chilling playing some ranked games. It said... Yes, I have to add a box formation hotkey. Also, it said, please don't talk to me about Hidden Cup. <laughs> so he was like, oh, crap, people can spot me because of that. And then also, don't bait me into saying anything, please. Thank you. Yep. Fires. 
attacking the fish now. That's a great sneaky dock ad there from uh, Salim, and he's going to negate a lot of this fishing eco. And while we're looking at the economies right th there, once the fish go down on both sides, potentially, I think Salim is going to have a little bit better eco, right? He's got those goats passively generating food. Horse collar coming in, farm count looking decent. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think you play this in many ways for the simplicity. Think about what the players have had to do here. King Stevens had to go for a dock on both sides, protect fishing ships on both sides, wall up the entire map, and also, you know, like, get spearmen out. Whereas Salim has made scouts, has not been attacked at all, has not been exposed at all on water, and is now on the offensive here with the fires. And these fires have done an amazing job, weakened the spearmen, and denies the dock for now. And, and Dave, this is all critical time for the player who's behind to just chill out at home, add re add the eco, and look towards Castle Age. Yeah, really, really solid setup here. Salim has a lot of gold in the bank. Should probably go for a market soon, but still wants to get the farm. So spending wood on that right now as he clears up the final fishing ship in the north. Still has the scouts alive, still has the camels alive, although a little bit weak, but it's enough to prevent any of the, the fish from really gathering food or any villagers coming forward for new docks. So really solid control here. This one's going to make its way to the Castle Age. I think Salim has the advantage. Predictions on how many turtle ships we see in this game from King Steven? Two. <laughs> it, it sounded like you were going to say 20 for a second there. <laughs> Yeah, okay. then, no, there's, uh, I was thinking one, but uh, if Steven is who I think he is, then <laughs> he's going to make one. It's going to get converted. He'll make another one, and then he'll delete it before it gets converted. And then he'll decide <laughs> that it's not worth the time. That is so... See, when I ask these questions, these are the type of answers I expect, and that is so well thought out, and I, I actually agree with you. I could even see it going up to three, and then, you know, I guess if there was a mic attached to King Steven, a rant about how monks are OP when the situation mm -hmm. was so clearly well, one no, no, to no. avoid after, making After the first ship. one, after the first one, we have a 15-second delay until Devotion comes in. Devotion kicks, oh, and true. then the second one true. gets deleted anyway. Oh, true. That's a very good point. Well, I mean, turtle yeah. ships are strong, right? And and if you're in Castle Age faster, it is genuinely a very good thing to go for. You are going to need, though, to have an area that is uncontested on water. So the the bigger water area, the top of the cup, so to speak, is compromised. And he's likely going to lose. But the other area between the player bases, that is prime turtle ship territory, dude. Right through the mm -hmm. middle, right up against the farms, it could be really strong. Villagers coming forward. Is that another dock? It is another dock in the center. And this is Hidden Cup, but that's not going to be a hidden dock there. That thing is uh -uh. going to get nope. instantly blocked. And the fires can shift back over there. The spears do have a little bit of bonus damage against ships, so they're doing okay, and the villagers are joining in too. Okay. And he will get that, uh, he will get that completed, but has to worry about the scouts still trying to come in from the other side. Dude. And Salim is now making a hidden dock of his own on the middle island i think we i think i say we you but I, I i agree with you i think we're wrong i think we're gonna see a lot more than just two turtles here i think the plan is all about turtle ships here from king steven okay Let's see if it works out scouts camel villagers i wouldn't even mind seeing a guard tower here from the koreans in the middle there this feels like these villagers are very exposed here we go. In the Castle Age. What's the plan for King Steven? One. Siege Workshop. We have a turtle ship in queue. And there's no potential for monks yet because Salim isn't in the next age. But I think that's what you should do. I think you should drop monasteries if you see your opponent's going to go turtle ships. Oh, man. Finally, a fishing ship goes down. That fishing ship got a lot more value than I was expecting. <laughs> So what do you what do you do if you're slim here with your jaras? You're getting towered. You're getting turtled. What's the thought process here? 
I agree with that. Yep. <clears throat> Definitely agree with that. <clears throat> and uh, the turtle ship pops out. And the turtle ship and the pikeman combination. Pretty fascinating. Maybe the pikeman's needed there because of the potential of the Shravamsha riders. And we'll see that war galley upgrade come in here for Salim here in just a moment. Right now, Salim's trying to expand away from this. But that tower on the front, the siege that's going to be coming, and the turtle ship is going to make things incredibly tough for Salim to defend from this. Feels like if you make a mistake here, you are going to be completely torn to torn apart. Excuse me. Pikeman turtle ship. New meta stuff here from King Steven. That's a lot of fires, though. I think it all goes down. I think the pikes need to run away, and then the turtle ship's going to go down. We'll see if that's the only one he makes. I assume Dave is getting some coffee, or maybe we're having some technical issues. He can hop in whenever. But you guys are pretty used to him being muted at this point. If you've been watching for a few years. It's all good. Uh, Dave also has a history of his internet cutting out for about two minutes. We are used to this at this point, people. So, uh, thank you. A good time to say, oh, looks like he's back. Or maybe we'll be back soon. Okay, I've been told that he is still connected to uh, where, where he needs to be connected to, to uh, you know, converse with me. But we'll see. We'll see. It's all good. Like, I told production before Hidden Cup 5. I said, hey, this is expected. This guy's going to drop and maybe the internet's going to be a problem. So thank you, everybody, for the support. Thank you. All donations are split 50-50 towards the prize pool if you wish to do that. This has been an incredible series so far. Three TCs for King Steven and three for Salim. I know it looks kind of grim for Salim with this forward area being controlled by King Steven. But I do have to say, Steven hasn't really accomplished much with his position thus far. I think he, he will start to if he can get these towers up. But, uh, oh God, we've got a demo coming in. A demo is coming into that shoreline. A demo is coming in. The demo is coming in. And the demo is not coming in. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. We've got a lot of siege from Salim. He wants to stop this tower, and he lands an insane shot. Oh, my God. He actually denies the tower at 70%. And so it's pretty much just one tower there, a couple villagers, and another shot there from Salim. He will take that. And Salim has not allowed this awkward little push from the Koreans to really get started, and we do have another turtle ship being created. That is what, the third tower that has been denied, that has failed? We haven't had, uh, and then we had a Doubt Castle as well. By the way, everyone, I gotta, this is a good time for me to talk to chat here. Okay, so we have a hero emote for every hero, okay? We also have the typical Doubt emote, but my editors thought it'd be funny, because Doubt is their hero, to make a Doubt hero emote, so... It looks as though, like, if Doubt were to be in the game as a unit, if we'd be casting King Doubt instead of King Steven, um, there it is. Yeah, maybe production can show people who are watching later on. The villager gets sniped there. Slim. Beautiful defense. And a nice little boom behind this as well. I'm very impressed with Slim's defense. And obviously, he needs to do this. Because the score right now... Is, I mean, if it's 2-1 and a best of 7, you really gotta tie it up. Beautiful job. Fourth TC now coming from <clears throat> Steven. And... <laughs> and the Eco is still looking fairly strong behind it. They're pretty close with res collected. And this position still hasn't been broken. I really want to see Shravamsha Rider against Turtle Ship. Because I'm pretty sure with the way that stupid Shravamsha works... I I've been very clear. I'm not a fan of the unit. That it would dodge the damage and be very strong. I guess it would take quite a few hits from Mr. Jam should have killed the turtle because the turtle is very chonky, but uh, maybe we'll see that. There's going to be a TC from Salim and King Steven still trying to complete this tower. These towers don't have fletching, by the way. Turtle ship is trying to help out. The micro continues. A very awkward battle and the tower finally completes. How many In theory, though, like, if you have... So oh, we, we've had two turtles. You arrived at the perfect time. Okay. Okay, well, I said two. I did say two. I... I dude, nothing on my end... Anyway, we'll get into that later. We it's have all good. turtles... It... 
watchtowers. I haven't missed anything. I've been watching the whole time. Yeah, so I was just about to say, and there's the doubt, there's the doubt hero emote that it looks like it should be on the scoreboard. We, we might as well replace it with King Steven at this point. But, um, you know, no bodkin, no, no fletching even on these towers really has meant that they can't accomplish all that much. And we have a castle from Salim next to this little stretch of land and next to the siege of his opponent. But I guess he feels he has the navy to defend the castle. And this is a very, uh, shall we say, Salim type of castle, Dave. If you think back to the castle from game number one, right? Mm-hmm. Man, those towers there. So difficult to push back. The castle is a great decision. The town center on the gold. Keeping that control is fantastic. And then we look at the ecos right now. Steven is about to click up. So he's going to start thinking about his own castle somewhere. It's going to be on that <laughs> little pond. Okay. <laughs> I Listen, I, I hate that castle. It cracks me up, but it's like, what does that castle actually control? Maybe mm -hmm. that castle that King Steven is placing controls the stone and controls the area he already has. I would have actually really liked to see a castle where his docks are about to go. He's trying to redock on water, most likely on his shoreline. And I think like a castle here, instead of a tower, it gives you a position, you get all the docks down, and then maybe you could push the gold too. But you know, maybe in his thinking, Dave, that castle that he's just made is to is for treps. His opponent can't stop it, and he could Trebor, win the Trebor, and then take the water with turtle ships or something. Yeah, and he's trying to get back on the water there with the tower to support as well. And there's going to be a bunch of docks on the other side, so Salim is going to have to worry about that castle in the south with Trebs maybe sitting near there. And then he's going to have to worry about the redock attempt. So it's all about where Salim can allocate uh his resources and his attention right i think you have to go after the docks on the left first and he's going for another castle oh, my God. oh and king steven deletes his dock because his villagers were trapped but he meant to delete the tower this is so doubt dude <laughs> this is so doubt he tried to delete uh he tried to i'm pretty sure he tried to delete the tower foundation no more turtle ships yet i mean again to my point Felt like this is going to be a claim to rewin water here for King Steven. That might not happen anymore. Mm -hmm. What is what a crazy thing? How many times have we seen players on Cup build their castles where King Steven has built the castles? That is really unique. I mean, usually they want to build it on land just because it's like a, a reflex, right? You can't yeah. have this buildable water terrain in a lot of maps, so you're not used to making castles on top of that. But Salim is obviously a player that has practiced a lot on this map. He's not afraid of building it there. Neither is King Steven. And that castle will completely deny all of the docks and he can now focus fully on this right side, which is going to become important as the trebuchets are being built up. Man, I mean, if King Steven could get some cav into, or, or sorry, if Salim the Grim can get some cav into King Steven's eco, there's nothing there. All the towers, all the fortifications, yeah. it's all being put into this push. And and I could see this being vulnerable. Now, you got to think that King Steven will expect that. But as King Steven is pushing, he better do well here with this push because he does not have the gold. He does not have those other areas protected right now. Chemistry on the way for Salim. Now, Kajaras against Koreans as we make our way into the late game here, Tristan. Which one, which one are you favoring in terms of like land army composition? I, I gotta go Koreans. I think the towers are really strong. The siege is really good. Yeah. Like how wagon is, is just so tough for so many civs to deal with. This is before you even talk about like, you know, siege onager or anything, or even the unique text, which apply to their siege and apply to their towers. I think her jars are awkward, but I think what you could do, at least with the position right now that Salim has, is you could damage control at your base, which he's doing, and you could try and raid the other areas which are so exposed for King Steven right now. You gotta punish King Steven for all the pressure he's applying here and how little he's defending himself at home. That fire ship was just spinning, wasn't it? <laughs> I heard a <laughs> that thing was moving. <laughs> it's it's incredible to me, man, how Gajaras have evolved because old Gajaras, even up against Pikemen and Halberdier and whatnot, people would have automatically gone into Shrevamsha. 
especially with so much yep. gold in the bank. Uh, but now it feels like a lot of players are kind of avoiding that unit because they don't feel it's that good anymore. And he's making light cav with limited food. And also going into some cannon galleons, some bomber cannons, and then adding the ranges behind. Yeah, I really like the the continuation here on water here from Salim to add the cannon galleons. Again, it, it just speaks to pressuring using your water control. <laughs> the fire ships continue to go to town. The push continues here from King Steven. There's not a ton of resistance. The plan here for Salim was probably to use the bombard cannons. There is a bombard cannon there. A lot of the helps are going down, but it feels like the Trebs are still doing so much damage against that castle. Beautiful play from King Steven. And the light cap are starting to get through, but they're still missing a lot of upgrades. And the food isn't exactly there for Slim right now. He's going to try, Dave, but this push from King Steven, that castle that I so rudely judged, it opened up so many possibilities here. And, uh, well, that I don't know where these builds are going, but they're not making it. That's going to be... That might be spotted. And the position for King Steven is incredibly strong right now. Yeah, I, maybe the benefit of that castle is that Slim would have never expected a castle there, right? It, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was so unorthodox that it was, in fact, orthodox. As the tower is denied <laughs> and the armored cannons are coming to push these trebs back. Oh, he gets him with the trev! No way, dude! So lucky. It, it, it is a moment now for Slim where he feels with hand cannons, he can hold against the halbs, and the bomber cannons can take the trebs. He could, he could delay... Is from getting much worse. Now you have to also add a ton of farming eco because you've lost the majority of your farming eco, but he takes a bombard cannon there. His hand cannons are doing work. And remember, there's still a lot of gold control. So sure, those villagers will die, but it's beginning to feel kind of like that hidden forts game where Salim is happy to take some losses and just expand. Mm -hmm. Only here, he's the only one that has control of the gold area right now. Oh man, Korean unique tech coming in, Tristan. Remind everyone what that's called. <laughs> I think it's, I say Yupseong. <laughs> I may be mispronouncing <laughs> that. <laughs> and I'm sure that your pronunciation on that is perfect, which is why you asked me to do it. No, it's uh, that horrible. That should add dude. extra that's range. Why I asked you to do it. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's as good as I can do, but the technology is amazing for the towers. And that's why he's doing it. But, dude, I, like, he's not progressing. The tower push is not progressing anymore. The farming eco is looking better for Salim. Salim's going to maybe snag mm -hmm. that relic. And Salim's got hand cannons and bombard cannons and castles and, and navy. And I, I could really see Salim getting the job done here, even though he's taken so many losses. Yeah, and with that many bombard cannons, I mean, the tower is going to be doing good damage to them and can range them now. But the cannon galleons can help out against that. He's got castle to produce trebs, which can outrange the towers. And the hand cannons are just stopping all of these halves before the crossbows can be massed up. Really, really solid job here from Salim. There were so many towers placed, but a lot of them have been denied before they've, they've been built or destroyed immediately thereafter. Oh, King Steven's falling apart. You could tell King Steven is trying to put out too many fires at once right now. He is going to take a decent fight in the end there. But at this point, I think the towers you have, your King Steven, they are controlling an area. You need to now control this area. You need to, to somehow change what is happening here in the middle because that gold income is so critical in the long run. And he just really hasn't been able to focus there. Now, on the flip side of that, if you, if you don't continue to push... Then Salim's going to expect it, so he's going to try and do both, Dave. Mm -hmm. But another banger of a game between two players who seem a bit slower compared to maybe the rest of the 16 in this event, but are clearly very strategic. Just now getting Shatrias, too, which is surprising. Wow, that was a snipe by that Bombard Cannon. Bye-bye, Cannon Galleon. Bottom of the marsh. Dude, Salim is doing such a good job. I'm seeing red dots starting to find some different areas. This is what we meant, right? If you want to use your towers and your castles forward, this is where you're exposed. And Salim is realizing that now. <laughs> and the fire ship continues to dance, which will which will bring Salim the Grim fans confidence. Dave also. 
Very excited about it. And the Arbalest now moving in from King Steven. He just got that tech. And we have a castle from Salim to defend this area. Dude, he barely has where he started. Can we talk about that? Slim barely has a starting eco, but he squished yeah. all this eco up into the north somehow. It's kind of insane, dude. And he still he sells all the gold control. Like, how much gold is really available long term for Steven? I guess he's got that. I guess actually, I guess he's got the gold control from Slim's base. Yeah, true. And the stuff in the corner over there. Yep, yeah. he's got that and gold too. Still I mean, oh wow, there's all that gold. Yeah, he just needs to get there. Um, the Trebs continue to take out some town centers. This is now going to be TC number three that Salim has lost. But what is Salim doing on the other side? Oh, he's been ball barcaded pushing against Trebs, and he took both the trebuchets out. Dave, we could have a really crazy situation where Salim's food eco needs to be placed on the water. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, like, that's, what happened. He, that's he's... what happened in that game before. The the last game we saw in Hidden Cup, or not Hidden Cup, sorry, Cup, in Hidden Cup. Yeah. That went really long. The one player auto was in the middle, and he was making farms in the middle. And the other player was selling food, and auto was buying This food. is what I mean. This is what I mean, right? Like, you can't go that way either if you're Salim. So Salim is getting sandwiched right now by King Steven. What in the world? Now, we do have skirms. Gajara skirmishers aren't the best, but they're still solid enough to defend in a situation like that. That will be the problem now for King Steven. But this game is so incredibly close. A reminder that most of the gold in the long run is going to be on the water area where Salim has his castles right now. But you don't want to waste your gold. And Salim is distracted with the raids and three bombard cannons are exposed here against the Halbs and the war wagons. And dude, <laughs> this I don't know where to look right now. This is insane. These these towers are just too much to deal with. It feels like Steven has an unstoppable push on that one side. He's holding him in on the left, and he's able to defend against the bombard cannons at home because the towers have the same range as them. So they snipe mm -hmm. them down. Yep. This feels like a Steven win to me. I mean, that castle can't be held by Salim. Well, the bombard cannon, the bombard cannon might have something to say about that. They're looking in different areas, right? So Bomber Cannon could swoop in. That's an attack round between the Trebs to do damage to both of them at the same time. One of the Trebs goes down. The next one needs repairs. And the repairs aren't going to be there. Oh, and the Treb falls. Nice but I do agree that in many ways, it does feel like this game is easier for Steven to play right now because he's not being raided as much. And now it's going to be his turn to use Bombard Cannons against the Treb. And this is just the Koreans' difference. The towers. You were talking about them earlier. Having that extra range is so huge, right? The automatic keep upgrade is obviously crazy. And as Salim keeps trying to expand his eco, he's always running up against some long-range, super annoying tower blocking him from doing so. Remember, you don't need as many farms with the uh, Gurjaras because that unique tech he researched earlier it means that anything that costs food is cheaper. And we finally have the farms and the fishermen in the middle. It's like, actually happening. This is ridiculous. I like how they're late as a rice farm, too. They're not late. They're yeah. not a normal farm. Yeah. In insane. And, and like, he still has 30 on farms in total. He's now going to shift his trebs over to try and take out the, the castle that started it all for King Stephen. King Steven's not making a ton of progress here because of the defense from Salim. And this is just back and forth action. Like, with the way this game's going, that tre those trebs are probably going to go down. Wasn't expecting him to be vulnerable against a fire galley, though. <laughs> oh, man. Big losses there. You can't lose And the other trep goes down, too. Oh, and the castle survives. The unorthodox orthodox castle. It survives. For another day and the bomber cannon will be able to take out the castle in time he gets the repairs no castle survives for now he's gonna run out of stone though like he needs to the player who supposedly has all this gold doesn't have a lot of gold and he needs to buy the stone to repair this yep. and if he doesn't get if he doesn't realize it will go down his bomber cannon will go down finally king steven will take the position most likely he certainly feels so because he's diving and the castle falls it's that's just... a big moment for king steven here 
It's kind of frustrating to me that it, at no point has he made a Shravamsha. At no point in this game. When you have all these yeah. towers around and everything, I, I know they're not the greatest unit ever, but, uh, I mean, you don't have that many options with Gajaras against Koreans here. Shravamsha raids feels like it would be pretty solid. I think it also might be brain space, too. It's been so messy. It's just like Q-Skirms, mm. Q-Likev, Reboom. You know, you don't really... You can't think about tech switches in a game like this. This is so funny. He's going to TC King Steven side as he's now raiding the wood line from King Steven. We didn't even talk about that. King Steven's got his lumberjacks out here. He might be running out of wood elsewhere. Uh, this game is ridiculous. Another one. Just like that Hidden Force game. Another one. The wood lines in the south very exposed. If raids come in there, the main push is still happening. But Salim pulling most of his villagers away to the center area, and he's gonna start taking res from King Steven's old economy on the left side. This is getting kind of crazy here, Tristan. It's still 102 villagers for him, 120 for Steven. Yeah, and, and I think the key for Steven, you're okay if your opponent is running with Vils. You're okay if you're not losing the ground. You can lose Vils, but you are taking the ground from your opponent, they're not taking the map away from you. So uh, obviously right now, you know, he's he's still continuing to push. He might lose his units here. He's got to be really careful. But um, ultimately, I think he's still in the better position. Now, Dave, he's Bombard Cannon and Trevving down this castle towards the middle now. He's got Lightcap to deal with there. The castle from Salim did fall towards the middle. There's a million and one things happening. And we've got, we've got another Trev against the Fire Galley situation upcoming, it seems like. My goodness. Dang, dude. He's just kicked off the land completely. He's going to have to go in that swampy terrain. He's getting some good raids up against Salim. Or, sorry, up against Steven, but... Eh, great raids in the north. Even better than the ones that Salim is getting. Like Kev finding Korean like Kev. Some of the weakest like Kev in the game. King Steven has a Civ, which is not really known as a raiding civilization. Shoot! But the, shoot! He's made it shoot. happen with the Koreans. He's made it happen. The castle's going to stay up. No, the castle dude, actually really stays up. And with that, we have another situation where Salim the Grim finds himself at 100 pop and is, is like completely surrounded by the enemy. And Salim the Grim is completely dead now. It seems like King Steven's going to take this one. But Salim the Grim, <laughs> whoever he is, is not accepting this, Dave. He continues for a few moments longer anyways to fight just so we cross the hour mark and what was a crazy game it puts king steven up 3-1 what a fun game like what could salim have done a little bit differently here dave to prevent the koreans from getting that that little fortified push going here uh i honestly i think instead of light cab i think shravamsha is a better option there okay yeah um but it's really, really tough once the towers are up because then you have to make trebs, right? And then you need something to protect the trebs. It's not going to be chakrams because you don't have any castles because they keep dying. Yeah. And there was two yep. turtle ships, by the way. So my prediction was correct overall. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's just a really, really difficult position that Steven put him in with that castle forward and then the towers to follow it up. Yeah, it's a fair point. And um, I, I also think Gurjaras have a limited tech tree, and it mm -hmm. felt especially limited on that type of map, right? It's this civilization that can't offer like any knight potential. It also, in the way the games build up, not really the best like fishing eco civilization. Maybe it was just not a map that Slim the Grim had really heavily drafted for. You look at Koreans, for example, for King Steven, that was a higher pick. That could be part of it. Now, Slim the Grim fans like myself. See, I picked Slim to win the whole tournament. Obviously, I don't know who the players are, and we all just kind of picked our horse. But, uh, you know, people like me who are, who are now disappointed for Slim, they, they mustn't worry here because you've got Dravidians and Italians, top picks. We've got Bay as a possible map and Evacuation as a possible map. Those are maps that incorporate water. I think both those civilizations can be strong there. And then Hindustanis or Franks available for slopes. So I can see the comeback potential with the civilizations remaining. And Salim the Grim, it'll be his choice where we go here. 
Um, but I, I, I have a feeling he's going to want to use one of his top two civilizations, which would mean he might want to go directly towards evacuation or bay. We're going to hop into game number five. Thank you again, everybody, for being here. But King Stevens up 3-1. I cannot wait to see people vote for who they think uh, these people are. By the way, I think like King Steven, everyone's got a pretty solid guess. But the more I watch the limb, the more I wonder. Uh, yeah. Game number five, and it's on slopes here, Dave. Hindustanis for Salim, and it is the Georgians for King Stephen. I was thinking that Georgians would be saved for evacuation, but anyways, here we are. I mean, King Stephen loves the mule carts, right? We know some other players that love the mule carts too. Georgians, though, matching up against Hindustanis, like Hindustanis feels so solid on this map. And when you think of Georgians, you're basically thinking Manaspa. Well, we kind of have a solution to the Manaspa on the Hindustani side with the camels. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Georgians start with their mule cart, whereas their Armenians just have the cheaper ones. The mule cart, you can bring in resources from hunt, uh, uh, wood, and then gold and stone. Uh, and obviously it moves. So you can't push deer or anything with it. You can't even bring in sheep with it, but it can act as a scout. And so King Stephen is actually scouting with the mule cart and is going forward with the scout to maybe try and steal something from his opponent's base right now. His scout's already in Salim's eco, and he's going to find some sheep. So that's an interesting strategy here. Uh, I don't know how much the mule cart really affects it, but he's certainly going to find some reward as he finds another sheep, sheep there. Yeah, Dang, I think dude. Salim will actually... I, I might find another to be one careful too. not to give up more actually yeah yeah Salim is just gonna okay. he knows he lost that sheep he probably knows that uh, one or two other sheep were taken so he's just gonna push in the deer and try and keep the food yeah. eco sorted feels very minimal but this is where you're like okay my villagers are a little bit cheaper it's fine but if you yeah. can't push in the deer if King Steven tries to annoy your deer push that's a, that's actually really frustrating. And, and King Stephen might now think, I haven't pushed deer myself, but what I can do, is he using the mule cart right now for hunt? Hold on a second. King Stephen is, yeah, he's, he's over on this side, yeah. I, I just oh. wonder, like, do you... So, Tristan, do you go and take the hunt early to get up, and then you shift those vills over to wood with the mule cart and not even make a second mule cart at home and just take the stragglers until then? That's my I think question. you have. It's a good question. I think there's a point where you absolutely have to get a, a lumber camp at home because you're just making so many vills. You're going to need somewhere mm -hmm. to send them. You don't want to send them across the map. But this is a prepped strategy. This has not happened yet in Hidden Cup 5 to use the mule cart like this. It suddenly makes me more excited about the Georgians pick because you're taking advantage of other bonuses instead of just waiting for the Manaspa. And, uh, I mean, now you've got the extra sheep. Your opponent's deer was delayed with the push. This is a very good start for King Steven. Yeah, really, really solid stuff. So we'll keep an eye on this mule cart. Like T90 said, it's it's nice to have one at home, right? You don't want to keep sending villagers out there. But look, he's just going to the stragglers. So I'm thinking that he won't even make one until he's, like, almost in feudal age. Yeah. I agree. Now he will. This is where it gets tricky with all these strats where you you skip collecting wood. Uh, and it is you need a barracks and a stable most likely. And mm -hmm. then you need the wood for the mule cart, whatever wood you spend on that. You also spend food. So getting that balance down is, is not the easiest thing. Salim has the scout underneath the TC. Like it's been underneath the TC for a bit. What? what, what? You see that? Just patrolling the yeah, scout underneath on? his TC? I don't I don't understand. Salim, you're grim, dude. What do you do? Why are you so scared? What? Huh? This is weird to me, dude. I don't know what he's expecting. I'm trying to think. Like maybe he wants to get his walls down. Maybe maybe he thinks he's just gonna he knows he's gonna be slower to feudal, so he doesn't want to take any chances. He doesn't with want it. to move out? That yeah. is extremely low confidence. That's for like me. an that, arena, does not move out kind of play. Yeah, yeah. And especially on this map because you want, you should be focusing on scouting how your opponent is using the side resources. That's one of the biggest things about this map. 
And there it is. There's the other mule cart, Dave. And now everything's transitioning to wood. Interesting. Now, I wonder what happens with those villagers that are on the side. Do they just come home? Wow, Salim going full walls here. Because they, you can't use, you can't collect fish to the mule cart. It's just the hunt. So is I think he trying to like for the okay. to come home. The only thing I can think of with that scout, and this is a real, this is like a recipe. Like we're cooking here, right? So <laughs> so, so he's going up. Continue. He's going up twenty population, right? But he's full uh -huh. walled, and his score is very low because he hasn't been scouting. His opponent yep. might think that he hasn't clicked up yet and will be thinking, okay, he's just going for a fast castle or something along those lines because the mm. score is very low. But now Feudal Age comes in and... This is where your scout should be out of your base. His very confused. Yeah. Yeah. This is where, like, you're at the very least... This Vil's going to stone right now? That'd be interesting. Probably just, just would, but at the very the least... Scout. Being yeah, here. you should go look around, dude. You should go look around. I agree. But he's hiding the stable, Tristan. Like, he's hiding it behind the walls where it can't be found. Huh. Yeah, so he's hid the stable. Like and a... also, King Steven doesn't see the barracks. So King Steven right now I might think his opponent is going fast castle into Camels, Dave, which is why King Steven is going to stone and walling and not making scouts. Yeah. He is making spears, though, which makes me think... I don't know. Uh, I, I, it's an interesting I, I, one. It definitely some mind games here. Definitely some some big brain plays involved in what we're seeing at the moment. It's definitely a recipe. Is it a recipe for disaster or success? We don't know. But he sees the yeah. second scout. I don't know if he noticed that. Don't know if he noticed that. The scout stopped moving there. Didn't see them come out. He probably made a spearman just because of the starting scout from Salim. And he's probably assuming right now that Salim is going faster feudal wall and then that feudal boom strategy, right? Where you get horse collar, double bit axe, and then you click up to Castle Age fairly soon. This and then you show up, Salim. you show up, you don't see the mill, you see that there's a mule cart there within mining stone. Actually, here's a question. I should know this, but it's still relatively new. When you scout a mule cart and you go back to Fog of War, does it show it like it would show a lumber camp or a mining camp? It should, right? I like think Slim's it shows it in the same position, but I don't think it shows it. it. I'm not sure on Capture Age, hmm. but I don't know if it shows it moving. I don't it's know. It's kind of an it. interesting thing, know. right? Because again, it, if that's a mining camp, you know it's there. But because the mule cart is a unit, I don't think it actually shows it. Yeah. Which could mean if Salim didn't notice, he might not even be able to look back there later and realize that stone's being taken there. Huh. Hmm. That's that's interesting. That's the first time it really dawned on me. I think it's also rare that that plays a role, but we'll see. I mean, at this point, you got to be expecting your opponent could go for the Manaspa if you are in Salim the Grim's position. These scouts have done nothing so far, but he's still making them. So far. He's going to have six. Hmm, interesting. Okay, mm. so I'm, I'm trying to think about this. You go full wall, lacking some confidence with scouting. You go full walls. Now you go for a lot of army. Now it's Hindustani scouts. There's and it's box formation scouts, which again just keeps making me think. Is I don't think this is Yo anymore. Yo doesn't, but maybe Yo does do it. We got the walls coming up. Now Hindustani scouts do more damage against buildings. What about mule carts? Oh God! <laughs> oh God! The, oh, this is such now, a dope moment. <laughs> now what have you done? <laughs> he moved it. <laughs> Oh no! Doubt confirmed. No. Oh, okay. And the this other is, ones. I mean, this is some serious. And those scouts are doing more against that mule cart because they're Hindustani scouts. Uh, this is like completely unexpected from Steven's point of view, right? He didn't think yeah. that there would be this level of scout production. He knew about the scouts he when he saw walls. three. But his opponent fully walled and went up a little bit later, right? So he didn't expect it at all. And suddenly, uh, there's nothing to be done about this. That mule cart will die eventually if Salim decides to commit onto it. But it looks like he's leaving now and going for the market at home. It could have been worse for King Stephen because one of those villagers just walked all the way home. Like, that, those villagers could have easily gone down. Um, does also kill quite a few scouts here. So it could have been four villagers down. It also could be, you know, no villagers on stone right Yikes. now. But um, 
Um, Yikes. Um, okay, well, it's going to be three vills down. Okay, quick wall. Viper, Viper, quick wall. King Steven is Viper confirmed? King Steven, King Steven is currently Viper? staying humble. He's currently King staying Steve? humble. Okay. Yeah. So a player who does not attempt to quick wall all that frequently. And I'll let people decide who that may be. There are quite a few of them out there. Don't tell me these get through as well. Don't tell me these get through as well. Hindustani scouts. Woo, that was very close. But they're going to be attacking on the other side. And like, if you're looking at this from a spectator point of view, you're thinking, okay, it's very easy to keep these scouts out, right? You just pay attention. Yep. You wall up yep. behind. That's not how it works in the game. Players at this level will keep themselves safe a lot of the time, but occasionally you will see the scouts break through because there's just too many things you need to focus on at once, right? Yeah, and this is like, this has been mind games from both in some ways, but obviously it's worked out for Slim the Grim. Slim the Grim oh. basically said, I'm going to wall and then surprise you with what I've got, and I'm not going to oh. run through that hole in your wall because I don't see it. Instead, he's thinking, I will just simply take out your house and be as annoying as possible here. A couple archers are going to be coming out from Salim behind this. The house will probably stay alive because the scouts see the spearmen now. And a couple archers are obviously going to be out there for the spears. So, Is it cav archers here for Hindustanis? I would have said yes, but now I see two archers, so I'm not sure. It is a bit okay. of an interesting time. To add the archers because he only has one it would have felt pretty natural to go ca but maybe he could still go cav archers uh and maybe the light cav upgrade could make sense king steven's worried right now like king steven's game plan initially was really strong but i he wasn't expecting the aggression he's lost three villagers now his opponent's much faster to the castle age but he is going to go for the manaspa yeah and he'll be continuing to add archers the reason you would go for cav archers on a map like this is obviously the mobility, which is kind of negated mm -hmm. by the walls from Steven, but also the fact that you don't have to pay for that crossbow upgrade and you already have yep. bloodlines for your scouts. So there's a lot of upgrades that you already have and you're getting husbandry too that uh, transition naturally into cav archers. I, I really like what Steven did here though. Like I understand it went wrong. And maybe this, some people will say this is the classic example of trying to be too creative and then hurting yourself with the three villager losses. But how he played this game has been really intelligent. There is still a hole there, right? Or is there a tree? I'm there might not be seeing... a tree. There might be a bush. We don't know. I doesn't look like anything. <laughs> I don't think there's anything there. But Slim the Grim just assumes his opponent would be walled and so isn't going to look. And King Steven also assumes his opponent would start running through if there was a hole. So Castle's going to go up. So will a fortified church. And so will a town center there for King Steven. And both players are going to expand their economies. But this is going to be a Manaspa versus Camel War here, Dave. And the Hindustani Camels should be one of the best Camels to be able to deal with this unit. Mm -hmm. However, we've seen the unit can be busted. Right? It's got a very similar feel to the latest. It's like once you get into it, it's really, really tough to stop even with the counter units to it. Yes, However, yes. in low numbers, they're really all, not all that powerful. So until there's maybe 20 of them on the field, I don't think Slim has to seriously be worried. Just keep massing up your camels calmly and make sure you're producing villagers at all times. So yeah, the Manaspa produces very quickly. Low HP, but high attack, and as you said, higher attack once you get more of them. I want to flip... I want to turn around this whole guessing game for just a second. Okay. We, we think King Steven might be Doubt, right? We've had the Doubt Castles. Yep. We've had, you know, the, the the big brain strats. And we've mentioned Yo for Slim the Grim, but Yo loves to go for Latus. Yo loves to go for Manaspa. Yo loves his, his unique units, War Wagons. Turtle ships. And is a thought, as we see a monk actually get the conversion there and run away, is a thought that maybe, at least civilized strategy-wise, I could see someone like Mr. Yo also doing what King Steven's doing. But 
I think I would have expected a bit more house walling in, in some instances from Yo, maybe better defensive plays at times. And these have been some big brain strategies from King Steven. So this is normally something we'd associate with someone like Doubt, which is why people have said his name. Mm -hmm. Nice defense so far. House walls needed. House walls will happen. And Relic's coming in for King Steven. So yeah, King Steven's actually not rushing out with his Manasp at all. He's being very smart. He's like, I know this unit can be busted if I get enough of them. And he's taking his time. Yeah, and he also has the, the churches boosting his eco, right? So mm -hmm. as long as the villager number is somewhat similar in Steven's mind, he should have uh, equal opportunity to boom up. And the Manaspa, like we said, are just better in numbers. So why not mass them at this point? Still, wheelbarrow difference and still a villager advantage for Salim. So when we take a look at the res collected, he's ahead by 2k almost, which is... Yeah. Uh, not insignificant. I think what is going to have to be the key here for Salim is making a few more light cav. He has just queued them because he sees the monks now. And if you think the camels are enough, you're okay. But when you see the monks, then suddenly you're like, oh boy, if he converts my units over really to my side, it could be problematic. Salim. And a very, very, very good fight for Salim and a late reaction from King Steven. And the monks go down, the Manaspa go down. And wow, that, that is just not what you wanted there for your King Steven. He, he can't build up the Manaspa number much better than he was now. He's down to four. Monk's also expensive. And he's like, he's scared to expand here, Dave. Four TCs in the middle of the map. Yeah, and the longer this goes, the worse it's going to get for him. Because the camel number is constantly growing. The eco lead is now growing as well for Salim. And... The Manaspa, you still only have one castle, right? With limited stone supply. If you get to Imperial Age on equal footing with your with your opponent, he's going to have Imp Camels against Manaspa. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how broken the unit is, they're still going to lose that fight. I think in some ways we might have seen the game plan just shift for King Steven. King Steven's like, well, I can't go even harder into Manaspa now. And maybe even the monks. Yeah. Instead, maybe I'll just boom and I can go for something like Halb. I think opening Halb oh. against the Camels would be realistic. Forward Castle, maybe, does... with the Halbs to support. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This is funny. Light Cav are like, hello, guys. Uh, I thought I was allowed in here. And they're like, no. No red units allowed. And the Light Cav get chased away. But the Camels now get through. That was a hole that King Steven left from before. That will be plugged up. But Dave, I... King, King Steven... We talked a lot about him, but let's talk about Slim the Grim. He chose to go for the fourth TC. I love that decision. I think that's really smart with how cheap the villagers are with the Hindustanis. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very clear to Slim exactly what Steven is doing here. He's just kind of yeah. hiding behind his walls, has a bunch of fortified churches back there, has a bunch of farms, 40 farms, really, really solid. And nice Canadian land party. Big, huge. Love to see it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see all anyway. our Canadian viewers there in one screen. <laughs> yeah, kidding. exactly. <laughs> Imperial Age on the way for Slim. And this is perfectly fine for him. There's a uh, castle in front of that gold there for Steve. And he's just going to mass up the Manaspa. But camels are crazy. Especially him to yeah. see camels. Really strong. It does feel like King Stephen's castles are uh, kind of for a trebor more than anything with how he's positioning them. Anytime Steven tries to move out, he's getting found by Salim, who seems very comfortable, very active, positioning units on the sides. And like you said, he is extremely well aware what his opponent is and is not doing right now because of this position. And it feels like if he, at least if he thinks ahead and realizes what can counter my camels, and then realizes that answer is hand cannons, uh, the chemistry upgrade could come in. Archer ranges could be dropped for hand cannons. And yeah, there they are. There's man. the I mean, archer this, ranges. Yeah. This feels like, I, I know it's 3 1 right now for King Steven, but Salim is good enough to get a couple wins in a row as well and take us to the game seven. This, this is like as good a position as Salim has had all series to take advantage of. I just love that Salim has the recognition to realize exactly what his opponent is doing and then has the comfort levels when it's 3-1 to not feel the need to push. 
and yes. disrupt it, right? He's like, he's like, yeah. my late game is going to be better than your late game. Now, Georgians are impressive with the Manaspa, but they don't really have that many other options, especially if you preemptively negate the Halb with the hand cannons, like you were talking about. And there's a lot of archery ranges being made, so he's not going to have any production issues once chemistry comes in. Something I have to say about the Manaspa, they're lower HP, right? And and the lower the HP is on a unit that benefits from bloodlines, the more importance it is to get bloodlines. And there's no bloodlines right now for King Steven. So he's lacking a lot of HP percentage-wise. Now he's going to get it, but that explains some of the fights from earlier. But, and you know, you know, if you're a king, it's important to look after your bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And yep. if you're Salim the Grim, it's important to execute your enemies as quickly and as painfully as possible. It's a it's uh, a bad habit, what, bro. It's a bad habit. Yes, it's it's not it's not war crimes. It's bad habit. And so we'll see if Salim the Grim will will uh, execute on that bad habit here in just a moment here with King Stephen. And castles are going How up. Many? I mean, we also should mention Georgian castles stay up for a long time if they have a little bit of a hill advantage, but. Oh, that's if it goes up! That's if it goes up! Oh, no! King Steven, not again! We have, I'm trying not to say the name! Okay, it's gonna go up. It's gonna go up. The, the camels are, are fighting the Manaspa instead. These are heavy camels. The castle's definitely gonna go... It's maybe gonna go up. It's probably going up. The castle goes up, just as we all expected. And my god, the Manaspa actually are doing amazing. That's before I the mean, lead-up, well, right? that... That was a Oof. terrible fight for Salim. Like, Salim should have picked something to focus on there, right? He got he yeah. sent yeah. half the units after the monks, half after the Manaspa, and then he split them again between the villagers and the Manaspa. It's like he looked away during that fight. Three conversions came in, and then you lose all of your army because you're only fighting with half of it at the time. But I assume he was focused more on his economy, which is now up to 144 villagers. And the hand cannon production at home also unique tech could fly in for that to get the crazy range on the hand cannons he just has to yeah. make sure that the hand cannons are never in a position where they're not protected by camels and then the camels obviously need to be protected by the hand cannons if halberdier comes in for king steven which is coming in Second now armor upgrade please salim for your camels please that probably didn't help in that fight yeah true also, didn't help that the Manaspa count is pretty high now. Again, you're getting more attack the, the bigger the army gets. And that's not a difficult, like, thing to do. You, you're going to be making more military units anyways. 14 plus 6 attack on those Manaspa. These things are insane. I, I actually Should think that me. King Steven can win this. If he gets mm -hmm. to, like, 40 Manaspa, 20 help. I think he could wreck the fight. I like the fact that Salim has walled in the north there and it has a castle up on the hill. So if Steven mm -hmm. tries to come in there and raid again with the Manaspa like he did with the latest, at least he's going to take some initial damage and here they come. He's going to try and mix it up a little bit. He knows he probably can't take that main fight as Imp Camel is now only a minute and 20 seconds away. Steven is going to try and come in and kill the villagers and we're going to need to see some damage control here from Salim. Yeah, it's, it, do you want to deal with this if you're Slim when you're trebbing down your opponent's castle? That's what King Steven wants. That stable, by the way, is the Imp Camel stable. So if that were to go down, that would mean Imp Camel's denied. You can't get over there easily with your camels because the Halbs have positioned over there. And all King Steven wants to do is use this as a distraction. So he's able to protect his castle, but the hand cannons are on the way. Imp Camel now 30 seconds away. There's hand cannons! They need to sit wedge between the houses! Oh, that's perfect. Oh, Just that's don't move. such a good spot to sit. And now the camel the camel reinforcements are coming in to deal with those. And there's another army of camels after clearing the halves. We still have 15 hand cannons in there. We got Imp Camel now in. And bye-bye, Manaspas. See you later. Bye-bye, hand cannons as well. Bye-bye, Trebs as well. I don't think this fight was as bad for King Steven as it could have been. And the game will continue here. It's still two relics for King Steven versus the three. He still has the stone. He still has the gold on the side. Got 14 plus eight attack now on this unit that 
you know, many people huh? asked me, like, are we are we going to allow this? Are we going to allow Georgians in Hidden Cup? Many months ago, I was like, well, yeah, you know, I think Georgians are lacking other bonuses. Yada, yada, yada. It's a very interesting it, and... stable behind for... Um... For King Steven. For, for King Steven, yeah, just to Solis. try and get some raids yeah, in there. But it, yeah. It's gotten cleared up, so great awareness there. It, Dude, it is so fascinating to me that Steven has not stretched out to the sides yet. Like, he is yeah. playing deep into Imperial Age and running out of wood, even, and he's just now going out to the side. It's also wild how King Steven's the one with Trebs. And Slim the Grim, after losing his traps, he's going for... He's got one. But, like, I could easily see this being another situation where his traps get sniped. Even by the enemy traps, and he doesn't push King Steven, which gives King Steven the opportunity to actually expand to the sides, if he wants to. Mm -hmm. Big engagement. Manaspa go in. This is Imp Camel. Nine range hand cannons. And, and Halbs and Manaspa here. And I think the Halbs and Manaspa are winning. I honestly think it's just so oh strong. I, who cares that it's a counter unit when Manas would just kill no, everything? No, they should be cleared up now. They should be cleared up now. Okay, you just got to get right, rid of the house. Right. False alarm. You got to get rid of the house. Hand cannons didn't die behind there. The Manaspa are getting weaker as they lose more numbers too. So they join that battle at full strength. And then halfway through when it looks like they're going to, you know, wash everything away, they're losing attack value. So they're getting weaker and weaker that... and weaker. You got to keep that in mind. I, yeah, that's a really interesting point there that initially it's insane but then once some of the units mm -hmm. die the attacks going down yeah, that's a really good point yeah, that will change based on how many units are in the group still no trebuchets to push these castles though i, I think honestly if you're king steven if your opponent as he's trebbing the units right now if you have castles you don't have to be taking this fight right now so Lindagrim yep. is pushing you without siege so Lim the Grim's going to clear everything. He's going to take the Trebs, and then maybe he'll bring in the Siege. But I'd like to see King Steven maybe try and raid the sides a little bit. Because unless your opponent is really forcing your hand, you don't need to take those engagements. Yeah, I think Salim needs to tech into, like, Hussar as well. Like have at least, you know, just to, to push the sides a little bit. 64 on food. The Camels are great. But how much gold long-term does Salim have? You got to get those texts yeah. in before it's all gone. I don't I don't think he's got that much remaining to him, honestly. He does have um, like the Hindustani unique text, so he's getting more from the relics and from his gold, but still. Yeah, I guess that brings all the more importance to this area, pushing the middle. You'd see mm -hmm. there's only 6,000 more gold left on the map. That's not a lot of gold compared to what we would have started with. Um, but it seems like this gold will be freed up for him soon because he is finally here with Siege. And this means that King Steven has to build up a big mass of Manaspa again. It's Manaspa or Bust for him. And if it didn't work before, Dave, I don't know if he's going to be able to go straight Manaspa again and get the job done, especially since the Camels were fighting without upgrades before. Yeah, this 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 ain't it. <laughs> Just not it, right? Another castle will fall, and then suddenly four tiles of gold available for his opponent. And we have to think about the gold available for Steven now. As he's not going to be able to take that stuff in the center. What a series, man. Like, am I crazy to say... Am I jumping to conclusions to say that if Salim wins this game, I could easily see him winning the next one? Oh, and I can see him game seven? Yeah, yeah. 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 The level seems close. Like, the, the fact that it's 3-1 doesn't mean too much to me. I just look at every single game, and every single game between these two has been really, really close. And Slim has had leads at points that, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to finish off. What a series, folks. What a series. Again, we do not know who these players are. They don't know who their opponents are. They could maybe have some guesses based on the style. But it just adds so much to it. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your interest. But Slim as his camel's exactly where he wants him here, and he's taken out another castle from King Steven in the middle. King Steven now trying to expand to the sides. God, there's Manaspa. Wrecking Imp Camel, which should be one of the strongest counter units to have in the game. But again, I think the gold's going to be there for Salim to make more camels. He did, he did take out some of the Manaspa. But I guess Steven just doesn't want to resign. If he could still make Manaspa, I don't blame the guy. I mean, you've got you've got the pikemen now, and you've got the castle kind of forcing the Manaspa to engage. You can't let that go up. 
So you have the pikemen with the hand cannons behind, and then all your reinforcements are going to be imp camels coming in. So it should be a decent fight, especially with the way that Manaspa scaled downwards with the more they lose. I don't think this is that I mean, bad for Slim. I think this is actually quite good for Slim because we look at the gold income from Steven. He can't afford to replace any of this. That's fair. Yeah. Pike was a really nice addition here. A lot of players won't go for Pikemen if they are uh, if they don't get how, right? I feel like the bonus damage isn't enough and in, but it's a meat shield for those hand cannons. The Manaspa are going down. There is not a lot of resources remaining for King Steven. And Salim the Grim will complete this castle. He will continue this push, and we will move on to game number six. I'm sure of it. Potentially game number seven. Actually, zero on gold right now for Salim, I'm noticing. I didn't realize it was that yeah, he's bad. Got four, he's got four new tiles, though. With the Hindustani unique tech as well, so he should be able to get that in. He had 30 uh, Imperial Camels in the queue when he took that fight. Dang, so crazy. a lot of investment there. Look at how he built up his base this game. The castles to the sides, the TCs on every single area. Three TCs in the middle, TC on the left, TC on the right. Like, the way he built up his base is, is so orderly. And it made mm -hmm. so much sense for the situation, and, that, and so does this. He hasn't really been raiding the sides much, but he's going to find 20 villager kills there. And I think he's going to eventually force King Steven to accept that it's game Once over that here. Once castle's gone in the center, it's over, right? Like, it, it's probably yeah. already over right now. You're losing a ton of bills. But now, if your whole plan is Manaspa Hal, you're just losing one of two castles. I know they produce fast, but they don't produce that fast that you can mass up from one castle alone. He yeah. does have a thousand stone in the bank, however. <laughs> so maybe he can make another <laughs> one. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there's no pressure. You don't really need to feel like you you need the four, five, six bomber cannons or treps if you're slim. Like, your opponent's not raiding you. You're, you, you know where he is and where he isn't. So you can sit there with one bomber cannon. If he wants to take his time, he can take his time to die. But he goes in with the imp camels. He says, screw siege. In the sandies, dude. I'm going to use my camels to do this. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's one way to force that the right, right away. There. It's only three bills repairing it. The trip is out. And the bomber cannon almost takes down the castle. It's still alive. It's still alive. GG. What a crazy performance there from Salim the Grim. It looked really awkward. The scout underneath the TC in Feudal he looked scared being 3-1 down. But then out of nowhere, he showed up with scouts. He surprised King Steven. And he played a smooth transitional game in towards Castle Agent Imp. Felt like the type of game that, that Slim the Grim is incredibly comfortable with. It's the reason he picked it as a home map. And collected 10k more resources, more of every single resource. But the the negative to the thing to think about here oh this is the highlight i mean this is just so doubt right like to move the mule yeah. cart in that moment <laughs> to not to not really be able to get any quick wall saves this was the moment that really surprised uh king steven but um you know did to get ahead of the game here uh, for king steven he's still got two home maps so this isn't too tough of a loss to stomach in my opinion Yeah, I mean, you want to finish it off 4-1. It's it's really, really tough when you get everything that you wanted in terms of unit composition and you still lose, right? Like yeah, he had 40 Manasper. And yeah, he had the castles true. in the center. It, it's just a, it's a tough recovery from a loss like that. But what he has to think about is, you know, I got at least one more game to give away and I got two more chances to win the set and move on. So... Uh, for King Steven, he still has the advantage here. Salim now has to play on two of Steven's home maps uh, moving forward. And we'll see what Salim can bring. I'm still super surprised about that strategy, like the 19 or 20 pop-up time into full wall and then hidden scouts yeah. behind without it, scouting it, the rest of the map. That seems so prepared against Jordan, Georgians for some reason. Yeah. It's just weird. Also, um, yeah, and I'm just trying to think, like, which players has those tendencies. It is very unique. To, to play yeah. as good as he did after that almost doesn't match the, the walling and the scout uh, movement underneath the TC. 
but maybe we shouldn't get too hung up on that. What we should probably talk about is that Salim the Grim has two top picks. Two of the picks he prioritized the most remaining right now, Dravidians and Italians. And King Stephen has used all of his top picks already and will have the Slavs, the Britons, and the Goths to choose from. Wouldn't surprise me if we were to see something like evacuation in Goths, seeing as we had Goths on evacuation yesterday and they look decent. What do you go on Bay? But, oh, man. Um, oh, I don't like that I agree. on Bay. I, <laughs> I feel like Bay is the most awkward one, which is what King Stephen will try and avoid here by probably going for evacuation. But I guess like... Britons or Slavs on Bay? The Slavs with the Boyars and the Siege and the farms. Britons with the with like the Arbalest to maybe counter the what Italians if, or okay. something. What if you're completely screwing with your opponent's head and you want them to pick Italians on Bay and then you go Goths on Bay? Honestly, I honestly I could see it. The, my worry is Bay is a bit simpler. And because Bay is a simpler map, I think it's harder for the Goths to come back. Whereas on Evacuation, there's so many complexities. The Goths could kind of be okay with not having an eco bonus, not being great on water or whatever, because of how yeah. crazy the map but is. You, so. Okay, so anyway, let, let, we should probably get into the next game. But my idea was you, you send a villager forward early to lame the Dockville from the Italians, and you're laming all that other stuff in addition to your scout being forward. Oh, and then yeah. you're like you're just making it really ugly for them and then late game your civ matchup actually doesn't look too terrible against italians if he pulls it back i agree i could see it well here we but are but he's picked goss and... here so it's completely negated because steven <laughs> has gone for the goss on game six here on evacuation wow game six and we've been saying it it feels like this could easily go to seven games because of how close the level was we had the Longest game probably in Hidden Cup 5, but it's too early to tell on this map just yesterday. Uh, we had 700 wood remaining on the map, which is pretty crazy. Now, in that very game, we had Goths, and the Goth player at the start went forward with a villager and tried to lame and make it messy. And I believe we are seeing a repeat of this right now as the scouts are both scouting with their patterns. Yeah. I see one very unique pattern, and there she is. Loom should be in queue for King Steven. It's not in for her yet, but it is instant when it researches. And yeah, um, the, the idea on a map like Evacuation, which is already so difficult to play, is just take as many resources as you can and get an early lead here. And the idea playing against Goss is get the resources into your TC, specifically the food, because the villager yep. will be nearby. And yep. the, the boar has been found by Steven here. Salim knows that the scout is over there and will bring in the rhino so that's fantastic we'll have two rhinos underneath the town center a little bit of food rot because they came in so early but it's better than not having it at all yeah that's huge yeah i mean in the game we saw yesterday the player was able to steal some sheep but then also able to kill that rhino with the scout actually and salim knows that there must be goats on the move and uh, is like, okay, one was going that way. What about the other? And then finds a cow nice. and then finds the other goat. So this is, this is a so feast much for Slim. And meanwhile, she's stuck in the desert. <laughs> is anyone there? Is there anything here? Like, she can't find anything. <laughs> the villager's completely she was, lost. She was given a map with an idea of what to look for and where to find it. And she's like, I'm pretty sure I followed the yeah. directions. But yeah, there's nothing happening here. Is there a forward dock? from steven like eventually okay or do either this is, of these players go for a dock here this is the most dave comment for me of the day but if you already have the vill there could you just like wall up the shorefish is that too crazy oh, just little little it, like yeah, random that, palisades bro, on the shorefish that's such a okay i like the cookery all right but uh -huh. clearly you've been reading the wrong yeah. recipes online because that <laughs> just takes so much effort so much effort for he can just drop a dock and make fishing ships anyway and not take fish with the with the villager okay i just wanted you to know what it felt like to be me for a moment that's all so now you get it now you had to be the logical one we just switched roles for a moment and now we'll switch back and there goes the dock for salim 
And we might see a more defensive dock here from King Stephen as well. But the Dravidians, their docks give them population space. Their fishing ships have great carry capacity. When you get to the next stage, you get this big boost of wood. Dravidians also have fantastic infantry themselves. I do feel like Dravidians is a great civilization for Selim the Grim here against the Goths. You done? I'm... I'm I'm done. I was just wondering. I really felt like you were gonna come back with something there. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Sorry. I was I, worried. I could tell you were. I could tell you were steaming. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> That's what I do. I wasn't. Uh, the well, last comment I did. I wasn't trying to be. I was just bringing up what's possible. That's all. I'm supremely logical, to... Tristan, with all of my observations. <laughs> Everyone, and yes, everyone honestly, who's logical says the words. I'm supremely I'm logical. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I'm not over here counting lumber camps, okay, <laughs> and freaking freaking out over, uh, you know, how many villagers pe people have on wood early or whatever it is that you do that helps people sleep <laughs> at night. Whatever it is you do. Well, listen, this villager has, has been active. She hasn't found as many uh, boars or rhinos or sheep as she would have wanted. But she's supplying some vision here. And she'll now see that Selim the Grim is wandering out here to take the resources on the outside. That is most likely mm -hmm. going to be a lumber camp. Uh, but there is also food out there as well, which King Stephen will keep a close eye on. That's such an interesting outpost because it like tracks all of your movements from this main base. Yeah. I don't know if it was intentional, but it might come into play later, especially once Town Watch is in. And there's the barracks. Whoa, Fuel dude. coming. Will that be this discovered? If that's discovered, that's that's problematic for Steven if that's found. <gasps> um, no I way, think... dude! I, I, Salim just passes it. I think Salim would have assumed that the villager built the outpost and walked this way, which is why Salim is coming to, to protect his villagers. He sees the scouts moving around there. I mean, you kind of have your choice if you're King Steven on what direction you want to attack. But yeah, the last thing Salim is expecting is a barracks behind the walls he's just built. Mm -hmm. What in the world, man? Also, the villager's trying to go home. And well, she's no, she's building a home. Excuse me. This is her new home on the lumber camp of Salim. And uh, oh, oh, quick wall. Ooh. Oh, that just. Oh, God, gets those villagers don't know what's coming, around. dude. Those villagers don't know what's coming. They're like, I, I got this. Surprise. And there's the militia. That could be a dead vill for Salim, but he does react right away. Great reaction that time from is, him, but what a messy game. That house is making things very, very difficult on that wood line. Very, very messy for Salim here. And that was a great job by Steven to make that and just kind of lame the wood line a little bit and now Salim has to make sure that they make a palisade wall behind there otherwise the militia can go right through but apparently they chop right through at the exact moment they needed to <laughs> and the bills will now wall themselves in on the other side of the lumber camp so here we go <laughs> i like how you know the the whole idea of this attack from king stephen is oh the wood lines are awful on this map it gives me an opportunity mm -hmm. to kill vills but then because the wood lines are awful it actually saves the vills nice save there from king steven both players are going to prioritize water but Militia man i mean over. that villager's yeah. still walking around she's not finished yet dude she's going to do something no and there's not really any support uh near that wood line and if he goes for men at arms and then i was gonna say a tower but a range probably makes more sense long term you don't want to invest into just a one villager tower that can be countered this could be very problematic for salim mm -hmm. this is amazing this pressure oh god the starting scout is is still pr has pretty good huh? hp nice okay there is an archer on the way. It's very important that Salim knows about this. The archer could actually kill this villager pretty soon here. Men at arms will probably get pulled. There's also the water aspects happening at the same time. So we need to look at so many different things. I cannot imagine what it's like to actually play this right now for either player. But the villager gets pulled away. The men at arms will protect. And for now, we're waiting maybe for a demo on that side. But I think Salim has the edge when it comes to water. He's got two docks producing fires. He already has more fires. And he hasn't taken any 
real losses yet. He, in fact, he hasn't lost a single unit yet. Yeah, that extra 200 wood really helping out Salim with when yep. the Feudal Age came in. Really allowed him to take control of the water, try and, you know, win it outright, and also, the same time, um, get the walls up and just keep his, his economy rolling. As the fire ships come in here, that villager is tanking some of the damage. He's like, quick, get behind my bare chest. <laughs> I'll take the fire <laughs> damage for you. Oh, I mean, if but that demo lands, you kill all those ships. But how are you supposed to micro there when you have to micro here? It seems like there's a distraction here for Salim. He just was paying attention to water. He lost an archer there. He will win water. That's no problem. He's actually going to build a tower on the archery range here. What an interesting decision. You build a tower and then you batter it down with the villagers. I mean, you don't want this archery range in this area, right? You don't want these mm -hmm. production yep. buildings over here. It's going to be really, really messy if you leave them around. And the militia, or sorry, men-at-arms still being here make things really difficult. And there's two more joining the party from the other side. Six of them. Six men at arms. That's a, this is a disaster. I mean, King Stephen has an untouched economy at home. The skirms are going to kill the archers. Villagers are going down left and right. King Stephen, with masterclass strategy here, is performing very well. And I think will deny the tower. And she's going to... Is she going to survive? She actually survives. The she villager lives. that started it all. She no, lives. No, no, no. Skirm, Skirm, is, Skirm is going after oh. her. Skirm is after her. Skirm oh. is after her. One more shot. Oh. oh. Well, you got to remember there's five fishing ships for Slim the Grim. Slim the Grim did take losses here, but the tower could still possibly complete. This is incredibly messy. More villagers are still going down. Tower is going to be up, though. You okay. could actually for what? take out the tower. <laughs> Yeah, yeah like, what, dude? Just kill it. Wow. I mean, the, you know what I can't help thinking about here? Um, nice job from from uh, King Stephen to chase down this vill. That villager could die too. But we haven't looked at King Stephen's eco at all. Now, I think if we were to do that in a moment, we're going to I see that the question he is, hasn't looked has at he looked? <laughs> <laughs> has he looked at his eco? Look, look, at, the look at the one! Look at the one! No! Oh no! So that is the that is the cost of all this aggression. It, it also, I think Selin the Grim just attacked the boar by accident. The boar is chasing a skirm. The boar just killed the skirm. The boar definitely just killed oh, the skirm. We got villagers dying here. The tower is going to go down. What a messy game! Oh my god, this looked like Capwatch v MBL all over again, dude. This is kind of crazy. The, the villagers the are is, just Dave, taking fights everywhere. King Steven is going to kill so much, dude. And Salim doesn't know that King Steven's woodline situation is what it is. Salim will just think, I, I have six fishing ships and I've lost 15 vills. I, I still could be dead here. But I think, that, I think the thing is, if Salim keeps on playing in this game, which he likely will, he's got five vills queued. He can go for a market. He's got 850 gold. If we're yep. thinking about people that can go up to castle age which is what you need to do after a crazy opening like this yep salim is going to be there first and castle age opens up a world of opportunities for you to recover this is this is the beauty of this map now we've seen some cleaner games but this strategy with the goths i think we're going to see it more this is the second time we've seen it now and it makes so much sense because you could oh lose God, the water villager you lose the water, but if you focus on the land aspect, you might end up still having a really good shot. There's not many maps where if you lose fish, you, you still are in a position to do what King Stephen's in a position to do right now. And I, get, I know, he's behind in score. He might be behind in some aspects of the game, but look at the worker difference. 45 villagers against 27 is insane. <laughs> Slim's like I've had enough. You've made probably 15 men at arms from this barracks. No longer. We are shutting this operation down. We're boarding it up. And you're not doing anything from that. But those skirms came out and they killed another villain. Killed the villager. Wow. <laughs> they found the weak vill. Make a freaking 17 market. 17 eco kills. Slim, you need a market. You just need a market. I, I don't think he actually has the wood income for it. Like he need a lot of his lumberjacks just started working again. 
Oh, man. Now, there were no eco upgrades for King Steven behind this. King Steven, as far as I know, didn't have many farms. King Steven took all the berries and took the boar. Now King Steven wants What's to go kill the fish. What's there from Slim? Is that the archers and the skirms coming forward on the wood line? Kind of feels like it, right? Yeah, Is and there, there, there wouldn't there be... Defend its tower There's a tower and an archer yeah. range. Yeah, and a couple of skirms. This is good, good recognition from King Steven to realize that uh, this is the situation and the skirms are going to be like, there. I don't even think you need upgrades and you'll be okay. The problem here for Steven is, is going to be getting back on track, right? You've done so much damage. You feel like you're ahead, but you lose the ability to produce out of that barracks. You're uh -huh. losing basically the ability to produce out of that archer range. And you have to replace everything behind after you've already lost your fish too. And now you're probably yep. going to be a lot later to the castle age too. So whilst you're ahead of Salim in terms of economy, you're kind of behind him in terms of like the steps you need to take into the next portion of the game, if that makes sense. I get it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, King Steven with the market suddenly making me think his chances are a whole lot better, right? Because he just is going to mm -hmm. click up as well. And if their uptimes are very close, I think this could make a whole lot of sense. And oh, man, we've got supplies coming in for Salim. Now, I was thinking that if this went late, we would see infantry from both. And as two archers got picked off there from the fires there from King Steven, that's epic. Yeah, it's going to be like longsword, maybe, from Salim the Grim. It, this is not the position I think that Slim wanted to be in. Down 3-2, uh -uh. and suddenly you're you're making longsword at 25 minutes into the evacuation yep. game against Goss. This yep. is not it. Dude, I actually think that knights, just one or two knights running all around here is one of the strongest things in early Castle Age on this map. And the fact that Dravidians can't do that obviously makes it very awkward. But I think that King Steven should try it. There's always going to be an area for a knight to get through. And that's not just here, but that's also where the town center is at the start. So we'll see. Fires. Oh, what a great find for King Steven. This is the advantage for Salim to catch up is the fishing eco. What a great find. There's a stable Lovely from stuff. Steven, too. He's going into a scout, so might go into a few knights early on. And we're just seeing all sorts of areas where the knights can run in and there's gonna be no defense right second stable mm -hmm. now from steve it's really good good old steve well steve, i steve mean and dave go back we're steve and dave go back to their friends. high school days we're friends so i i i can call him steve did he did he always, oh sorry i should ask first did he always wear the mask back in high school is he kind of a shy guy <laughs> well no one knew who he was until he put on the mask <laughs> okay that makes sense. <laughs> well, there's the double stables. Salim will see that. Could possibly go into Pikeman. We actually see the upgrade now. Man, these guys are on point. We have the scout from Steven. Finding the villager there. That should be a villager kill. And Steven has killed way more economy than Salim ever has in this game. And knights could continue to do that. Six Seems fires like... in the queue is crazy. Yeah, that's a lot. It's only four, but like getting that war galley tech right away is is solid for clearing up the fishing eco. But I mean, the, the fishing eco really isn't there for Steven, right? So you're just basically keeping your own alive. You're going to have to figure out something to make on land too. To, to I think have damage control against the knights. Mm -hmm. And what have we always said about goths over all these years? It's like, if you could stay alive, if it can be even... When you have three town centers pumping bills, it could be really good for you. And honestly, I think right now, I, I think that Sing Stevens has a lead that the score in game does not suggest. We've become very used to looking at that. But res collected yeah. is higher. Second TC is up. There's knights and scouts around. And, and Salim the Grim is just still really struggling after all the damage that was taken earlier. That's super solid damage control there, though. Not only on the water. He's clearing up the fire galleys, but he's also got pikemen chasing all of the knights. Mm -hmm. Still, yep. 61 vils against 38. Crazy, dude. I don't know if eight Dravidian really fishing bad. ships are enough to, to make up for that. Yeah. And I also love how King Steven, he made the perfect amount of knights. He's not over-investing into upgrades. 
And he's he's just like, give me those TCs. I'm not going to take any risks over here. It's kind of a weird town center, but just give me TCs to produce bills out of. Perfect play there. Still yeah, needs to evacuate eventually. But... Again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to see Steven leaving the base. That's for sure. <laughs> Steven leaving. There's not, not much up there anymore. And uh, Grim and he's got a lot on water, so he's trying to swim no um infantry armor coming in now for salim but he doesn't have the longsword tech we thought like maybe longsword and pikeman could start taking out tcs or something epic but he doesn't have any way to do any type of counter damage here which i think is the main concern it's just defense but he's already for him behind it's gonna be like that stone count once you get a castle to protect your primary eco the long swords don't really have much value anymore, right? And then yeah, it's just kind yeah. of trying to buy yourself time to build up your own eco, which Salim is just now starting to do with that second town center. And there's the knights. I agree with you. Salim is very reactive to anything that King Stephen sends in at this point. Like, clearly, the approach here from King Stephen to have success earlier was more is better because. Every time uh, King Stephen's coming in with knights, there's always something. Even this, like having the navy here is underrated on evacuation to catch any villagers or army that's running that way. But that's not bad. Still has his main eco to, to be worried about, though. And from what I'm seeing, I think the fishing ships for Salim are going down off screen in the north. The knights were defended, but the fishing ships did go down in the north there to that fire galley. So only two fishing ships now for Salim. He will transition in towards uh, a horse collar and some farms, but it is 42 villagers against 80 right now. This game's gonna go an hour and 10 minutes. What? Sometimes so you, you just gotta you're... make a hard call. Okay, an hour and 10 minutes. Okay, well, I I uh, I, I have a, I have a feeling this game is going to go until well oh it's slim the grim though listen ooh, that's tricky no one listen 52 minutes no one remembers the calls you didn't make tristan yes they do there's memes about it there everyone remembers the calls i don't make are you kidding me no one remembers the calls i don't make tristan okay uh, that's fair okay makes sense very accurate Pikemen killing farmers here. And that that is the revenge that Salim the Grim needs here. Castle from King Stephen is a very, shall we say, King Stephen castle. A uh, very forward castle. No army to protect it whatsoever. But King Stephen sees that as a position of importance. Monks dying. Random ships around. 91 villagers against 51. So 40 vil lead still for King Stephen. And he's going to start to make Huskarls. And uh, this is making even me regret the call that I made because uh, Huskarls in the eco is going to be a problem for Salim the Grim. He will have enough stone for a castle. I think the evacuation needs to begin, though. Like, you need to send yes. everything over to the mainland and then just start locking it down. He's noticed now the stone there, and he was about to place a castle. He's like, Huskarls, <laughs> nope, I'm out. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's very clearly oh, going to put a castle. Oh. And now he switched it up. So the castle is going forward instead. The pikemen yo, are coming yo, this Yo, 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 yo. This is sick. Wow. I mean, and this is what he needs to do, right? It's hard when the score shows what it does to know how far behind you are. This is precisely what he needs. He needs to abandon the starting region. And he needs to what get a castle drop sick. on King Steven. And King Stephen sees this, and King Stephen's going to YOLO his own castle, right? Is he going to buy this stone? What's he doing? He's leaving? He doesn't have enough uh, to buy it. He I doesn't have think. enough. Wow. Stephen is what leaving. What a moment. Stephen is leaving. I like that. Stephen... Well, we'll get to continue that if Stephen wins this game, I suppose. Stephen's still breathing. <laughs> Stephen! <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that up to you at this point. Um, I don't think I can compete. The Huskarls are such a big pain right now. And Steven, he's just going to need to find a way to stop the Yurumis. The Yurumi swordsmen are going to be very strong against Huskarls, very strong against Gots in general. One of the rare instances where making a lot of them in Castlage would maybe make sense here. 
A castle is problematic <laughs> for Steven. Like, I, I mean, he's going to go for a castle. Are you telling me you're not believing in Steven? I'm just saying, an hour and 10 minutes, but the, the Husk Girls will take out those fires. That dock is likely for demos to stop more Husk Girls coming across. A wall to the dock could also be good. He's going to force a castle defensively there. And then Steven will have to rush him and go for Trebs to push that back. But it's buying Salim a bunch more time to yeah, build yeah, up yeah. behind this. I, yeah, I think like going imp for Trebs here, it, it feels natural in a lot of situations. I would have really liked to have seen the classic like triple barracks, just full infantry spam of Huskarls everywhere mm -hmm. all over the map from King Steven here. I don't hate what he's doing right now. He's still getting some damage in. And he's still going to have this big lead, but yeah, he doesn't want to be broken with this position, Dave. And he'll lose a TC. His castle will go up, though. And then we might... Do you go, like... Do you try and go infantry into the Yurumis? Or do you go for hand cannons? Because Gots actually get hand cannons. I honestly don't know, because at the same time, you need to expand your eco. You need to catch up. Yeah. You need to get to at yeah. least 100 bills, right? And it's all you can do to not lose villagers against these random husk girl raids right now so probably a is the only thing that you can do right now while also expanding your eco yeah. which is unfortunate because it's really not that great without all of our upgrades in and his opponent can just switch into something that isn't infantry whoever this player is they didn't this king steven guy he didn't just pick Goths for the start. He picks Goths because he understands the Goths. He's committed towards the mm -hmm. infantry. He's not trying to go into anything different here. And I, I always felt like that's the case. Even if you're in like a bad matchup for the Goths, I think you could still spam infantry with it being so cheap and then producing so quickly and get away with it. And he's going to have Anarchy on the way now. He's going to have a Treb on the way soon. And Salim the Grim... I know he's got a lot of fight, and I know his eco is catching up, but, like, he needs a moment or two to breathe to have any chance. He's and buying he another castle it, at home. He's getting another yeah. castle at home to defend this area, and that's going to be just on time to counter the barracks. 47 on food is kind of wild. For, yeah. Like, this is an insane recovery right now from Salim the Grim. We'll see if Salim the Grim can get the win, take us to a game seven. Dravidians again, maybe one of the better matchups if they can make their infantry against the Goth infantry. It is King Steven continuing with infantry, not deviating from it. The castle will go up. This castle will definitely be trebbed down, and he'll know that. But he will make it to the Imperial Age, unless yeah, uh, which CC did he use? Uh, he used that uh, one right there. Okay, okay, that's yeah, fine. On the yeah. screen, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And the Arumis are doing a good job up against the Husk Girls, but still only 94 villagers against 139. Goss with 140 bills. Disgusting. Mm -hmm. 60 on food now, too. It's really, yeah. really bad for Salim. This is what King Steven likes. He likes to be able to raid. We saw him kill 200 villagers in the Hidden Forts game. And this is the perfect strategy. Now... I think he's got enough map control to be happy with even losing the Huskarls here. If you were to go for like 10 raids and only kill villagers on two of them, 20% of the time is good enough when you've got a lead like this. You've got the economy to continue to toss away units. Wouldn't mind seeing Champion uh, mixed in with the Huskarls though. You already have the barracks. You can get the Perfusion upgrade. Supplies. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, I meant, I meant for uh, Salim. I Sorry, I thought you were yeah, talking yeah, about sure, champions sure. for some. Well, I, you're right for both, actually. <laughs> right? Like, I think the only thing about Huskarls is you're not really utilizing the anti... Like, you're not really utilizing the pure armor at all right now. Mm -hmm. So getting elite Huskarl is probably purely from the raiding perspective. Well, the champion could always come And also, later. the Arumi are doing quite well against the Huskarls so far. And if there's yeah, a big yeah, mass true. of Arumi... Like, they're getting the, the splash damage. They have the charge attacks, right? They're just a natural counter to the Huskarl, even in the elite form. So you have to be careful not to fully tech into something that your opponent is already making a counter for. 
However, he does have pros, 71 on food, so he's just going to keep yeah. producing husk girls. Yeah, like a lot of pros would just go for chemistry and make hand cannons. This King Steven character says, no, I'm just going to make more husk girls, and I'm going to spam them all the time. And who cares if your unit's better? Who cares if it's elite? elite roomie. You're just not going to have eco to make these things because I'm going to have husk girls everywhere. So Lim the Grim is in 90 pop. 90 pop. He was actually doing okay. But everything is falling apart now. There's like 20 more Huskarls in queue. And it looks like King Steven is going to move on to the quarterfinals. A bad Civ matchup for him, but an amazing strategy here. As poor Salim. He didn't resign a lot in, throughout the series. He didn't resign early anyways. He doesn't want to call it, but I think at some point here soon, he's going to have to realize he just can't afford to make any more army. Yeah, I mean, the Arumis are still coming out, and they are dealing with the Huskarls, but there's always another group of 20 or 30 Huskarls. Let's see how these Elite Arumi perform against that that army there. With the little splash damage, pretty good, They're but you just don't have the numbers. They're whipping numbers it out. Numbers are everything. Numbers, numbers are everything. Castles are everything, too. Salim's about to lose his castle. And it, the number of Huskarls hasn't gone down. It's still 40 plus Huskarls for King Steven. There was just a constant stream of units into Salim the Grim's base. And the GG Jeez. is called King Steven wins. And man, what a series, dude. We, we, we just had so much this game. We had a lot of unique unit play in this series. We had diverse strategy in this series. We had two like similar enough styles, but also different enough at the same time. It was a treat to watch. Yeah, that was really, really fun and a uh, great long series. What was your time you were saying for this game? 50? You said 50? I think I said 52. I think I said 52. So okay, it wasn't, it was wasn't too close, bad. Dude. Yeah, I mean, I just couldn't help but have faith in that boom and the goths from King Steven. It felt like an early yep. imp he was going to find the window. And he took advantage of that, collecting so many more resources there. What a series. Uh, we, we definitely should sum this one up we should go back and go through what happened it started off with this which feels forever ago now because it was such a long series but king steven knew his opponent was going to drop the castle and ended up reacting pretty brilliantly to it dave yeah i mean just the timing double layer stone walls and then he comes back with the houses the towers everywhere it was a, it was a few things going wrong maybe with the university there but it was enough to keep him out of the base, and then the push forward was insane. This was just good luck, honestly. After not moving the scouts, <laughs> Some, sometimes you get punished, and sometimes you just find the opportunities by accident, right? Yeah, I agree with you there. Yeah, like Slim the Grim's whole game plan of pushing through the middle was neutralized with the stone wall, and we've seen many pros, many great talented players, not do the simple things, and that's what King Steven did here. And eventually, mm -hmm. he then pushed through the middle with the rats and archers, with the trebs. And, uh, you know, the Conquistadors weren't enough on the other side. The light cup get through. And our series started with that Steven victory. But we, we just did still have that feeling that the caliber of the players was pretty close. And that Slim was going to be able to turn it around. And then we had this mud flow game, which had the, the highest probably investment into Navy I've ever seen on this map. It mm -hmm. was crazy. We had fires. We had demos. We had uh, war galleys as well. But... I think um, Salim just did a better job of locking it down and then getting the damage in on land as well. Like he was constantly picking away at the villagers and Steven couldn't couldn't compare. Yeah, eventually demo gets into the wood line here. This is just, that demo is actually just reward from Salim the Grim's aggression on land. Did feel like Salim was possibly going to throw the game here, landed a couple demo shots and then placed this castle. Like this to me was kind of the moment of the game where I, I realized that we had a unique type of player because when mm -hmm. there's the potential for your castle to be denied by a demo very few people are going to walk to the middle and drop that one and then very few people when they're losing are going to go forward and try and win the game this way with no army support and you can see on the highlights there what people thought um about that player but yeah castle got denied slim tied it up and then we moved on to this game which I don't know. It's hard to pick which game was the best of the series, but this was certainly an incredible one where we saw the Rhino approach from King Steven and then Selim the Grim chose to go for the Monk's Pikes uh, and just skipped the Rhinos at the start of the game. 
Yeah, this is a really, really solid game, and it's, the replays are going to go on for a while, presumably with this one. The latest raids were huge. This was a big moment where he snuck in and had the monks hiding behind, got three yeah. latest conversions, and was able to take out that castle. And we felt like that was the tipping point, right? Because Salim's eco was ahead. The timing, though, for Steven was faster to Imperial Age, and he managed to take advantage of that, and he was constantly running around with these freaking latest killing villagers, yeah, like, killing helps, killing everything. He was 30 population behind at the highlight prior to this. And now you look at this, he actually still was behind. And that's, that's the story of the game. The latest killed everything. Did feel like, you know, after that game, it was close enough. You'd expect Slim to be able to tie it up. So this was an important one for him. And he started off with a villager pick. We had some questions mm -hmm. on how like many turtle ships we'd see. How would the Navy play out? while we did see some turtle ships i actually think the key for king steven ended up being the tower position that he uh took some time building up but eventually just is built up to a point where slim the grim wasn't able to ever stop it in the late yeah. game yeah and then of course like slim is constantly trying to hold on to that middle position and steven just draws a line you can see it red on either side of this corridor all the production yeah. buildings on either side and Steven is just hard focused on taking out these castles, pushing forward with towers, and also stopping the expansion from Salim on the other side with towers too. So really difficult position he was put in. Yeah, this game was maybe the most confusing for me for who Salim the Grim might be. But then in the mid game, in the late game, he got to this against the maybe one-sided Georgians. He is maxed out on Imp Camel, maxed out on Hand Cannons. And we had some pretty epic engagements here. Some engagements that made Big it pretty fights. clear that, that Manaspa are still insane, but they eventually got whittled down. And I mean, this was the strat of the series for King Steven. The Sneakville, the Sneak Barracks, the range and everything. It just made it too chaotic for Salim the Grim, who had a better civilization, at least economically, mm -hmm. to be able to play the type of game he wanted to play here. Yeah, and Salim, you could tell his attention was just divided in this early game, right? He was trying to focus on water, and then he was trying to fight with Vils, and he never had that opportunity to, like, get the archer range up and mass up a few archers to just deal with the men-at-arms. They just kept coming, and the, the skirms kept coming, and before you realize that when you're taking fights like that, you're losing three or four Vils, so it's really, really difficult to recover. But great, great fight from Salim, and I look forward to more from steve going forward good old steve moving on my boy salim goes down i feel like everyone i've talked to is rooting for a hero uh, all the co-casters all the heroes have gone down so far this is that was a look at the trophy for hidden cup five maybe steven will get that at the end of the week we'll see but uh crazy series um yes thank you very much oh wow that is he's that cutting is him very he's had He's man, that is a beautiful head. onion hat. Do not ruin the onion hat. That is a <laughs> traditional onion hat. I don't know who now. made that meme, but well, well played. Uh, thank you, production, for making fun of me. 4 2 for King Steven over Slim the Grim, but let's find out who people think these players are. Uh, before we do the poll, I would like to remind people who everyone thought the prior days players were. We had uh, eight players. This is what the bracket looked like. According to the viewers, we had Hera versus Ganji, Jordan versus Mihai, Barles versus MBL, and then Vinchester against Hato. But uh, we're going to move on to the poll. And viewers, uh, if you're watching on Twitch, you can type a number associated with the player in a bit. And feel free to vote for anyone that's up there. That does not mean they are correct. Um, but yeah, vote away soon. I, I also... For those watching on the YouTube side, I don't think I have any intel or info on this for you right now, but we should or are working on hopefully being able to pick up your votes as well. Uh, for the time being, it's only working on Twitch, though. So we'll get that started over here. You could always hop over here, use the emotes, or just stay on YouTube if you'd like. But we've got King Steven and no image for King Steven. Uh, been told they Steven's do not leaving. know why it's broken, but Steven is leaving. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Dave, is the community votes? Uh, thoughts on this? Doubt. 
Okay. I saw many things clear? there that I mean, I mean, from the draft, my and maybe that influenced me, but from the draft, remember before the set even started, I said it, it was probably doubt just because yep. of the sieves and the maps he yep. picked. And then as it progressed, we didn't see really any quick wall attempts. We didn't see any of the the cute things that a lot of players do. Wasn't trying any of that stuff. He was just playing his game, forcing yep. his opponent to come at him. So really, really solid play. And I think doubt <laughs> is King Steven as Steven <laughs> appears. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, someone told him he can't leave just yet. Uh, yeah, vote away community. I mean... It would be pretty crazy if it wasn't out of my opinion. Uh, I agree with everything you said. I felt it's very typical for a player like Dow to also win on the brand new maps, right? He won on like mm -hmm. the Hidden Cup exclusive maps and then the two new maps that got brought in. Uh, the hope is for a player like him to use that practice period and benefit from it. So that's my guess as well. I think that is our doubt sighting and the community. I think with a new record here, 85%. <laughs> thank you production thank you production that was very sly uh 85 percent of voters believe that that is the lord doubt amazing stuff uh but i think the one that's going to be a bit trickier is the next player because um uh, funnily enough yo and accm are voted in here for king steven i'm feeling like heavy vibes that that could be yo or accm and uh if it were to be yo for example who typically goes a lot deeper into tournaments i'm not sure that i i could stomach that yo would lose yeah. four two first round but then again it's hidden cup the matchups happen doubts beaten yo before so i w thoughts on that like i'm still holding out hope that yo's still out there and he's not knocked out right now well there were some very yo characteristic behaviors but there were also it just looked a little too sloppy to be him, right? With okay. some of the transitions and whatnot and not being able to save some of those villagers on the, um, the Hidden Forts game. However, Yo okay. is one of those players that gets better the further he goes in a tournament. And like you said, with Hidden Cup, he's not used to maybe facing doubt in the round of 16 or yeah. someone of that caliber, right? So maybe he hasn't had the chance to get warmed up and... I, I am on the same page as you. Initially, I thought it was Yo. I'm probably 50-50 on it now. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think a player who's close to Yo in terms of how he strategizes and sees the game and fights and everything, mm -hmm. who maybe doesn't get as deep into tournaments, would be ACCM. Yep. I'm personally leaning towards ACCM for that reason. But there's a lot of players. We had nine players who qualified. There's a lot of players out there that no one's guessing. And it's got to be some of these guys at some point. Like, could that have been a slightly rusty Jordan? Maybe. Uh, could that have been a Barles, a Ganji, maybe a Mihai, a Sebastian, a Sato? I don't do think see, it was any of hey, the other names. Do we see Yo on slopes not using his scout and keeping it patrolled near his town center? Actually, yes. Like, yo, you full do? walling and going into excess amounts of scouts, I could definitely see. Yeah, but like, I, but I've never seen him keep a scout at home like that. Yeah. I've seen that ha happen, but never just keep it. I don't know, man. I, this is so difficult. It's so and tough. Some to people know. are voting, some people are voting for doubt to be Salim the Grim. Solid strategy, execution struggled. Yeah. Right? I, you know, at times we've described doubt as that in the past. So I, I actually think that's the funny thing about this is that it, I think doubt is possibly top three conversation for Salim the Grim oh, it's as just, well. It's just a meme now. It's just, a, come on, Ch you're better than this. <laughs> you're not, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> well, we got 10 seconds till the results are officially in, but it looks like ACCM is number one right now. Not for long. Uh, yeah, it's it's changing slowly because you told them not to. You can't tell people not to do something on the internet. And it's, okay, saved. We had ACCM 33%, Doubt 29%, Sato. and then Sato 11%, which is an interesting one. Uh -huh. I didn't see a lot of Sato tendencies personally. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that people are aware of the fact that it might not always be the obvious one, which I appreciate with mm -hmm. that. So.
Yeah, doubt against ACCM, doubt four two against ACCM. Maybe what we saw here, but uh, dude, thanks for the uh, thanks for the cast. You're going to be in the casting booth a lot over the next five or six days. I'm looking forward to speculating more, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. Chat, keep it real. Enjoy the next set, and uh, I'll see you again on Thursday, right? Thursday? I don't have it memorized, but uh, one of the days. I think both, maybe. Okay, so. cool. Cool. I don't matter that much, I guess. Okay, I'll see you No, later. no, Bye. it's on the schedule, bro. It's no, I'm on the leaving. Schedule. I'm... Listen, I'm King Steven, Steven, all right? I'm leaving, okay? All right. So, see ya. Peace. See, see you later, Steven. You cut this screen now. <laughs> Salutes in chat, please, for Dave, aka Steven. Uh, here I thought Dave was John Bureau coming into Hidden Cup 5, and apparently he is now King Steven. Um, so good to know. Uh, but seriously, um, great to have him in. First cast, obviously, with Hidden Cup. And we we eventually are going to get even more warmed up than we were there. I, I felt like come game two, game three, we got our groove down here and, and had a lot of fun. Um, Thank you guys for being here. Uh, did you guys enjoy the series? I hope you did. I hope you've enjoyed everything with Hidden Cup, the speculating, uh, the guessing, but also aside from all of that, even if like you knew the names, I personally feel like the games have been very good. I feel like the new maps have presented a lot. The way the draft works gives us a lot of variety, uh, which is kind of the goal with the main event. So thank you. Uh, to go over a couple things, thank you everyone who subscribed. Uh, the sub count's been flying. Uh, best way to support the stream within reason. Subscribe to the stream. Use the emotes. Uh, we got one for each hero. We got different things with memes and jokes, whatever you want. Um, so if you got a prime laying around, would be much appreciated during Hidden Cup 5. Uh, on top of that, donations that come through to the stream do update the prize pool. So the prize pool right now is $51,500. 1500 came th through from the community. Apologies if I can't announce every sub or say thank you to everybody that is impossible because there's so many people here on a tuesday chat we've got like collectively close to twenty five thousand people on twitch and youtube so um thank you very much someone said please sub so he can buy real headphones thank you television somebody gift that guy a sub for making fun of my headphones a very original very very original um so we have one more series today but before we dive into that we got some things i want to go over real quick so we're just going to go to the bracket and basically the schedule for the week so you know when to be here here we are now this of course shows the results that have happened so far over the first two and a half days the next series is going to be Cosrell against edber sigismund tomorrow is the end of the round of 16 where we will see alfred the alpaca and jan Jiska. and then alexios komnenos versus robert Giscard. Uh, the schedule's at the top there, guys. So again, not sure if you're big calendar people, but throughout the week, the weekdays, we conclude the round of 16 and the round of eight. And then we move into the Saturday being both semifinals. And then on the final day, we have the third place match. We have the final and then the big reveal. Okay. Now, if you've never been here for a hidden cup, smile at me in chat um, just to give me a gauge. And I'll just tell you that the reveal is obviously very important. We're not just going to like end the final and be like, hey, these people are these people. See ya. You know, it's going to be a little bit more involved in that. So make sure you stick around for that too. Uh, and yeah, support's been unreal. I'm very happy with it. Working my way through a pounding headache right now. So I hope the commentary was solid enough there. Uh, we're going to have a lovely friend of mine join for the next cast named Slam. Who you may know Slam played in the Hidden Cup qualifiers. We also have this nice tradition now. Slam joined, I think, Hidden Cup 2 commentary. I could be wrong. It might have been Hidden Cup 3. Anyways, I've had him join in Hidden Cups to cast. He's very excited to be here. A full Canada day, actually, now that you think about it, with the exception of myself, of course. But uh, Slam will be joining us soon. Uh, before we get to that next series, we're going to have a break. But before the break, we are going to talk about our sponsor. Uh, our, without... Surfshark, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish a lot of the things that we've done so far in Hidden Cup. So, send it away to our sponsor, Surfshark. Hidden Cup 5 obviously has a huge hidden element to it. And in today's day and age, our internet traffic is not very hidden. Surfshark is playing a big role in Hidden Cup 5, but can also play a big role in your experiences on the internet. Surfshark VPN allows you to change your location with ease for a variety of different benefits. 
On top of the potential for added data security, Surfshark can make it easy to access shows or movies on various streaming platforms that may only be available in certain countries. Additionally, many websites show you prices based on your location. So shopping for things like flight tickets or hotels with Surfshark can be an easy way to save you money. I personally have encountered issues where when trying to upload content for you, that I found my internet was not giving me the quality that I was paying for. Turns out my internet service provider puts a cap that they don't really make obvious. And with using Surfshark VPN, I'm actually able to bypass that cap and upload things much faster to my editors and to the channel. Honestly, there are too many benefits to mention for using a VPN. Below the stream, you will find the Surfshark link and the deal with Hidden Cup 5. That is it for now, though. We now move into our next series in Hidden Cup 5. All right, little info about Surfshark. We'll have more throughout that. Check the link below, please. They've been awesome. Uh, it's been great dealing with them, and, and they were really excited to, to work within Age of Empires 2. They, they, it's not the first event they've sponsored within Age 2, and uh, that's a rarity, so... Uh, we got the link below the stream if you want to check that out. Also, if you want to be super, super sellout, we actually have the T90 Shark emote, which I get. You might prefer to use the Dow emotes or something instead. Um, so I did show this on day number one, but I want to revisit this topic because we had this conversation come up a lot during Hidden Cup. Uh, and so for the break, we're going to go back to what I call Age of Colors to talk about a very important or not so important thing here in Hidden Cup 5. And then we'll be back, have another series here in Hidden Cup to finish off the day. Don't go anywhere, guys. Part of the charm of Age of Empires 2 is how limitless it feels. You can play this game a thousand times on the same map, and you are likely to have a different experience each and every time. At the highest level, even the smallest of details can make all the difference. But there is one detail that is often overlooked and rarely discussed. And that detail is... Player color. Everybody knows that if you pick the right color, you're gonna play like a god, right? I am the Viper. Aha! No! Oh, 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 pain. Well, no. Actually, this doesn't have an effect at all on gameplay. But when you're in the lobby in Age of Empires 2, you are able to select from eight separate colors. And then when in game, your units and your buildings will all be this color. This again, has absolutely no bearing on the game beyond player preference. With that said though, for something that has no consequence on gameplay itself, players sure seem to care about it. And within the context of Hidden Cup 5, maybe it's possible that the colors that players select will give us some hints on who they are. So I've been digging, and I looked at every single tournament that these players have played for years, and what colors they play as. What, did you think that the guy who brought you Force Nothing has something better to do with his life than dig through colors? So of our 16 main event players, 10 of them tend to stick to player one color blue. Either that, or they just don't give a crap. But the point still stands that the majority of the time, the players on screen are the ones that more often than not are going to be playing in the blue. So if you see a player in blue in Hidden Cup 5, that confirms basically nothing if you think about it because there's only eight sets in the first round and maybe they're going to play against each other and then they both can't be blue and uh, some of these players are really high percentages like Hera. Maybe Hera's going to fight over blue and then other people don't. It's not much, but it is something to think about. And what it also does is it leaves us with six others that stand out from the pack. Starting with Tato. Going through the data, Tato is the only player who picks red with a higher frequency than any other color over the last few years. He's the only player. There's not 10 anymore. This is something to work with. And in Tato's Hidden Cup debut in Hidden Cup 2, he played in red in his only round. And then in Hidden Cup 3, in the first round, he played... Blue. Which kind of ruins the whole thing. But in the second round, in the quarterfinals, he did play red, which is great. And then in the semifinals, he played blue again. And so then I thought maybe, hey, Hidden Cup 4, he would have played red. Uh, no, he actually played gray for that entire series. And it's worth pointing out, by the way, that if there is a color combination that is not so easy on the eyes, we will change player colors to something that's easier to see. But it will always be clear what color the player selected by that little signifier next to their name at the bottom. 
So what this tells us is that Tato has a tendency to actually switch his colors throughout the tournament and will maybe pick red, which is not so helpful, I suppose. But up next, we have more defining data. We have something that will finally blow your mind. We have two players that are seemingly obsessed with the color six, Barles and Vinchester. Now, Barles is not totally obsessed, but he does pink purple 67% of the time in tournaments, which in my opinion is pretty telling. But then Vinchester? Vinchester selects purple 89% of the time in tournaments, which is just crazy. And I'm excited to finally confirm with you my suspicions and prove to you that these guys love this color from their performances in Hidden Cup 4, where Barls opted for color 5. Um, he did not go with color 6, he went with color 5, which he never did before, and, uh, well, that was his only Hidden Cup series, and Barls ruined it too. And then, Vinchester, Mr. 89% Purple Vinchester, opted for color 4. Which, as I'll get into in a second, had a lot of people excited over the prospect of that being another player. Unfortunately for Vinchester, the mind game didn't really catch on once he dropped out of the first rounds, and people no longer thought he was the Viper. So yet again, we have another instance where players are not actually picking the colors they usually pick. And mentioning color 4 leads us directly to talking about the yellow color and the Viper. The Viper is the GOAT of Age of Empires, and throughout his whole career, with few exceptions, he has played in the yellow trunks. Viper has won it all many times, including three Hidden Cups, but his color? It's not what you would have expected. Hidden Cup won? Viper won without picking yellow a single time. Hidden Cup 2? The Viper went the whole tournament avoiding yellow, and on the final day, he did show up for the semis in the final wearing his true colors. But then Hidden Cup 3, Viper only played in green the entire tournament. Hidden Cup 4? Sometimes he was red, and sometimes he was blue. So, it seems to me like Viper has typically avoided his favorite color during Hidden Cups. And that color gets all the more interesting in Hidden Cup 5, because rising star Mihai from Romania picks yellow with insane consistency, and did so for every single game in his qualifier. Does this mean Mihai won't do it, or will do it? We have no clue, because this is his first Hidden Cup ever but it's just another player to keep in mind when we think of the color yellow in Hidden Cup. Okay, so I have thoroughly discussed colors and you are probably getting a bit dizzy, but I do have one more player and color situation to mention. And that is with Leary. I've saved Leary for last because Leary is by far the most unique case. Leary, on average, selects green during tournaments more than any other player. And what percentage do you think Leary selects green as? Is it the 99% we've seen with Hera in blue? Is it the 95% from Viper in yellow? Leary's most picked color in all of his tournament matches is green at 46%. That's his best. Like, if this was a test, he would be failing massively and he would have to retake the grade. Not that I have any experience in that. And while that's not consistent at all, get this. Leary did not pick green a single time in any of his performances in Hidden Cups. Hidden Cup 2, he went yellow in round 1. Everyone said, oh, this must be Viper. And guess what? Then in the next round, he went to red in the quarters. Hidden Cup 3, yet again, he went yellow. Ooh, Viper confirmed. And then in round 2, do we have a trend here? No, he didn't go red. He went for blue. Then in Hidden Cup 4, he started in freaking red, and then in round 2, he went to yellow. Which means Leary has actually selected yellow in Hidden Cups more than any other player. So if you see yellow, it's not Viper, it's not Mihai, it's Leary confirmed? The thing we've learned here, though, is that Leary has had no consistency. And he, too, is constantly changing his colors to throw people off the scent. Now, we collected a lot of data for this. But there's one more thing that I need to mention about Leary, which has become more and more common over the last few years. You see, usually a player selects a color for the series and continues to play in that color. But the reason Leary is at 46% for his most selected color is because he's not necessarily attached to a color. He is changing colors all the time. Leary is known for changing his color throughout a series, which means he will select one color in game one and then maybe move on to the next color game two. He's done this so frequently that I've become quite annoyed, and I actually created a rule 
that said, players must stay with their colors throughout the whole series. And, well, he must have never read the rule because he continued to do it. And now I've since removed the rule because it's kind of funny. I asked him about it in person, and he said something along the lines of, I like to change how I look sometimes. So that, my friends, is Age of Colors. And in Hidden Cup 5, these colors probably mean absolutely nothing. All the data tells me is that players are using the colors as mind games. So you should take any color you see with a massive grain of salt. Between Leary switching his colors every game, to Viper being known as yellow, from Vinchester and Barles being known to pick purple a lot. I think if you're a player who, I don't know, usually picks blue, maybe you could pick one of these other colors to send everyone for a whirl. This is just one of the many elements that makes Hidden Cup exciting, and I hope you'll be here for the rest of it. More Hidden Cup 5 action continues soon.
All right. Thank you guys for waiting. Thank you for hanging out, jamming away. Hope you enjoyed the tunes. Brought some of the same tunes back from previous Hidden Cups. Also makes in some new ones. How you doing, guys? How you doing? I'm going to take a moment just to say hi to my audience because, you know, a lot of times it's focused on the show. Um, and I can't really, like, you know, dedicate all my time to looking at chat, which at times is good because you guys make jokes from time to time. And I see it and it cuts deep. But uh, I get that's how it goes. What's up, everybody? Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to all the first messages. I'm seeing quite a bit of that. That's cool to see. Lots of new people. Lots of sub batches that have been around since the beginning, man. And then lots of new faces, too. Thank you. Um, what's up, Lou Skittles? Lou Skittles, you were on the rerun last night, too. 24-hour hidden cup duty right here. What's up, David? What's up, Atlas? What's up, Ozzy? Hello, guys. Um, so, good news and bad news situation for you, depending on how you look at this particular topic. If we can go to what the community thinks about the players we have, we've got a situation, okay? Now, of course, people might be wrong. But you look through that. We've got six potential names in the darkness, so to speak, right? Um, and there are some really big names that might be remaining for many of you. Uh, namely, the Viper. Uh, haven't seen Viper yet, apparently. Leary. Haven't seen Leary yet, apparently. Uh, what about Yo? Haven't seen that, apparently. And that could be our next matchup. We do not know. Of course, we don't know if these predictions up here are correct. Also noticing a little bit of a trend where some of the players who are maybe a slightly lesser known from the qualifiers are not being voted in either. So, uh, for example, we, we haven't seen Sebastian up there. We haven't seen Hart up there. I'm trying to think of who else is actually missing here. I think uh, uh, Barles is no Barles has been voted in who am i missing then who are we missing who is left there's no we don't have a graphic for this i'm trying to go oh, sato yes sato okay sato is one and then maybe one more that we're missing here and we're being very disrespectful to this individual well, maybe i said their name already but the point is we could have like a viper leary showdown here in theory coming up i don't know man yeah, i think we said all the names at the end of the day but uh, I wanted to bring that up before we continue here because that's the beauty of Hidden Cup is you don't know what the matchups are going to be. The random seat, if it wasn't random seating, obviously you could use process of elimination and say, okay, that player's here, that player's there. I think like one of the biggest first round matchups we ever had was Tato and Hera in the first round of Hidden Cup 4. It, ended up, it was best of fives then and ended up being 3-2 win for Hera. It was a crazy series. So anyways, I'm not saying people are even right. I don't know either. I think that some of those guesses up there are incorrect, and we're going to get more intel and more data and eventually figure it out. So thank you guys for being here. All right, I really appreciate it. So um, you just saw some heroes on screen, and all of the uh, players in Hidden Cup are playing on heroes, which are actual historical figures. They actually accomplish things in history, and not on a computer, uh, but you know, in real life. They were out there touching grass, so to speak. And their next matchup is Kozrael against Emperor Sigismund. So I brought in my friend, who you're probably very familiar with now, Riley, to introduce Cosrail to you all. What's going on, mate? This is Riley Knight from the podcast half Assed History, here to have a bit of a chat with you about the heroes featured in Hidden Cup 5. All the heroes the players are using to hide their true identities are real-life people from history featured as units in various Age of Empires campaigns. And while T90 is an avid history lover, his knowledge and memory of history would... Uh, pretty firmly make him a historical low elo legend, I think it's fair to say. So he invited me along to tell you a thing or two about these heroes we're watching square off against one another. Let's get to know one of them a little bit better. Khosrau I was the Shahanshah, the King of Kings of the expansive and powerful Sassanid Empire, also known as the Second Persian Empire, across the mid-6th century and is an absolutely fascinating figure. But there is a specific story I want to tell you about him here. Um, he spent most of his reign fighting the Byzantines, and there's one tale from one of the wars he fought that is absolutely brilliant. Check this out, right? Khosrau was crowned in 531 CE. Well, he wasn't even 20 years old at a time when the, uh, the Sassanid Empire was, again, at war with the neighbouring Byzantines. But one of the first things that young Khosrau did after taking the throne was make peace with the Byzantine Emperor, Justinian I, who seems to have had well and truly enough of being fed his own teeth 
But peace came at a steep cost for Justinian because as part of the peace settlement, he had to give Khosrau 5,000 kilograms of gold. And in today's terms, that is over 320 million US dollars. Imagine having that much gold, especially with the Persian markets. Anyway, in 532, he and Khosrau signed the optimistically named Treaty of Eternal Peace, which proved to be, um, well, not that. Um, because while Khosrau did a good job uh, going about reforming and modernising his realm, reorganising his military, fixing up his tax system, centralising his government's power before long, he was hungry for war once again. And seeing as going up against the Byzantines had gone so well last time, obviously their lack of eco bonuses really hurt them, uh, Khosrau decides to go for a second helping, and this meant that the eternal peace lasted all of eight years. In 540, the Sassanids marched into Byzantine-held territory to the city of Syra. They were presumably seen coming from a mile away, given that Byzantines get free town much. And the city was captured and sacked immediately, despite the Byzantine defensive bonus. And uh, then the Sassanids moved on to their next target, Hierapolis. The citizens of the city of Hierapolis had a quick whip round and managed to scrape together around half a tonne of silver, which is around 400,000 US dollars these days, in case you were wondering. Um, and they offered this to Khosrau essentially as a bribe in order to just not attack the town. So that's a freebie for Khosrau. He moves on, takes the silver, and uh, this time targets the city of Baroia. Now, I'm not even sure if the citizens of Baroia were given a chance to pay him off, uh, to be honest, but. Whether they tried to or not, it didn't matter. Baroia was razed to the ground just like Syrah, but Khosrau isn't finished yet. And by this stage now, the, the Byzantines are coming to him. They're offering him half a ton of, uh, of gold, not silver this time. If only he'll turn around, call off the invasion altogether and head home. And Khosrau agrees. But by the time he arrives at the famous city of Antioch, this gold the Byzantines have promised, it is nowhere to be seen. So Khosrow says, oh, well, well look, um, do you want to have a quick look between the couch cushions here in Antioch, see if you've got half a tonne of gold lying about? Oh, you don't? Okay, well, mm, too bad. What can I do? Khosrow attacked Antioch and, surprise, surprise, raised it to the ground, looted everything that wasn't nailed down, and absolutely obliterated everything else. He left nothing behind, not even the city's population. But he didn't kill these people. No, no. He took them all prisoner, and he sent them packing back to the Sassanid Empire. The war with the Byzantines continued, but we're going to head back to Persia with all these prisoners from Antioch to talk about what they got up to. They were sent to a spot near the Sassanid capital city of Tessaphon on the banks of the Tigris River, and there they were joined by other prisoners from the other cities that Khosrow had sacked, from Syrah and, and Baroia and, and plenty more later on. And what they were made to do was absolutely ridiculous. Using the knowledge that they had of their former home, the city of Antioch, its layout and its buildings and its architecture, Khosrow had the former inhabitants of Antioch build a brand new Antioch from scratch. This city was apparently designed to be as identical as possible to the one that he had sacked, right down to the Roman baths, a circus and a hippodrome. And best of all, this was done because Khosrow wanted the city to be as magnificent and as grand as possible, not just for bragging rights, but also so the displaced people who he'd brought to, to build it would want to stay there afterwards. The name he gave to this city was Where Antioch Khosrau, and it translates to Better Than Antioch Khosrau Built This. So he's really rubbing it in the face of the Byzantines here, just so everyone would know who built Antioch 2.0, the all-new Antioch, bigger and better than... Well, actually, sorry, no, not bigger than before. Exactly the same size, right? That's the whole point, but definitely better. Definitely better. After all, it's a Persian city now, faster working TC, more hit points than even a Byzantine TC. Of course it's going to be better. So Justinian certainly had his face rubbed in it. Oh, hey, mate, sorry I burnt down your city. Thanks for the gold. By the way, if you get any complaints about people missing the Antioch that I destroyed, don't worry, I've built a better one over here. So, will Khosrau embarrass and humiliate his foes once again as he fights for glory and riches in Hidden Cup 5? Or will his hubris get the better of him? We'll find out as Hidden Cup 5 continues. <laughs> Antioch Definitive Edition. <laughs> Whew. Well, uh, I watched most of these ahead of time. I hadn't watched that one in advance, and that one got me good. <laughs> that one was good. I didn't do any, I didn't give many insights on that one either. Oof, man. All right. Well, Khosrow, geez, dude. I did not know that Khosrow was so insane. My favorite part is, is what he named it. You know, um, I, I forget. I think it was better than Antioch. 
Kazrael built this. Like, that is savage. Anyways, um, <clears throat> nothing I can say can compete with these videos for the time being until the series actually begins. Uh, one lucky player is going to be playing as Kazrael. Kazrael is going to be up against another historical figure named Emperor Sigismund. So let's learn about him now. Sigismund of Luxembourg was, at various points across his career, the King of Hungary and Croatia, the King of Germany, the King of Bohemia, and even the Holy Roman Emperor. But if you're an Age of Empires fan, and if you're watching this, I don't know why you wouldn't be, you'll most likely remember him as the primary villain of the Jan Zizka campaign. Sigismund was potentially responsible for the death of the great religious reformer Jan Hus, uh, which is what kicked off the Hussite Wars, and yes, saw Jan Zizka deploy the mighty Hussite wagon against Sigismund's forces. Sigismund was born in 1386 in Nuremberg, which back then was a free imperial city under the Holy Roman Empire. He became the King of Hungary and Croatia in 1387 through his marriage to Mary, the Queen of Hungary, and also the sister of Jadwiga, another Hidden Cup 5 competitor. And this position seemed to suit him very well. And why wouldn't it? Who doesn't want the free blacksmith upgrades and the cheap scouts that the Magyars get? But it also seemed to give him a taste for collecting crowns, because in 1410, he also became the King of Germany, moving quickly to seize the throne in the midst of a succession controversy, obviously also wanting that conversion resistance team bonus. Then, a decade or so later, in 1419, Sigismund also claimed the title of King of Bohemia, but this claim was far from universally accepted, thanks to Sigismund's history with the bloke I mentioned before, the preacher Jan Hus. Jan Hus was a bohemian religious reformer whose teachings brought about something of a proto-reformation, challenging the supremacy and the power of the Catholic Church and inspiring future generations of Protestants like Martin Luther. Now, Hus paid dearly for doing this. He was burnt at the stake as a heretic in 1415, and this happened after Sigismund had promised him safe conduct. So it wasn't so safe after all, it seems, and Sigismund made himself a lot of powerful enemies in the wake of Hus's death. When Sigismund claimed the Bohemian crown, all of these enemies, who were based in Bohemia just as Hus had been, they all came out of the woodwork to let Sigismund know just what they thought of him, and it wasn't anything good. This began the Hussite Wars. The followers of Hus and his teachings, led by those such as Jan Zizka, another character in Hidden Cup 5, they stood firm in their opposition to Sigismund. Now, Sigismund was able to secure the support of Pope Martin V uh, in fighting the Hussites, branded as they were as heretics by the papacy, and so a crusade was called, and loyal Catholics poured into Bohemia to take up the cause on behalf of Sigismund and the Pope. But despite Sigismund's best efforts, for a while there, Zizka and his Hussite wagons absolutely wiped the floor with him. You can only imagine what that did to poor old Sigismund's elo. I mean, we all know how hard it is to beat a Bohemian wagon rush. Thanks for that, Fosfru. Devs, please nerf. Uh, although... In reality, Zizka didn't really rush with his wagons. He didn't move them around much at all during the actual fighting. They were more like portable fortresses. But hey, let's not let history get in the way of a good Age of Empires tournament. In the end, as we know, the devs did nerf Hussite wagons. Zizka died, uh, the Hussites fell into infighting, and while they scored many great victories against Sigismund, in the end, Sigismund took advantage of the Hussites' disunity, compromised with some of them, and was therefore accepted as the Bohemian king. He continued to expand his territory and authority after the Hussite Wars, fighting a few more wars here and there for good measure. For instance, in the late 1420s, he went after the Turks, but uh, obviously didn't disrupt their gold eco enough because he didn't make much progress there. All the same, he was crowned as Holy Roman Emperor in 1433, a position that he enjoyed for all of three years, before finally dying in 1437. While he plays the role of a villain in Age of Empires II, Sigismund was a powerful, important, and quite effective monarch. And he'll have to be just as effective in trying to take down Hidden Cup V. He may have been crowned as King of Hungary and Croatia, King of Germany, King of Bohemia, and even as the Holy Roman Emperor. But the greatest triumph of all still eludes Sigismund even after all of these centuries. He has never been crowned as a Hidden Cup champion. Will that change as Hidden Cup 5 continues? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to History Cup 5. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the information there about our heroes that are about to fight off. Kazrao and Emperor Sigismund should be a fantastic showdown, even though we don't know who the players are. And with me, I have Slam. Slam, welcome back to Hidden Cup, my friend. Hello, T90. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. Um, dude, I got so many emotions going on right now. I'm nervous. I'm excited. The anticipation is just huge. So let's go. Awesome. Should be good.
Yeah, um, <clears throat> I mean, we don't know the matchup. Typically, I'd say, uh, Slam, what do you think about this matchup? So I can't jump into that, but I will ask you, has there been anything, any player, any style that's jumped out at you in the early days of Hidden Cup so far? Uh, I was going to say, I, I feel like this time around, it's just, I've been finding it way more tricky to find players. I don't know how you feel about this, but um, I feel like it was a bit easier um, in earlier hitting cups. Um, for example, like pushing deer is something that everybody does now, but you know, years <laughs> ago, maybe there was only a few players doing that. So it's like, Oh, he's yeah, pushing yeah. deer. I know who that is. So I think the game is just getting optimized. So it's just getting trickier. Don't have a favorite yet, but I think I'm going to go with one of the people I'm casting today. Ooh. Okay. So you're going ahead of the game. Wh which one then Kazrao or Emperor Sigismund? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Siggy just because I like saying Siggy. It kind of flows. So Okay, that's fair. I, I mean, that's that's one of the biggest reasons I root for anybody. Slim the Grim, I mean, come on. Slim the Grim sounded great. I know, and then, I know. And then he died off. So, uh, well, sorry to, we have sorry a terrible record so far for co-casters and their favorites. Um, Jean Bureau is a co-caster favorite. That did not work out. Uh, we did also have Gregory the Seventh be the favorite of Margugu and Dave. That did not work out. Ooh. So uh, apparently that means that Kazra is going to be the favorite here. But um, Slam, I wanted to oh, ask okay. you, and I, I gave Slam no prep for this question whatsoever. I literally just told him I, I'm just going to go with the flow. Um, because, you know, the history, I think, of this game is what got people into it, or at least their interest in history and, and some of these storylines. What's your like earliest Age of Empires 2 memory? Like what got you into the game? Uh so my dad bought the game for my brother and I and I think it was 1999. I might be wrong on that, but mm -hmm. I was so excited. He brought that home and the only RTS I'd played before that was Red Alert. So uh when I saw this game, I was just hooked immediately. Um, okay. And then bring in, bring in the online world. I was just, yeah. So I think I, I, I remember playing the first age of empires vaguely, but it wasn't until I started playing online where I think I started to have some pretty good memories. Well, were you playing a lot of black forest back then or did that, did that come no, later? Black, the black forest addiction came much later. So <laughs> black forest is like a, uh like a fine scotch or something you know when you're a rookie you know you have a sip and you're like that's disgusting but then later on i suppose it, it really yeah. gets you all right good to know well um we're gonna move into the draft here and already start to speculate a little bit on these players and the big thing to remind everyone of as i see one map staring at me and exciting me is that the way the map draft works here is from the top down so the very first thing these players do on the map draft is they get to pick. There's no ban before that. And Kazrael has gone for the new and improved High Tides. And then Emperor Sigismund, or Siggy, as Slam uh, described him, has gone for Evacuation, <laughs> which is the brand new map that had not been played at all publicly uh, before Hidden Cup. So we've got actually Evacuation, Cup, and Hidden Forts and Emperor Sigismund. So I'm already leaning more towards a player who maybe is a little bit more prepared. And then we have Kazra with High Tides, Arabia, and Bay, thinking maybe a bit more of a standard lands map player on the left. Uh, and then game one is Islands. We haven't had Islands all Hidden Cup 5 main event slam. I'm oh sure boy. you're so pumped to be casting yeah. some islands with me, aren't you? I, I can't wait. And, and you can see immediately Armenians is banned. So... Because I know they're pretty overpowered on that map. But you know what, mm, T90? Um, I am just so happy to see Hidden Forts again. Because there's a strategy I've, I've, I just kind of just, you know, brainstormed not too long ago. I'm just going to throw it out there when that map comes. And we'll let uh, you or chat criticize it or critique it. And let's, let's just, yeah, let's, I look forward to that. Ah, I'm excited. You know, I'm not sure if I should really lean into this, but... When, every time I cast Bay for years, people have called it pants. Okay. And we have an emote for it. So if that happens, uh, they're not, if people are saying pants, they're not talking about our pants, they're talking about the map. So Hidden Forts is a brand new map. Spent all this time on it, all this energy, tons of training games, different players. Real excited. And then people call it the Bat Map. 
because it kind of looks like the bat symbol. And now I'm seeing we have a bat emote, people. It's the T90 bat, which is now the Hidden Forts Ruiner. So <laughs> that's uh, real, real excited to have brought Hidden Cut back for you guys. Love it. Having a whole lot of fun here, chat. <laughs> <laughs> so T90, oh, actually man. speaking of civ civs here, um, the okay, it was the previous set and then one yesterday. Um, I did notice, uh, you know, Goths was consistently picked for evacuation for at least, oh, not consistently, but it was for two players. So I yeah. don't know if, have you been able to see any um, themes and civs? Because maybe some people practice together, like GL, for example. Um, I've seen that before where there's a constant civ that comes up. So I know a lot of, everybody chose Doubt for evacuation. Um, he was goths there and then someone was goths yep. yesterday so i don't know it's something something to keep an eye on eye out for is these civ picks and you know any um themes a hundred percent slam i'm so glad you brought it up because there have only been two players who have ever picked goth so far in evacuation and if you think of hidden cup three and hidden cup four every time we found doubt there was always like a tato elsewhere who was using a similar strategy <laughs> and and so, you know, think about it. And I'm just like, you know, how far does this go? Because the only time we've seen Goss is from two separate players. One of the players won. The other player got 4 owed against people who voted was Tato. You know, a person that people voted was Tato. So I'm really, like, curious on that. Uh, I want to remind people of the importance of the preparation and also how these games are broadcasted, okay? So in a typical tournament, you, you have your ideas, you have your strategies, you play your rounds, you then get to see the, the other people play the same map, you then make decisions based on what you see there, and then usually what happens is, oh shoot, that strategy is really good, I'm going to try that too, and then there is very quickly a meta that forms, okay? The entirety of the round of 16, which we have not finished yet, and the quarterfinals are played by players behind closed doors before a single game of Hidden Cup is broadcast, which means that this hidden aspect, this new surprise aspect, actually applies to both the first and second round. And Slam, we could have more of those things happen because people don't have to fear showing strategies too early. They can just simply use them because the strategies are basically hidden anyways. Yeah, I was, I was going to say too, what I like about the hidden aspect is the first round... I mean, people are probably players are going to be bringing out, you know, the, their best strats because they don't know are they are they going against Hera first round or someone that they're you know they're intimidated against. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just nice to see that already this first round, like you're going to probably see some of the better strats or best, uh, just because who yeah. wants to go out in the first round? Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, it's the first time anyone's seeing these games besides my admins who received them and compiled them, but. Yeah, I'm excited. Anyways, we're going to start it all off here on Islands. Let's see how it goes. I think even Islands play could tell us a bit about these players because most players have been banning Islands. But ladies and gents, here we are, and this is the uh, Rata 16 matchup between Khazral and Emperor Sigismund. This is Hidden Cup 5. I'm so excited to see Islands back again. And we've got uh, Emperor Sigismund playing as the Italians, the civilization which is so dominant on water so good on islands and then we've got kazra with the more unique approach here uh of the bengalis in the north uh, with me i have slam and slam if there's one thing i know about you is that you are an absolute expert on islands so uh <laughs> i can't <laughs> i can't tell away. if you're being sarcastic or not because there was a time <laughs> where i did I, like i did love islands i remember i used to play a lot against fire or like you know way back in the day but I don't okay. know. I don't know how I feel about it anymore. Um, you know, it's probably a map that I'm going to end up banning unless I know that my opponent hates it or, or, or sorry, okay. yeah, hates it more than I do. Um, in that case, I'll, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind having it. I, I just love how the first, you know, the map that hasn't been played, it's just the first game that, you know, I get to cast. Yeah, exactly. That's true. You haven't seen an Islands game this whole time. And so it does make you think... These can't be players that hate islands, right? So there might be some names that come to mind for people that hate it because this had to make its way all the way through three bands on either side. So clearly two players 
that are comfortable enough not to ban islands, but also don't love it enough to have picked it as a home map. Now that, as all the data I give people might tell you absolutely nothing, but <laughs> it's something to think about. And uh, that's kind of the big point of um, uh, of the, the this whole tournament. Um, Slam, Italians, cheaper dock techs, cheaper fishing ships, cheaper to go up to the next stage. All that makes so much sense. But the Bengalis on water, give me your thoughts. Well, they're just a bit more of a recent sieve, right? Like, I think Italians has been around for much longer. So um, mm -hmm. players, you know, even me, I'm much more familiar with Italians. Bengalis, though, I mean, we've been playing a lot on water as well. Um, I think they're getting pretty known now, too. They do have the, the you know, the ships that can heal, um, getting the extra vills, you know, every single age you're up is really nice. And because you're on an island, you know, you don't just securing that extra uh, vill count is really nice. Um, but yeah, I haven't personally played a whole lot of Bengalis on, on water. So there's still okay. a little bit of an unknown to me. Yeah. Well, that could, that could even speak to the players a little bit more as well. Players who are a bit more comfortable with it. I would say the, the big relevant bonuses for me would be the ship regeneration, which plays its role, especially in fire galley wars. Because usually you're, you're going into an attack and pulling back to repair. Here you have a combination of the, the regeneration and also the repairing. But then also you have the additional villagers you get. And on a normal map, like Arabia, let's say, uh, you're worried that because of the lack of land tech tree, that you might not be able to keep your villas alive. But on islands, it's just two free vills. And then if it goes to Castle Age, it's another two free vills, which I don't think many players are really going to hate, right? It's a bonus that you don't really have to work too hard to take advantage of. So I, I like Bengalis a lot. I do think, though, Italians should have the edge in the long run just because of how cheap their dock techs are. Yeah, and, and normally in islands, I, I I guess we'll probably see galleys, right? Because fire, well, it depends on the sieve too, right? Like, I know in the past, Italians would maybe sometimes put their, you know, docks further back because maybe they want to do um, a, a faster up or go for a fire ship build of some sort. But I mean, I, I think galleys is probably the way to go. Um, but yeah, let's let's see what happens. So I don't have uh, exact stats here on this slam, but... I'm going to I'm going to say I'm pretty close with what I remember here. And I want to say galley opening had it happened about 35% of the time. Fire galley opening had it been about 35% of the time, and then the rest was transport and landing. It honestly was that close oh. uh throughout oh. the qualifier at least. But um there were some people with very strong opinions on this map uh not just from the players but also on like the subreddit or forums or whatever before a single game was played you know how it is like oh this is gonna be fatoria fest well you know which we've only seen once and i'm not salty <laughs> anyways um the point is it's like people have different views on how maps could be played and i think it's possible that the top 16 may look at all that stuff from the qualifiers and say yeah that worked for them but we're in a different league right Mm -hmm. so yeah. um so i guess we'll find out right now what these guys think and the initial thought from most of the high level players was precisely what you said and uh two dock galleys was what a lot of people were thinking yeah it's usually when there's more distance between you know you and the enemy that's obviously where galleys is going to be more beneficial because it's mm -hmm. it's that that early approach from fire ships which is really deadly but as soon as you get that galley mass maybe six galleys or so you can you can really start just to destroy fire ships so yeah, yeah. a lot of it has to do with the distance um when it comes to your opening on any sort of water map i could explain as well why sigismund wanted to dock off to the side here now you don't know exactly where your opponent is but this is clearly on the longer side of the island so i think sigismund wanted a bit more space the galleys and um and in the rare occurrence where we had the galleys versus the fires the galleys were almost always able to overtake um i there's a small thing here i, I want to get out in front of though i found that once you get to like six galleys against fire and feudal slam you're, you're going to be able to micro down those ships and then it becomes about taking down those docks so some players will actually shift back into fires 
after the initial galley opening, but I'm getting getting a bit ahead of myself. Yeah, and you know, after everything I just said here, I see you know a fire ship coming out. But I mean, sometimes maybe players are open with a the fire then into, into, into galleys. Um, I think blue has galleys queued up now. Um, one thing, uh, just uh, off the side topic here with this map, um, compared to the islands I've played back in the day, is I've um, I've noticed there's two relics on on each of these mini islands, which is really cool to see. Um, so it just makes going for those islands uh, much more of a play. Yeah, it was really the wood stalemates, the running out of resources, which does happen on islands. And we didn't shy away from with this version. We had the option of adding tree, like more trees, but I felt it would just delay the inevitable. <laughs> so yeah. um, the relics there have made a big difference. Uh, again, another stat, which is not a stat that I'm just pulling from my my brain, but I think uh, that usually the players who have those relics are the players winning the game. That's a lot of gold income you can have. Yeah, it, it's crazy to think back in the day we'd have these these maps where the, the wood distribution would be completely unbalanced, right? So uh, yeah, yeah, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, it's now balanced, but I, I, I can't believe there was a time where it's like, you know, that map starts. It's like, okay, well, let's roll the dice. Let's hope I got a lot of wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is it's completely balanced, uh, pretty much to the tree, though obviously we're not going to spend time counting that here. Uh, I think it's 80k starting wood on the entire map, and uh, obviously there's a little bit on those islands. But man, I'm noticing a trend here, and the trend I'm noticing is that both of these players are playing so differently than the qualifying players with how much they make on water. They feel like they need navy but they are super relaxed with the attacks and they just want to rush to castle mm -hmm. age here. And this is, this is something I normally associate with like someone like Viper, for example, always did this on Island, just a defensive opening into castle age against the aggressors, but they're both kind of playing a similar style here. Yeah. And it's almost mirrored. They have both started with two docks and normally I would think you'd add that third one i think there is yeah. a third one being added for red but the third one is not even it's either being added super slow or not at all like for instance from yeah. in blue's case um so I, I i i don't have an explanation for this but you know they're the ones in this tournament so they've probably practiced it and they know something a little bit more than i do yeah i guess the logic is in castle age the ships do so much more so let's make sure we get there as quickly as possible and I don't think Kozrao's timing is bad by any means, but this time from Sigismund is incredible, and he's going to be making fires. He will upgrade those fires, and it's mainly galleys for Kozrao. So I would say Kozrao's going to struggle on water here unless he can somehow get a transport across. I see him making a transport ship right now. He could be thinking about sending some villagers across to the mainland of the opponent's islands. And making it messy. There we go. Oh, I boy. love it. This is, I don't, for my boy Siggy, like I hope he catches this. Um, he's doing great so far. I hope he pulls through. But yeah, I hope he catches that. Yeah, you really invested into rooting for Sigismund here? I, I doubled down. I have everything on this guy now. Okay, okay, good to know. Yeah, I, I still haven't gotten over my heartbreak of Salim the Grim going down. Man, look at Sigismund. <laughs> Dude, did you tell him? Oh, oh, he just I, missed I it. I mean, if I could, I would. No, I wouldn't. But I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, man. But he might see the blue scout coming in. How is he not seeing anything here? I mean, kazra has oh, been man. really sneaky. The scout's on patrol. The barracks is going to go up most likely. And kazra yeah. might have some problems on water right now. But this is now how kazra shakes things up for us here. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when you start pushing a player and they're not looking, you know, they're not paying as much attention to their water or it's looking a little fragile. Some, you know, these players can get that suspicion that something else could be going on. In this case, yeah, though, true. I mean, blue, blue is, I don't, like, how can you be, like, look at Red Scout. It's just an yeah. inch away, so. Yeah, and, and Kazra is showing some fight on water, which might make it difficult for Sigismund to notice. But the early fires have done a lot of damage there. The scout did see the monastery, and Ember Sigismund Ooh. realizes now the opponent is on my island, and it's a seed workshop, a barracks, and also a uh, monastery. So this is like 
normally i'd ask my co-caster uh slam uh break down for me what you're doing in these situations this is just chaos at this point right there's no like build order yeah. or anything that gets you out of these situations yeah, this is super tricky. It, it's it's so annoying to try and keep your attention on water, especially when the enemy's running around with their boats and their boats boats are not dead yet. So you got to keep mm -hmm. focusing on land. You're going to lose your fish. Not only that, when I'm up against Ben Galleys, their monks already scare me enough. So if I see two monasteries like this, yeah, it's a bit of a panic mode. Yeah, I, I, I understand that one. And what it does is it allows your focus at home on your eco so in theory like you can't make any economic mistakes right now if you're Cosrail. You, you're done on fish uh you're just adding vills but it's very easy if sigismund uh you know farms in the wrong area has villagers in the wrong area it's very easy for him yeah. to to make big mistakes look at Cosrail kill the fishing ships here i, I really like that yeah, yeah. stinky uh, stuff back in back in the day I, I feel like players would just patrol their boats and fight and then they would land and then they would just get rid of their 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 you know ever all their army on water obviously the times mm -hmm. have changed and players have gotten a lot more clever and if they're going to lose water they don't completely lose it they just run their boat somewhere else and then it really messes up the opponent because they're just running all over the map and the other opponent doesn't know if they should invest more or not yeah it does feel like a a sigismund should be able to eventually deal with those war galleys but the war galleys got really nice kills and you're going to have an interesting situation here. Khosrow added some spears in the, in case there could be scouts or light cap. Mm -hmm. But he does not know the light cap are out there. And as he pulls the ships away, th this is where a demo could land. Interesting choice there from Sigismund. I know a player who's known for his demos, who the community voted as yeah, um, Gajamata yesterday. But I got to say, I mean, it's a close game right now. The defense from Sigismund has been pretty good so far. Gets the kill Never. there. Has like have waiting behind to swoop in. Yeah, if you're up against Bengali's monks, if you have the food or, you know, the extra resources, I think getting foraging is, is really important because these monks are so tanky. Um, so foraging will really help out your light cavalry to pick them off very quickly. Oh man, the micro here from both with the siege is incredible. There go the light cap. Now the monks need to be ready on both sides, need to be careful. That that we might end up seeing light cap get converted here, or or maybe the light cap will just get killed oh, and Kazrael ends up converting the light cap. He loses some monks. And I don't really know who ended up in the better position here. I, I'm gonna lean towards Kazrael, but he did lose a couple monks in the process. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, something that's hidden behind all of this, because, you know, we obviously want to look at the, the place where the action is at, is how well can you maintain this aggression while booming at home? That can actually be the yep. difference. So Blue blue may lose this eventually, but if he's been keeping his multitasking on point and his equal pulls ahead, that sets him up for the future. And so what if this landing dies? He's going to destroy later if he kept everything efficient, which is really hard to do in this situation. Yeah, and I think I think it. This is why we saw so much landing here. Big attack ground there from Cosrail. Really nice attack ground. Actually, like have oh, would have considered it, but yeah, same. I I know we haven't seen a lot of islands, but that is exactly what people have realized. I think in twenty twenty four islands is it, against good micro players. You just need to make it messy, and it's a micro and boom scenario. Then at that point, which is what a lot of other maps become. In all honesty, yeah, landings are just so annoying to me that even like if they just landed and placed buildings down and made no units, it would still annoy me and slow me down somehow <laughs> because there's so there's something about the build like you kill the army, but then these buildings just sit there for the next ten minutes and you got to slowly kill them off and the siege workshop never dies. He pops out another mangonel and it's just a nuisance. So, ugh, yeah important to to put a stop to it then and that's what sigismund's trying to do this has been an extremely even game a lot of players would have lost more against the siege monk push especially when he did notice it a little bit late and we see a castle there for sigismund but not at a good time Ooh. and oh, oh my goodness he almost lost the the foundation i mean he could still lose all of his villagers here yeah, this is this is looking really good for Blue right now. His vill count is sort of taking off a little bit. He still has those galleys floating around the water too. I, I don't know how he's managed to land and still have mm -hmm. 
you know, color on the water here. Yeah, this castle will shoot down most of the buildings, which is a, a big thing. I mean, assuming it completes. But this is now where I would assume that the thinking for Cosrel. Well, right now, he's happy to, to do whatever he can here. But in general, his approach is, whether I deny this castle or not, I'm going to win this game on water in the Imperial Age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do these monks have redemption on them? Um... I actually don't think they do. He got atonement super early. So he could convert the enemy monks, but yeah. I, I don't actually think he's ever gotten redemption, which is interesting. Yeah. Oh man, if you you gotta get your apparently you get your they, I'm being told they both do. Oh, they do. Yeah. Oh, both of them do. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we're we're very observant, ca very observant casters here. Uh, for us both to miss <laughs> that, but uh, it's all good. The castle goes up for Emperor Sigismund. He's now at 59 eco. It is 80 eco for Cosrel. Oh man, that is that is quite that's a chunk of ills being ahead there too. And if you think about Bengalis too, they're gonna hit Imp, they're gonna get another boost in villagers. I think the transition's gonna be pretty good for blue going into Imperial Age. This is not this is the perfect Bengali game here on water. You get to go for literal Bengalis on water, then you have the monks, then you have the eco like Every bonus that could have been taken advantage of here with the Bengalis has has been taken advantage of. I'm very impressed by Cosrel. It seems like like sometimes slam when people land in Castle Age, they uh, do so because they they started to lose on water. To me, mm -hmm. this almost seems like this was part of his plan the entire time. Yeah, definitely, especially with just a, a two dock opening as well, not fully committing to water. Although red did two docks as well um maybe yeah. players are just really you know anticipating more land so they're just being extra cautious not to invest you know too much into water yeah that landing might not have really denied many resources at this point but it did open up the opportunity for Cosrail. Cosrail collected twenty two thousand more resources and now would be the time to start to fight back on water is you want to make sure you control those neutral islands, start to bring in those relics, and then prep for the late game. Yeah, I, I like what look look at blue just slowly just adding the next dock. He, you know, he's keep and his castle placement is perfect for that island too. There's a little, you know, pointy spot there. I think that's just excellent. <laughs> and he's up on yeah. he's up to the next age. So that, that's true. That was made cruising. for a castle. <laughs> <laughs> Did you happen to see the game in the uh, qualifier? Valis built a castle on the pointy spot, as you still call it. Um, and a demo was there, and it took out the foundation. Oh, I, I, who was he against? I think I did see that. Um, I think it might have been Sobek? Because I think... So yeah, Sobek no. was doing pretty good that game, too. Yeah. Actually, I think it was the round before. Sobek did beat Valis in the decider, but... Oh boy, we got villagers headed to yeah, they... a neutral island here to drop a castle yeah. for Emperor Sigismund. Oh boy. So looking at this map, it doesn't can Trebs reach some spots on the middle islands? I don't know if they can. Sometimes. Or not. It might be Sometimes. Too... Yeah. Sometimes. So in this case, you could like treb that dock, for example. Um, but the castle, you can't treb the castles. But sometimes I've seen players build castles too close to the shoreline. And then it could be range. So you do have to be aware of that. Because I, I don't think you want your castle to be trebable by the opponent's castle. Or by the opponent's yeah. traps, rather. I'm curious if Blue saw this castle going. I think those boats were close enough. Um, but if he did see Red putting that castle up, it kind of sets him in the you know the direction as to where the fight's going to happen. And yeah. yeah, so that's that's good. So maybe he'll get out some early cannon galleons. Although Emperor that might, Sigismund might, wasting might, yeah. no time here. Look at that. He actually oh. leaves the relics on the shoreline and says, I have to go get those other ones fast. I'll come back for you later. Wow. Let's go, Siggy. Let's go. Come on. Get those relics. I, I'm getting, um, I'm definitely getting uh, some vibes from, from Sigismund here of a, of a qualifier player. Um, remember, <gasps> Islands was in the qualifying map pool. Oh, God. There go the monks. I think oh, the monks no. need to turn around and go home. Go get the relics. <laughs> Are, are tra just a little bit of trivia here, which I don't know the answer to. Are transport ships? What are the fast? What's the fastest boat on on the water? Because that transport ship got out of there. 
fastest boat maybe a berber ship would have to be the fastest oh okay uh, that <laughs> because of the, is that cheating <laughs> no that's great maybe. i put you on the spot and that was oh yeah, go 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 get it get it get it get it get it get it run run away oh no oh does this have one, oh, one relic Slam, it was a very relevant question. Is a transport ship faster than a fire? And it is even faster than a fast <laughs> fire. Thing. There he goes. Thank goodness. He's yoinking though. the relic. No misclicks allowed. Boom. Wow. What a. I mean, that could be so important here to have three yeah. of the relics that were in the middle. So that will be four relics versus two, if I'm getting that correctly. There's six total. Uh, it, was, should, it should be five actually because oh, there's the, uh, the two relics on your island now the three relics in the middle and then it would be uh, i guess it'd be five versus three in this case now the thing we missed for emperor sigismund still way behind in oh, villagers no. and still doesn't have a lot of ship techs but is getting ship right now which is a yeah. big tech for the long term on islands yeah and that upgrade is cheaper as well is it not or is it just the galley upgrades it is cheaper. Yeah, which is, I think, the big reason why Italians are dominating on water. You have to have an eco lead to be able to get it as well. And there you have Kozral getting ship right. So he had to pay full price for it, which I think is 1,000 food and 300 gold. A bit awkward on a map where you don't normally need a lot of food. But uh, yeah. Slam, question for you, just in a very specific thing. At this point of an islands game, are you canceling auto farm? Are you removing that from your mill? Uh, absolutely. I remember playing um, a 2v2 with Doubt years ago, um, and he kept complaining that he had no wood to build boats. And then, like five minutes later, he's like, "Oh, I have auto auto reseed on or whatever." And then since that <laughs> day, it's it's been cemented into me. I'm like, "Yeah, let's make sure I never touch that button." Um, yeah, I mean, a yeah. lot of players have auto reseed farm as as default uh, at the start of a game. Um, more pros do, I think, now than they did in the past. I know a player like you, Slam, you probably don't have it on until you turn it on later on. Is that correct? That is correct. I, I actually did not know that was a thing to have it on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wait, it's as, like, as if yeah, a feature I'm, I'm in shock. or you didn't know other people did it? I, a feature and the other people did it. It's like... Okay, got it. I don't know. Like I'm in shock. That's like... I don't know. I, I figured out recently too that um, the whole pineapple on pizza. Th th uh, I, no, you know what? I'm not going to bring that up right now because. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's probably yeah, probably yeah. not an important time to get to that divisive of a topic when we've got yeah, fires okay. coming in on the right side and the galleons are going to get completely surrounded. Emperor oh. Sigismund with an amazing engagement out of nowhere. It's like they just got squished in there. That was so nice to watch. Um, I'm actually surprised at how well Red is playing. Maybe that Italian's bonus, you know, cheaper up and cheaper upgrades um, made up the difference for that, the, the build difference. But mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. I still, not even just by looking at score, it just still feels like Blue's in a good spot. Um, but if Red can hold off um, with that relic, uh, you know, the extra relics, it could look better and better for him. Uh, notice the amount on food for Emperor Sigismund right now. One one on food he says i will only make ships i will not have anything on farms <laughs> i i think we really honestly when we find a moment here uh we need to make sure that we go to the mill of Kozral and see if he has auto farm on i actually think with 35 still on food that he may have auto farm on which might be something we discuss a big fight happening here though fires in front of galleons is what you want both players are doing this we have guilds now from Kozral, so maybe it's calculated to bank up the food to get more gold in return when you sell it with guilds. But mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, Slam. It, I've been really impressed with how Emperor Sigismund has played this from the the vill deficit that he found himself in. Yeah. And I'm just double checking here. You know, I, I do remember watching the game with Sobek. I think he was missing chemistry for the longest time. But oh. it does. What's that? Uh, sorry, Auto Farm was on. Auto Farm was on. That's why I made that noise. Oh, it was. Okay. Uh, that's a lot of wood. That, for for Kozrao, that's a lot of wood that you're spending on things other than ships at this point. 
Oh man, look at the the micro from blue. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good. I think red needs to pay attention to that because that can definitely, you know, swing some battles uh, one way for someone if there's a lot of projectiles mm -hmm. missing. And elite cannon galleon, elite cannon galleon on the right side. Now this we we spoke of the old days. And this is not something we saw in the past. Cannon Galleons have received multiple buffs over the last few years. And so we've got, we've seen so many different things here. I think at this point, Slam, the fact that the ships are slowly regenerating for that big group of Galleons for the yeah. Bengalis is a really nice bonus to have. I almost forgot about it. Yeah, it's massive. It's just like having a, a you know, a little portable monk somewhere in the army just healing everyone at once. Oh, please don't say that. Please don't say that. The next DLC is going to have like a ship monk or something. And then <laughs> arena players are suddenly going to be spamming ship monks. We don't want that. Please that no, kind of cool, though. No. Like, like a healing. No, it like wouldn't. No. Boat. And That's then pathing's going to be screwed up for three years. No, no, it wouldn't be. Okay, maybe it All would right. be. All Thank right. you, Microsoft, for sponsoring Hidden Cup 5. Uh, you know, we got the, the ships continuing on here and the numbers are 30 to 30, but... Actually, Emperor Sigismund coming in with more on the right-hand side, and Sigismund is taking the better of the engagements, has far more galleons, and has the five relics behind this. Yeah, and as we, we mentioned earlier with the relics, if he's winning here and the game continues, this is just going to look better and better. Although, I was going to say, wood could be a worry, uh, but... You know, they each have their own island, which is yeah. seems, you know, quite divided, which is nice for uh, Siggy as well. Yeah, this is going to come down to not the amount of wood accessible, because it's pretty much the same, but it's the amount of wood that the players have to spend. Uh, it's, what's also kind of funny is there's less workers on wood for Khosrow, and Sigismund has 70 on wood, so Sigismund might actually finish his island's wood faster. But I think in theory, in terms of the wood that gets banked up, this should be way better for Sigismund because the opponent is investing into reseeding farms right now. Oh, man. You know, I have a, a terrible habit. It, it must be from all the Black Forest games I've been playing. But when my when the wood just stacks up, I just I just I'm so tempted to go to the market and just start selling it just to get gold. And I've done that on islands by accident before. And you know, it goes yeah. late game, and I'm scratching my head, going, "Well, where did this is unfair? Where did all the?" And then I remember, okay, I sold everything I had. Yeah, it's a fair point. I mean, maybe we could see if you have excess food, sell that off. You don't need that. Get the gold, then buy the wood. You could you could see that market back and forth happen. But you know, yeah. this fight is just continuous. Kozrow continues to try and get fires in front here. And it is, looks like it's helping at times, but I've been so impressed with the patience of Sigismund. Has his own cannon galleons now waiting to go for the castle. And what a back and forth naval battle this is. Yeah, this is just, uh, I'm just constantly looking at the army numbers. It just looks like red is continuously fighting with a little bit more. Uh, in, there's been some games where I've played where I keep getting trapped into a fight where they have 10 more boats and I just have to, I have to, you know, the, the player needs to back off a bit and get that stat going instead of constantly fighting against larger numbers. But it can be, it can be sort of a trap. You can mental trap you fall into. So Kozrow turned off auto farm, also bought some wood. So I don't know which happened first, but I'm pretty sure that Blue realized, okay, it's it's that stage of the game. We need to make sure that that we have wood here. Now that should be as dead even as it gets. In fact, I think it might be down to the tree because of how the maps are scripted. So what's available should be mm -hmm. similar. Crazy fights and all of a sudden Khosra has more galleons. And as he tries to use the cannon galleons against the castle, he has to back away. And this is just, this is a special game right now, man. <laughs> this is amazing yeah. what we're witnessing. So. From the start of the match, when you saw these two sieves, did you have any sort of feeling as to maybe if one was better than the other? Because, I mean, I'm not used to Italians versus Bengalis. I, I'm sure it's been played often, but I, I really don't know what, what's the, the better sieve overall. I would think Bengalis because of the ship healing. Um, what are your My thoughts? thinking was Bengalis are a brilliant pick because Italians are so obviously high pick for a lot of people. And Bengalis, you might be able to get away with a later pick in the rounds of the draft. Um, and I also felt like Bengalis would be good with the landing. So I think this has kind of worked out mm -hmm. according to whatever game plan you could have. 
But I'm, I'm still very curious. I mean, that wood count is insane right now for Sigismund. But he just doesn't have the gold, actually, to make ships. I mean, in theory, he should be able to, I suppose. Because he has more gold income, but... And maybe, it, maybe being able to sell that food with guilds for Khosrow is actually clutch here. Maybe it was a good idea he farmed. Yeah, maybe the auto farm, you know, in the long run, just this domino effect into food, into gold. Did these mini islands, did they have gold on them initially? I, I can't yes. recall. Yeah, gold and okay. a bit of stone. And looks like we're going to see a castle in a moment for Khosrow. And he's going to drop it on that neutral island. Oh, no, he's going to drop a lumber camp. Honestly, really smart strategy. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he's, he's trying his best to take out the navy as well from Sigismund. And Sigismund is losing his navy. The the galleon mass for the Megalis is insane. And if you look at the HP, obviously it's still going down for Khosrow here. But when there's not an engagement happening, it's going to be climbing upwards because of the regeneration. It's a beautiful play yeah. from Khosrow on the back of the landing. And it might be near killing off Sigismund to start off the game. Sigismund's down to 20 galleons. Yeah, and, it, you know, Blue getting out those early cannon galleons, which is really nice because as the galleys are fighting in front, they can, you know, work away on castles. For example, uh, mm -hmm. Siggy's castle that's already gone. I don't even remember when that uh, vanished, but, uh, yeah, Khosrow is doing an excellent job. Yeah, villagers are just kind of dealing with this themselves. There's the ship battle, and then the villagers are boxing each other there. But, I mean, the docks are so needed and cost wood. Um, the relics are in a monastery, which is likely somewhere near the shoreline. Uh, and the cannon galleons could take them. I mean, the oh, eco yeah. count for blue has actually gone way down. I think he might have deleted a bunch of villagers. There might be a uh, a bunch of dead vills on the island of Khosrow. It's uh, somewhere. If you wanted to... Yes, it's a, it's a slaughter. Oh, God. The villagers have just been killed <laughs> off. He doesn't want oh. them anymore. There's no use for them anymore. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, Somehow geez. around their final tree that they chopped as well. But it's while the, the plague has hit both though. of these two, it is still about the water where Khosrow has, has doubled the Navy Slam. Oh, man. I, I just hope uh, at some point someone sneaks in a little trade cog at some point in one of these <laughs> games. <laughs> You know what's interesting is I'm looking at the res remaining and the relic situation. I honestly think if Sigismund took some better fights over the last five minutes and was a bit more patient, he could eventually get up to 80 or 90 himself. He's still got wood. Yeah. And he still has those relics. But the problem is Khosrow's slowly chipping away at him now, taking out the docks, which is a costly thing to lose. And yeah, uh, we are officially, uh, we have 2,000 wood left on the map. And I think the 2,000 wood left on the map is uh, on these island, the neutral islands somewhere. I'm just trying to put myself in uh, Siggy's position and or anyone who's up against Ben Galleys. It's like when you're done a fight and you vote backed off, just knowing that. Yeah. The votes are, like, I know, I know, I know we we've touched on this a few times, but just trying to get behind the emotion, it's like. Oh man, like all his, like I need to fight again because all of his boats are just yeah. being healed up constantly. Yeah, it might make you stay in a fight longer if you think they've got weaker ships and and take a poor engagement. But yeah, I agree with you. It's just like if this becomes a waiting game, not a bad deal for the Bengalis at all here. Big fight happening though. Some of the ships for Khosrow aren't fighting the main group, but it, it still doesn't seem to really matter. There's still so many galleons stacked. Yeah. Look at them when they spread out. It's like you can kind of do that if you want to trick your opponent to stack them mm -hmm. and then you and can just... go uh, spread spread formation and then suddenly the whole screen is covered with the sails and <laughs> the opponent's terrified and the army count yeah it is there's the difference is just getting bigger and and bigger and, and bigger. look at that stat at the end there right 240 galleons created from Khosrow 276 created from Emperor Sigismund, and Sigismund also created 64 fires, but it was just the consistent engagements from Khosrow, which of course, all the momentum that he got was set up from the landing at the start. A beautiful way for Khosrow to start it off. It wouldn't even surprise me here, Slam, as we see the KD, no. but then the eco, to see that the res collected might be a bit higher. Won't be food, but like wood, more for Sigismund. Gold, more for Sigismund. It was just the fights from those Bengali galleons. Yeah, 
And just looking at this game and islands in general, um, it's really like just this first game, I'll just say, like, I don't have a clue who these players could be. Just like, mm-hmm. I mean, going off one game is already hard to say, but off of islands, I feel like it's even tougher. I, I don't know, because I feel like, um, you know, there's just, it, it can, the meta is played uh, so often with landing and it's harder to see something stick out. Uh, yeah. Whereas on land maps, maybe some more things can stick out. Well, this is the dream scenario for Cosrail. Look at the way this draft has panned out, right? We had Italians pick number one for Sigismund. Loss. Bengalis pick the, the final pick on the oh. draft for Cosrail. Win. That is huge. And that is pr- that that is already yeah. feeling like one or two wins for Cosrail, who has other maps that don't focus on water at all. He's got high tides, Arabia and Bay. You said... You know, maybe there's not a player that comes to mind, and I agree. But in terms of the draft priority, yeah, I actually think yeah, a good... player like Hera would love to go late pick for Islands with a sieve like Bengalis and then have High Tides, oh, Arabia, no. and Bay for home maps. I could definitely see Hera there with that draft. Yeah. Is Hera much of a lander? Does does he land often? Uh, that's a good point. Uh, I, I think uh, yeah. I, I think he probably wouldn't do that aspect. Yeah, that that's a very good point. But a Sebastian, yeah. a qualifier player who mm-hmm. who likes aggression, I could see doing landing. Maybe a Mihai. Also, those players would be good on high tides, Arabia and Bay. We'll have to see more. But definitely an interesting thought. Yeah, but yeah, going on what, what you mentioned about the first pick and last pick, like that, that in itself is definitely a mental booster um for Cosrail. Um it, it, Bengali's was the last pick. Am I seeing that correctly? Yes. Or no? It was. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes with yeah, with uh, on there. Um I wasn't sure if it was Gajar's or not. Um, Although it the draft been, It might actually be I might need clarification from production on that. It could actually have been should go Japanese outwards. And then it might go Bengali's is more like a mid pick. It might be like your oh, last pick. pick or something. Yeah, Gerjar is his last pick. Um, so oh, okay. my apologies there, but like, still, it's is a big priority still. difference between that number one pick yeah. and the mid pick. Yeah, exactly. It's a p- partial mental boost, you know. So yeah, I, I'd take it. Okay, cool. Well, let's hop into game number two. I mean, Sigismund's got some crazy maps here. Evacuation, brand new. Hidden Forts, brand new. Cup, a map only played for hidden cups in the past, and. He's going to go for evacuation. Now, as a reminder here, because we've seen a lot of sets, and everyone who's watched Hidden Cup has watched every single set and heard every word I said and really enjoyed it, I hope, maybe, sort of. So um, this game here was played without the knowledge of the other evacuation games. Slam, right? All these rounds were mm-hmm. played behind closed doors. They were finished before coverage. So Sigismund or Cosrail couldn't see what other people did on this map. They can't get a feel for what other people did unless, of course, they trained with them. And we've got Celts for Sigismund. We never see Celts in competitive AW2 yeah. against the Japanese for Cosrail. So wh- what are you thinking right off the bat with his pick from Siggy <laughs> to go for Celts? I, I'm just as surprised as you are. Celts is just something you never see in a draft anymore. Um I don't know if I'm recalling correctly, but I feel like Yo has used Celts a while back, and mm-hmm. in some uh, I might be a little off on that, but um, uh, we're gonna have to see more of these games to see if there's any you know hints that it could be Yo. But it, yeah, Celts is unusual, um, but it could work really well here. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Cosrail's looking for this boar. We've seen two players go out with the scout, look for the boar. And bring it in with their scout. It doesn't seem like Cosrail is doing that. He's just going for the pigs. What about Sigismund? Sigismund looking. Sees a boar. This is part of the strat. This might be the time. And Sigismund just looking for the cow. And is going to get the cow. But Slam, I I got a fun fact for you. And I got a fun fact for viewers. This is going to blow people's minds. Well, some people. Okay? So, buildings on cracked terrain take a lot more damage and the entire evacuation area the the that area there is cracked terrain now the saying with celts is celt eat tc because celt siege kills tcs you know huang you played him a hundred times and had nightmares about him Uh, he's the guy who does that very well um if this is cracked terrain 
the buildings go down a lot faster. So I'm just saying, if whoever Sigismund is, if he wants to go for a Huang, if he wants to go for a siege push, it could work really well on this map. Uh, yeah, I just, it's already, it's giving me some anxiety just thinking about it already. <laughs> I, 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 I've had enough games against Celts with Huang. If, if a player wants to mimic something like that, though, I would love to watch it. I always love watching it. I don't like playing against it, but watching it is is always super fun. So uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping there's something juicy that's going to happen here. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the same boat, dude. I mean, I I love to watch it, but do you think I want to play against Wong? Absolutely not. Uh, it's it's just like you know when you beat someone like Wong, it doesn't feel like you won. It just feels like you you got through it. You know, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it costs an arm and a leg every time. You know, there's a part of your soul that kind of leaves each time. Um, I, as for the crack terrain, yeah, that's something that's really good to note. I, I've learned the hard way with the crack terrain before. I've walled over it before, and someone's coming with man at arms, and I look away, I look back, and the palisades yep. are already destroyed. And I and I didn't know crack terrain did that for a while, so I was yep. just like, man, like man at arms are really strong these days. I should start going more <laughs> often. And then it wasn't until like weeks later where I'm like, oh, okay, okay, all right, that's yep. why. Well, I think it is definitely something Kozrael is going to have to think about. Now, there's a map element that, that Kozrael really paid attention to. If you look at his scouting, Kozrael actually brought in a lot of the extra cows. So they are spread randomly throughout the, the mainland, I always call. Um, and he really went crazy for that. So he didn't go for the boars. He may eventually move out to take out our resources. But he's got like a thousand food coming to his TC now. Uh, that he mm -hmm. actually hold on he's veering off he's veering off because the enemy scout is near <laughs> but he, oh, he will boy. hopefully get yeah. these things home <laughs> that is so many cows did someone go gajars on this map or am i thinking of another map i must no no one went man, gajars there, on this map oh okay okay oh don't um, tell yeah, me he's gonna find the cows with celts oh okay all right, here we go. He finds the cows, and he's like, thank you very much. Thanks for doing all the hard work for me, and these cows just follow yeah. orders. And now Sigismund's going to be able to get all that food home. Those are harder to get back against Celts, are they not? Like, is, isn't that one of the bonuses of Celts? Um, yes, it is. It is, of, yeah. but I do not know if it plays, like, much of a role here. Uh, <laughs> you still see him changing, and now you've got cows changing again, and now the cows are very confused. And we'll see. I mean, at what point does Kazra just give up on two of them when you have six? I don't know. Because you got to scout the rest of the map, too. Yeah. So this map's a little bit new to me because it is a, a new map. Uh, what are you um, normally seeing? Like, are, are players... So I see both players are building fish and then getting over to the next place. Looks like there's a lot more resources over there, right? Even wood. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm guessing TCs and everything is slowly evacuated over to the left yep and is that what you've seen in the previous games yeah absolutely um you know we've seen some some interesting things with the goths like sending villagers forward to make it messy but um mm -hmm. i also had watched and played i want to say like maybe two dozen three dozen games on this and that most competitive players are going to go like man and arm opening or archer opening in combination with water and as kazra gets his cows back home uh you can see he's actually going double archer range through the middle oh, and wow, he's yeah. also going for a fire galley so this is a lot of investment yeah i can see how japanese is a pretty decent sieve here too you got your cheaper lumber camps mining camps quicker fish um just seems like a solid <laughs> here. dude if this if this blue player can't quick wall we're gonna find out real quick because those <laughs> men at arms are so fast man yeah oh yeah. oh geez that was close for blue. I, it was... Yeah. I think Celts on this with the same with the similar logic to maybe what we had just said about the Bengalis on islands. I, I know it's super early. I don't hate Celts as a pick on this. There's five bands per player. It is the potential to do some damage if you want to be really aggressive? But so far, Kozrao is just like so uh, calmly dealt with this and it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like emperor sigismund really has a follow-up to these men-at-arms yeah 
do you, do you think there's some still underestimated sieves out there that are could be like you know game you know you know like people don't use as often but they would be super mm -hmm. strong like for example i think i think burmese is one that isn't used as off as often but yes. could be very strong if you think about the wood upgrades it's 150 extra resources once you get fetal because of the wood and then yeah what is it 150 250 it's like ethiopians all maybe even stronger you just don't get the the archer you know um faster mm -hmm. fire rate um but yeah so do you think there's like for example celts what, what are your thoughts for some hidden sieves i i think the dream scenario for anyone in a tournament series especially a best of seven where you know you're gonna have a lot of picks is you break an opponent top pick with a low pick another quick call here from Cosrail. a gate yeah, now I'm, from Cosrail. <laughs> I'm getting deja vu here. It wasn't, didn't this just happen with the Palisade? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He went full like the, circle. <laughs> I, I know. I, I thought we, I thought we rewinded. I was a bit worried for a second. Okay. We've got very impressive quick walling from Kazra. I'm also noticing it's no pre walling. Waiting to the last minute. Happy to do that. There's oh, yeah. not many players who would do that. Now, now we have an archer getting yeah. attacked and pushed back by the man at arms. But the reason for this slam is because kazra has got this ranged army. And Sigismund does not have much of a ranged army as well because he's gone for a lot of fire galleys. And yeah. <laughs> I am very concerned for Sigismund because this ranged army is headed somewhere very important right now. Oh, and it yeah. is headed towards the villagers where There's we tower, already though. have a tower. What a great play from Sigismund. Great but move, you got a yeah. wall in front of it. You got a wall in front of it. You got to notice. Oh, God. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all, Slam. Yeah. I, I, li I like what you mentioned about like late walling because I know Hera does that, doesn't he? Like when I wa have watched his stream before and there's army moving in, I I'm stressing out because I'm going, why isn't Hera walling? Why isn't he walling? But yeah. he just walls yeah. literally the last millisecond and he does it very flawlessly yeah. Yeah. And, and quick. Hera, Hera um, and Viper both do that very, very well. Um, and I, I noticed with Viper, the it's almost like the more confidence he has or the more wins he has in the particular series, the longer he will wait before he places that wall. I don't think he'd ever admit it, but I think a small part of it for him is like, oh yeah, I just did that. Like yeah. he wants the opponent to feel his strength, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Cause I, I, was cause I definitely it. would. For a little while, I'm like, man, could blue be Hera? Because when I saw him micro the single archers, Hera also has a tendency to know the name of each unit you know it's almost personal so like because he controls everything um but there was uh -huh. a few moments where there was a little bit of you know idle time with the military so now i don't know i'm just it's always back and forth with yep thinking who these players are well that's it, where it's it just it's just funny to remind people these are top 16 players in the world everyone any top player like you look at the very best guess what they're doing a lot of things really well but it's how how yeah. consistently can they do it well? That's the biggest differentiator, right? There are some small things. There are some things we can look for, but everyone's really good. And, you know, I agree. Like, Khosrau underneath that tower, that was a big problem. Lost that army, got distracted here, losing an archer, falling apart a little bit. The fire galleys for Sigismund clearly you know, paying off in some other ways. And Slam, this area of the map, since you haven't seen a lot of games, actually super important. Because you can't just give up water and still cross over there with military and eco over time. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of that one of the previous games uh, where maybe it could have been Tato. I don't know. They're just constant demo ships. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. In between, the, in between the islands. And there was these vills going across. I remember laughing because I'm like, if you're those villagers, like who's going, who decides who goes first? You can see them, you know, at the shoreline. And it's like, you do just vote. And they, they were all walking across and these demo ships were taking out one vill at a time. Yeah, it's, it's something that I, I think, you know, the first time I was like, okay, maybe it's just a normal player. The second time I thought Tato confirmed is a joke. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth time, like this guy was addicted <laughs> to just tossing demos there. So that's what I was like, I yeah. could see the arguments for Tato. Yeah, so the, this, the game is looking, you know, kind of even right now. So it looks like we are going to get into a longer game. Um, what do you see coming out of these two sieves? Like, 
in the, later on in the game, like Celts, I'm like, is it going to, you think it's going to be Woe, Woad Raiders? I just don't see the Civ that often. Um, yeah. Same with Japanese. What, what kind of composition do you think um, is going to happen I think, here? So, so before that, I think Celts have an underrated ability to boom economically. I think that wood bonus is really underrated. And I think if this turns into the transitional play of like three TCs against three TCs, I mean, on this map, maybe even four and five, I think Celts will get a massive eco lead that way. But you know, I do worry for, for Celts long term if they try and go for Wodes. Because the Japanese, the, their samurai mm -hmm. wreck Wodes. Now, they, they can't, they're not as mobile as the Wodes. But I've actually played that matchup a few times and know that Samurai actually destroy that matchup pretty hard. So, um, yeah, I would say Siege and a lot of uh, infantry combined with that would probably make the most sense. So maybe something like Champion, as weird as it, say, it sounds to say, in 2024. Something like Champion, <laughs> yeah. Onager, or like Heavy Scorpion or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Sometimes I guess the unit composition can also depend on you know where you are in the game like if your score is a bit ahead you get the sense you are ahead in eco for example i think woad raiders can work right so i mean obviously yep. if someone had n no eco anything could work but yeah it, if it's an even game it's harder to tell um woad raiders are you can't underestimate them though i, I thought once i could just build a massive arbalist to kill them but apparently mm -hmm. arbalists can die too if you get outnumbered because the woads run so fast and they can just yeah that's you know, true surround and they shred once they get underneath so what a, i know the kd is not the closest but overall this game has been very clean compared to other evacuation games we've had zero eco kds on either side both players have had to build towers and quick wall and everything they have the same castle age time which is also incredible um mm -hmm. and there's the second tc now for for Cosrail, but I'm very excited to see how the rest of this game plays out. It feels like it could go on for a while, but then again, if you build the TC with no protection, the archers oh coming boy. across the map, the knight coming across the map could deny that here, Sigismund. Yeah, Actually catches sight a, of that there, Slam. That's really big for him. There's a lot of stone build up too from uh Cosrail. So he he'll throw down a TC or two and I mean I wouldn't be surprised if we see a castle drop at some point. Yeah. Oh, wow. He continued to build this TC after losing that. the skirms. That tells me he didn't notice that the skirms went down. And this TC will be denied by Khosrow. Emperor Sigismund reacts. Now, he has actually sent his army to the starting area, which his opponent was not expecting at all because he's so worried about expanding, which is, again, why yeah. this map is so freaking hard to play. Yeah. But a tower gets forced down. The skirms are still here. I think Khosrow comes up uh, being in the better position after this. Oh, definitely. Uh, now all that stone looks like it's actually going to be super beneficial here, like as we saw just from that quick tower. Um, but that that catch on Red's TC, like that's that could be pretty game changing. I and mean, that's an idle mm -hmm. TC. Four vills are gone, and map control at that one moment. Okay, so Khosrow basically has used his Castle Age army to control the Greenland. And then you've got the the starting area as the focus for Sigismund. So both players have problems because they don't really have enough to defend either area right now. That is honestly slam. Sometimes I think you have to simplify your game, and you just gotta sit on that TC. Like make him come to you if yeah. you're Kazrao. Don't leave. Don't give him an opportunity to sneak back over there. And you know you'll you'll find players too with archers picking off farms and, and such. You know getting rid of buildings can be. You know that adds to your you know your advantage too so if he slowly picks away at that tc red may lose more resources if it gets destroyed i really like how in a game this messy how good causer has been at adding the farming eco as sigismund as well has done a decent job finally we got some siege now this is bringing back some memories of some huang games some monks and some scorpions <laughs> yeah oh the micro from causer goes in and kills the monk though that's interesting yeah. stuff there. That was intentional from him. Are these just conversions from Khosrow, or does he have an actual stable somewhere? Or uh, like, where I, is I he believe, getting these knights from? I believe he does have a stable. Oh, okay. It's too many things to look at right now, but he did yeah, drop the stable okay. there. And there's going to be TC number three for him. 
Uh, again, a very even game. Look at the KD. I mean, th this game is so unbelievably close at the moment. The only real big thing I'd say is Sigismund's ahead in eco upgrades, but Kozrao's actually ahead in villagers because of denying the TC. Yeah. Yeah. In the long run, though, we're... we're... What would you prefer? I I think villagers will always be sort of. I mean, I mean, it's a small a small difference, but yeah, um, yeah, the um, villagers will definitely add up over time. Oh, that was huge. Especially the the ships will add up Fast too if villagers are going to be passing over to the other side. I I think I would prefer Kazra's position. Yeah, I think having the TCs, you can always catch up with eco upgrades, but with vills, you're kind of limited at how quickly you can do certain things. And um, I'm really impressed with how Kazrael always seems to be prepared at this point uh there converts the knight immediately hops into the tc for example and has another monk prepared i mean kazrael is already on two relics this player is going for relics very yeah. early here yeah I'm, I'm curious about his um his stone count still i really want to see something something juicy here i don't know if it will be yeah uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of army out blue so i mean a forward castle might be a little bit more risky um yeah especially against Celts I think if you want to go forward and drop a castle on Celts you've got a death wish usually <laughs> but like yeah but, but if you have if you feel your most exposed area is where you started that might be the spot for the castle it's just so tricky because that also doesn't protect as much stone and gold and map that's going to be important to you later on so I don't think there's really a correct answer as with anything on evacuation I think you just have to pick a decision that and know if you protect one area another beautiful demo where the other exposed areas are going to be yeah and um Cosmo still has like still has fishing ships i guess maybe four mm -hmm. or, like, i don't see the count the red has zero that that little that's that's a little bit of a boost especially with japanese that can add up over time you know three four minutes go by and that's um that's a chunk of food which makes your imperial age that much quicker I, I like the pressure from sigismund he continues to try and find damage with these knights like he's probably thinking he's still here with bills because i'm still there with bills i gotta get some damage in so he's trying to raid uh, unfortunately every time he shows up there seems to be something from kazrael and kazrael is just boarding every attack with some monks more and more I look at this, the more I like Khazrael's position, but this game's definitely going to Imp Slam, so we might actually have a pure yeah. infantry battle in the Imperial Age. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm really curious to see the, the unit compositions uh, between these two sieves. I, I, I really want to know if Red's going to go Wodes. Um, uh, it just feels like, what kind of options do you, yeah, do you have with Celts? Obviously, people will throw out the Pala idea, which Hera has done in the past. I don't think that would work here. Um, so it's most likely it was against be, Japanese. Yeah. It was fun fact. Yeah, it was Celts oh, against boy. Japanese when it was Celt Paladin, and the the uh, Japanese player was going champion. So <laughs> this was a pretty sick <laughs> okay. move, honestly. Well then, <laughs> yeah, that uh, well we'll see what happens then. But I do think it might be risky here. It just seems like yeah. uh, it would it, it would be the surprise factor. Um, that would catch someone off guard. And sometimes that works, you know? You go, why would Kels ever go Palas here? I'm not going Hell. I'm not going to open Helbs. And then they yep. go Pala, and it, it could catch them off guard. So there is one thing that... Oh, God, this is an important area. Oh, geez. Forward Castle from Khazra oh, needs to go up. It needs oh. to go up. If it doesn't go up, this could be horrible. This could be a Dow Castle when Khazra has yep. the lead. We do see some villagers repositioning and walling to get into an area, and he just abandons oh, the idea here, Slam. Disaster for Khazrael. I, I was just going to say, too, that castle goes up, and that looked like the winning condition for Khazrael because his yep. imp time, full two minutes at least. Treb would have been out earlier, and that definitely switched up the game big time. I, I'm just... Didn't pe didn't we just vote that Dow played in the previous series? I'm <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm, I'm confused, but uh, you know I suppose that can happen to anybody, so we should move on. D90, I've been I've been throwing down doubt on paper for so many games now. Yesterday, <laughs> previous set, I, I'm, I might just be obsessed with him. I don't know, but uh, this might be <laughs> the third set now where I've got doubt written down. 
Yeah, I mean, I could see some of the out-of-the-box strategies being dealt. I could see the occasional failure with the castles being dealt. But despite the doubt, Kazral is actually in a great position. He's going to have another castle here. He's going to be able to treb down the castle the Emperor Sigismund is building. And Sigismund has the real question of what army type does he commit to. And I think the only choice right now is Wodes. You need something fast that can go into snipe trebs. So I think Wodes is the way. And Wodes can actually work. I think Japanese cab archers are strong, but it does take time to mass them. That's something I completely forgot about at this moment was Japanese cav archers and, and that's a thing now there there was a switch um the Japanese got buffed in that sense was it it was bloodlines was it or was it an extra uh, uh, bloodlines was upgrade? like five bloodlines was like five years ago which for us is still new um but then <laughs> yeah, recently you... within the last year they did get plus two attack against archers so that is oh, the recent what, change yeah. you're thinking of. That's yeah. what I was thinking about. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. So yeah. that's what Blood, we're Bloodlines. seeing here from 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 uh, Japanese here. It's it's nice to see that they ha they're more versatile. You can you can now go CA. Uh, I have noticed that in a lot of previous um, uh, tourney games recently. Uh, it's nice to see. Yeah. Well, Bloodlines isn't in yet. Oh, it's actually on the way. These Wood Riders. Even though they're not engaging against the C8, that alone right there is showing you what they can do. They can outmaneuver you and boom, get the raids in. Nice unit control there from Sigismund. Sigismund needs upgrades though, needs the elite upgrade ideally, and needs more castles because this castle is going to go down. A nice position here for Kazra. So I'm trying to put myself in Siggy's position here and I'm thinking, okay, I see C8 what do i do next and the first thing that comes to mind is well let's maybe get some onagers out in the field but they take time right and they're they're, they're kind of clunky clunky and slow so in my opinion i just feel like Celts is in a tricky position here they need time oh ooh, we got world raiders diving for the trebs and we have some immediate walls from kazra very well played and yeah i agree with you i honestly though slam i think the big thing is you don't want to be too committed to this castle on any other map, I think you just you work hard to hold this position. But you have eco behind this. You have good position still with three castles built. Just don't lose your trebs here unnecessarily if you're Sigismund. And just wait for more. Mm -hmm. I like the quick move there by Kazra. I just threw up a TC, threw up a, a castle in behind. He's probably thinking, okay, I see Wode's on the field. Trades may be coming in. I want to protect some eco. Yeah. It's still very curious to know as those Wood Raiders one by one leave the box formation. Oh boy. I'm very curious to know if we're going to see Elite Samurai be the next click or Heavy Cab Archer because I feel like you could kind of justify either right now if you're Cosrail. Ideally, yeah. you do both, mm -hmm. but it's too expensive to do both with this economy right now. Yeah. I actually, I really like this Civ match up here because I just, I, as the Celts player, I don't know what's what's best. I mean, I mean, it looks like Red's just continuously spamming more Wodes, but I, I don't think that's going to be the answer in the long run here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I you know, the thing that I'm noticing, though, is, is Kosra is doing an awful lot of reacting. For a player who is so proactive and empty is doing an awful lot of reacting to these Wode Raider raids. Mm -hmm. Elite Wode Raider is in. And, you know, villagers have been picked off here or there. There's got to be some paranoia. And I could definitely see, if you have to send your army and your focus and your attention after Wodes like this, I could see Emperor Sigismund finding some areas for damage. There's an immediate reaction from Khosrow, but this is what I mean, Slam. I could see these types of raids really adding up. Yeah. So, T90, I'm having a moment here uh, as a like a spectator. I, you know, I'm so used to playing, and and I'm going about to say that the question that I always read so often, and now I finally understand. Why doesn't he just wall, right? Like, why doesn't he just wall? <laughs> just wall, stone wall there. These roads can't get in anymore, right? But I'm actually starting to feel that. Whenever I heard that, I'm like, come on, we don't have time to do that. But now yeah. finally, I understand because there's that little gap um, on the green island where they keep running through. Oh, man, a, a nice wall would look so good there. It's, it's a really good point. I agree with you. There's a lot of choke points. I think walling up the choke points is a really good idea. I also think... The lack of a castle in the starting area for Khosrow, where the relics actually are, by the way, 
could be a problem. Yeah. Wode Raiders can continue to run through there. And oh, oh my God, we've got look. a Scorpion and a Wode Raider and a Samurai battle in 2024 oh, at a high rank. <laughs> And it's going horribly for the for the um well the for somebody yeah what? yeah I mean heavy scorpion was a little late there Dave. uh not Dave sorry slam wrong Canadian <laughs> uh Canadian but yeah, Sigismund yeah. wins the heavy scorpion and the Wood Raiders <laughs> no made it way. happen wow. what a great play you, you know you know I'm not saying this is Tato but I. The, the heavy scorpion play I love to see because you don't see it often. You know, Kelt, yep. I guess, would, would, you know, push you in that direction maybe. But there's been some brilliant moves I've seen Tato do where he's gone scorpions. Um, I think maybe he was Mongols or something. I don't know. But uh, it's just nice to see them come into play. You don't really see heavy scorpions that often. Yeah, it is, it is one of the rare situations where I think it really made sense. And I love this from Sigismund. This is what the best players do. They win a fight and they say, oh, okay, you're going to prep for me here. That's really cool. I'm going right back here because yeah. you didn't wall, you fool. You didn't wall. And exactly. You didn't wall. You have no castle at home. <laughs> and I think Cosro could lose all of his. Oh, oh, God. Oh, no. They're trying to meet up with their friend. Oh, oh it's going to be a massacre slam. An absolute massacre. This is worse than the demos. Yeah, at this point, I'd be then... so frustrated. I would just want Continue. to throw away that island. I would just, you know, I'm, I'm that that rough looking island is just like, there's nothing on there. It's just a, a drag. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Don't worry about it. Honestly, maybe that's what he's doing. He's he's allowing those villagers to get slaughtered. But here, the heavy scorpions with Fuhrer Celtica, by the way, so they have the extra HP. Yeah. They're going to town, and the elite Wode Raiders from Kelts taking out the starting TC from Kazrao wow. and Kazrao does not know what hit him right now. I, I'm I'm actually super surprised. Uh, this whole game I thought Kazrao it's gonna be his. I don't I can't see Kelts um, coming up with a great answer within you know the, the the you know the time window that they needed to you know to kill but um, Scorpions was excellent. I didn't even <laughs> it's a great move. I kept thinking onagers. Yeah. I mean, Kelt ETC, Kelt E Tower at this point. By the way, Kelts have only, were only played one time in the entirety of the qualifier. This is a strategy that Sigismund saved for this moment. And the key right now is that his Trebs continue to be masked. If he's taking out castles and taking these positions, building his own castles, that's how he wins this game. And the GG is just wow. called. Oh my goodness, Sigismund ties it up here. And what a response from him, Slam. Great move. I, again, now that I think of it, Japanese, it's a sieve that doesn't get bomb. Like they get onagers, they don't get bomber cannons. But bomber cannons, yeah. usually you get chemistry at some point and they're great at picking off scorpions. Um, so in that moment, Kelts was looking super good because how are those scorpions going to die? And it takes time to get onagers going. Yeah, I think Kazra was also really caught between two minds. Initially, he wanted to go for the cav archers. But then, and we see the range units here. I mean, Emperor Sigismund had to recover massively in this yeah. game. But I think that we never saw heavy cav archer. We never saw a lot of them. I think part of that was because of the threat of the Wode Raiders. This was a big moment, though, Slam. Um, mm -hmm. Khosrau maybe needed a little bit more army to, to protect those villagers coming forward, building the castle. Yeah. That that was probably a, a big swing moment there. Because, uh, as mentioned, Blue had that up would have had more um, control of, of the land, and then he'd be up earlier in Naboo to get that treb out. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, Blue did a good job of focusing down the scorpions, actually. That was all right before the heavy scorpion upgrade. But once the heavy scorpion upgrade was in, I mean, good luck and goodbye to the samurai there. So that's, mm -hmm. um, that's an exciting one, because when we looked at the draft, we thought that Sigismund would be a player who would be more comfortable on some of the the newer maps and then we also pointed out how epic it was that in game number one that Kozral used a late pick to beat a top pick and now look at this we have in the same <laughs> draft positions we had sigismund breaking the number one pick of Kozral with the celts versus japanese that is amazing this is just it's looking completely mirrored right now it's a beautiful thing to see yeah. Okay. 
Well, so evacuation out of the picture now. Cup and Hidden Forts remaining for Sigismund. I would imagine for Kozrael, based on this draft, he's got to go for one of the maps he picked. And maybe he feels like these maps that have these multiple elements to them aren't his cup of tea. And if that's what he thinks, I would assume he might go for like Arabia or something. But um, Slam and viewers, if you had to like give a, a guess, even generally, like give me a group of players, what type of players are we looking at here with Kozrael and Sigismund? Um, definitely, uh, definitely see Hera in, in here. Definitely a top six, top 16 player. Um, I'm ca from Kozra, I'm getting the vibe of ACCM, Doubt, Hera, Jordan, Leary. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be one of them. Um, my opinion, I have no idea. Okay. All right. I could tell, I could tell you're like, if you say definitely top 16, when there's 16 players in the tournament, I could tell that you're really uncertain. That, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can be honest. I, I also am saying the same. I currently kind of feel that this could be two players that came through the qualifier against each other, in all honesty. Like, I could see, like, mm -hmm. a Mihai against, like, a um, uh, Mihai against, like, a Barrels or a Sato or a um I, I i don't know okay let's let's just move on to game number three it's tricky yeah we let's... need to see more in more games i think i know we need that. more time on this one we need more time on this let's let's give it a few yeah. more rounds and then we'll know for yeah. sure 100 percent. yeah Ooh. okay so uh people were mentioning yo yo is obsessed with the romans doubt also obsessed with the romans and i think this is the first time we've seen romans drafted and the first time we've seen romans picked so far in hidden cup five main event Sigismund won with the Kels the previous game. Now has Romans in this game. So another unique pick. And we've got uh, the Lithuanians on the side of Kozrel on high tides. Now, this is technically like new and improved high tides. It's like if high tides got a, got a remodel. So I want to point out what the differences are if we could take it off Fog of War. Because in the previous Hidden Cup, we had this map. And there was the fish in the north. That's still there. Uh, we did make it easier for players to get the fish. There's shore fish along the shoreline, which we didn't have as much of in the previous game uh, or previous tournament, rather. In the south, we added more stone and gold there. And then the shore fish, there's 4,000 food of shore fish down there. There's also hunt. So in the only other game I remember from this, we had one player winning the water in the north. We had another player focusing on the hunt and the shore fish in the south. And like all these map slam, you got to scout and you got to decide on what is best for you. And I honestly think they could go either way. Yeah, so I'm looking at the sieves. I see Lithuanians. That that makes sense to me, right? Uh, you know, they can go on to wood or, you know, they get the extra food at the start. Going on to water is a little bit more efficient. Um, but Romans, I, I never know where they fit in. Maybe part of the problem is... Um, <clears throat> I, I don't I don't have the sieve currently, but if you, <laughs> you really not little, have the sieve, no, I know I, I'm not. Sh I need to double check. I'm no, I'm pretty sure I have <laughs> Romans, but I'm curious if if you could expand on uh, what Romans are good at, especially in a map like this. OK, and then maybe if you don't, maybe with with like, you know, the caster pay, you could just buy you could buy the DLC and the tips that I give you can help you in your next tournament, maybe <laughs> or a ranked game. Um. Okay, so so where Romans can be insanely strong is with their infantry because they get the for every armor upgrade they get it, it counts as double, so that's strong. And I could see why that would be something Sigismund would be in love with, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I think what the best players with Romans are realizing right now is the five percent greater efficiency bonus on all their villagers is just really strong eco bonus, and it applies to everything. Yeah. So this is really good for like Lowy the Legends out there because it's like they. No, no offense, guys. You struggle with everything, but if everything is improved, that's really nice. It's not like specific to Mongols with Hunt or like Britons with the sheep or whatever. So um, you could just play them standard, Slam. I don't think you have to do anything crazy with them. I think playing in towards scouts and spears is your typical play. So you could treat them maybe like Slavs. And um, I think if you play in towards heavy knights with the Romans, you force your opponent into pikemen. And then you have the double armored long swords. That's kind of the the dream scenario. So that's how I would foresee yeah. Sigismund wanting to play uh, this particular game. 
Yeah, I see. Uh, so Tinani, as for the addition to the bottom, um, I did watch this map a little bit in one of the, the previous sets. Can you build down there? I, I, I'm still not sure about that. Like, is that, can you put foundations on that? Uh, when you, you mean like, can you build mining camps around there? Yeah, but it, see, there's some, anything. there's some rocky terrain there. Um, yeah. Yeah. you can build there yeah, it's yeah. not always the easiest right it's you're not going to have like mm -hmm. your dream mining camp at times so you are going to be picking and choosing certain locations uh the gotcha. the other area around the water where the shorefish are that's standard terrain so you should be able to build mm -hmm. mills and whatnot there i think i think what i'm actually thinking is can, can a castle be be get because that's a perfect place for a castle as a bottom area it's ah, it's, you ah. know, a lot of hills yeah i was trying to figure out what when i was you know, just yeah, I honestly, out. I can't tell you, Slim. I've never seen that area prioritized much um, beyond the Castle Age because most of the games that I've seen in testing and then the one game we've seen in the main event, the game has not gone on past early Castle Age. It, it, this is a very quick yeah. one. Okay. Um, very likely that you're going to get punished through the middle of the base. Very likely you're going to get punished on water. So uh, the players who are most comfortable in those scenarios, the ones that think they can punish quickly, they're going to be the ones that pick this, which would be Khosrau in this case, because this is his home map. Yeah, so look at look at Lithuanians, or Khosrau. He is up so much earlier. Well, not so much, but enough to maybe, you know, get the, the fire ship out early here. And yep. my guess is with Red's barracks going up, he's just saying, I'm just going to commit to water just a little bit. I'm up against Lithuanians. They're usually up quicker. They usually end up winning early fire ship situations. Um, mm -hmm. And he's actually got a beautiful deep fish by his dock. So he's going to get everything he wants out of that. Blue will go a fire ship, will clean up, but then red will be onto land. Hmm, interesting. Uh, surprisingly, Romans have a positive win rate. Yeah, I mean, it really just depends on the maps, too, when you look at civilizations. I got to tell you, though, it's never good slam if you're going men at arms without vision on where your opponent yeah. is and without that scout to block for you there. And that that find from Khosrau was amazing. The faster feudal age has paid off for him. And I, I'm expecting a fire galley as well. And while that is from both players, if this becomes an extended fire galley war, just remember that uh, there's no demos available to the Romans. So if you really fall behind on water with the Romans, you're usually out of luck. Yeah, I'm 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 loving Kozrow's position right now. Obviously, he's he's got the scout kill that you mentioned. Getting that, finding that scout when you're up early is such a good feeling. It's just like yeah. your uptime has paid off in so many ways. On water, you got sort of map control now. Um, I don't know if Kozrow saw the militia coming out. I agree. I don't think he did. He de I mean, he definitely didn't because he didn't pre wall anything. But the man at arms are yeah. gonna go there. Oh, could, I wonder if he's gonna bot. Okay. I thought, if, okay. man, I had this feeling where if Blue was Hera, he, there was a potential to gate those man-at-arms in there. I could just sense mm. that could have been a Hera moment. A little but, trap. Yeah, it didn't happen. Therefore, we can confirm that Khosrau is not Hera, 100%. 100%. All right, you heard it here first, folks. Remember that when we do the votes. I think there is a villager hammering away for Sigismund on the fire. No, there's not, actually. The villager's building a house. It, it feels like right now Sigismund is trying to transition fully towards land. So, Khosrow with the better start here. Khosrow defending already. Just opening with skirms, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's not going to end up being bad because the opponent is going into archers, but I really yeah, like I the start for Khosrow. Mind the the early skirms, especially Lithuanians. They're they're gonna they're gonna move a little quicker, and um, it kind of confuses your opponent a little bit because you're seeing skirms and you go, oh, okay, well normally I transition into, into archers right after man at arms, so maybe what will happen is red will go archers and maybe he might add a stable for the skirms at some point. This is where having a demo would be huge, right there where the repair vills are, right there in that choke point. Like not having a demo is painful. And then Sigismund just checked that out. He's like, is anyone down there taking resources? Apparently not. Yeah. We'll see if he considers doing it. But so far, no one feels like the South is actually worth it for them. So what, what civs are we normally seeing on this map that you've seen in previous matches? So Lithuanians make sense. I could see Biz maybe working well here. I don't know if anyone's yeah. chosen Biz yet. 
Um, the other game we had was um, Malians against oh, I forget Slam, but but I would say Civs that Byzantines would be fantastic. I think Malians could be amazing here. The Malay could be really good. Persians yeah. possibly. Um, Has a lot Malay of like any been... hybrid Civ. Has Malay even been picked yet, or has it always been banned? Because I don't think I've seen Malay. Malay has been banned every single draft. Yeah, so it's oh, like it's tricky when there's five bans on both sides now. After a long qualifier where Malay did so well, it seems like no one wants yeah. the Malay to be available at this point. So I, I find I that so interesting. Yeah, because Malay they did get the buff with the infantry, right? But um i don't think they were picked as much uh, in the past so i don't know if it's so much the buff that they got or people have just realized over time that the, the quick uptime with melee is just so nice yeah i think that's what it is i think people got really good with the timing slam and kazral i know that doesn't seem like a lot has happened in this game but kazral has had his timings perfect he had his timings in defense he's doing oh he's actually falling behind on water take it back but he is wow. aware that villagers are trying to take food down here towards the south. And like, Sigismund, I know it's just skirms, dude, but you got you to gotta get out of here. <laughs> because yeah. you're going to have some losses there soon. Also, a big demo just happened on the fires. There's so much happening right now, Slam. Yeah, oh, this man. is a crazy map. It, the, like, you got the north, you got the middle. Obviously, you're always going to check to see if your opponent has gone down south where the hunt is, as Kazra has done. And I'm actually really shocked at how many fire ships uh, Siggy has. I don't know where they came from. When I saw all of them, I'm like, oh, he's got two docks. But I think it's just still one dock. Uh, maybe Blue just decided to give up on water. All right, Slam, how many of these villagers survive? Uh, three. <laughs> three? Actually, they're, wow. they're, wait, wait, okay. they're, they're far. Wait. Oh, okay, I gotta. You I can't. Gotta you, you can't go back I, now. I'm uh, you, I know. I'm committing. Three. Okay. All right. Well, we're he gonna see. When I, as soon as I said that, he went AFK for a second. Oh, okay, not <laughs> AFK. That, that's not polite. He he was focusing somewhere else. Um. Yeah. Okay. So how well, many went well, down? Well, thank you for clear. Thank you for clarifying that because I I don't want a player to reach out and say T90 stop inviting Slam to cast because that would be. <laughs> That'd be disappointing, but uh, uh, just, you know what we we have maybe... right now is we have additional men at arms from Sigismund with armor. So I said, yeah, you know, people don't really go for the infantry. No, he's going for the infantry right now, and he's going all in. Yeah, and I said scouts too. So I'm, I'm like, it makes sense now with uh, Romans. They get the the extra armor early. Is it okay? Never mind. I was going to ask a question, but I do know it because i noticed it <laughs> okay well was it were you asking if it was double armor or in feudal what uh yeah it's double armor um same cost though right yeah as far as i recall it's yes. the same cost same cost so yep sure same they, exact they kept, cost they, good they kept that the same good okay yeah so six man at arms a tower now here from sigismund i'm very concerned for sigismund like and, and kazaro seems very unconcerned he's like oh you're going to tower the 12 trees that I have there. Oh, darn. Let me just relocate yeah. to another wood line and use my resources to plan for Castle Age while you don't. Um, I think Sigismund's plan here was to get a bigger lead than he has right now. And if knights end up coming in from Khosrow and Castle, this could be trouble. So I, I have been able to mass many archers against these Roman man-at-arms in Feudal Age, and they just don't die. And I'm just seeing skirms here, and I'm thinking this is going to take a lot of micro. There's going to be a lot of energy going into running and hitting, running and hitting. But these skirms are actually not doing too bad. I guess when you get to a certain number, even if you're doing one damage... It's still something against a unit that doesn't have that much HP, right? So yeah. that plus the added mobility. But there, Sigismund just wanted to complete the tower. And, you know, Sigismund co does complete the tower. I, 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 We'll see what he does. There's going to be knights out from Khosrow. Khosrow can expand in other ways. But it is a nice little position. And I could see a player like Yo, for example. Like, certain players, if they get a position on you, they will oh. not give it up. And it could be a problem later Yo? on. 
Yo does like Romans, does he not? I remember picking him in, in a previous tourney once, so therefore he must love them. But no, um, no, multiple. No, I, no, you're right. It's oh, spot multiple? on there. Okay. Yeah, Yo. I've been calling them the Yeomans for a while because he picks them so frequently. So <laughs> nice. I don't think that's crazy at all. Uh, nice, nice yeah. attempt here from Sigismund to defend the villagers, but the knights are here. The villager runs away. I could definitely see Yo prioritizing Romans on his draft. Yeah, I, I do love though how Siggy has been microing these man at arms just back and forth, back and forth, just to get these towers up. Unfortunately, it doesn't mm -hmm. look like it's going to pay off because Blue's been up so early. Now he's got knights yeah. out. Yeah, nice job there with the knights. Also, I like the timing on the second town center, especially with Lithuanians. When you get the extra food, you just want to you just want to toss those things up as quickly as possible. Water is pretty much lost at this point for Kozral. The tower is going to go up here, but the skirm knight army from Kozral could could do so much damage because you can't go a spear defense right now if you're Sigismund. One thing I've noticed about many recent maps is how the, the deep fish distribution is a little bit less in some maps and a little bit further out, yeah. which means that it kind of balances it a little bit. So, you know, if you win water, it's not like you're going to be flooded in deep fish everywhere. Um, so players won't commit more. Whereas I know back in the past, there'd be maps with a lot more deep fish. So you'd get a mm -hmm. huge advantage as soon as you'd win water. I... Is something about the way that that Sigismund walled here, and the how calm he was in this situation, and just how how many moments Sigismund says, "Eh, I don't care about micro." I I could actually see this being Yo, and according to the viewer polls, anyways, we haven't seen Yo yet. Now, some people thought maybe he had played Doubt in the previous series, but I I'm definitely feeling like this could be. Obviously, it could be anybody, but. Just based on how certain things played out here, Sigismund definitely has some Yo vibes. Yeah, mate, we'll have to take a look at some of the, the, the upcoming games too. Because I know when uh, you and Dave were casting the one earlier, uh, you know, I think it was the first game we saw Spanish. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's Yo. It's on Arena or whatever. Yeah, true, or on true. The closed yeah. map. And I'm like, oh, it's Yo. Um, so, yeah, again, maybe I don't. Th I have to take a look at the Civ draft. I don't know if. Uh, what about Spanish Yo? Role. What about Yo Sato? Yo Sato. Yo Emperor Sigismund. Sato Kozrel. Sato is in amazing shape. Loves his land maps. Lands a lot on islands. Really nice kills there from Kozrel. Kozrel's got a pretty nice lead. But yeah, that's just where my brain is at right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I want to see the Civ draft again. I. What's funny is uh, there's been some times in the past where I've been up against Sato and every Civ that I've wanted, he's wanted. So I'm curious yeah. once I see the drop again, if I look at each Civ and I go, oh man. I oh, look at Civ. the trap. The trap from Khosrow Viper confirmed. Beautiful. Not only does he trap these knights, but he's got monks lined up with conversion. So it's either join us or be killed. And the other guy refuses to join and prefers to die. <laughs> but wow, what a move there from Khosrow. A 20 villager lead. Two relics with Lithuanian knights. And this, uh, I mean, it went from being close to not being close at all here, Slam. Yeah. And, and this type of map, too, it just looks like knights are just going to do so well. You think Romans, and you're like, oh, infantry, maybe some infantry, get just get some pikes out or something. But I don't think that's going to really stop any of that because there's just so many, so many areas to raid. You got your south. Mm -hmm. There's just no way to wall this map. Yeah, it's it's really tough. Look at this fourth TC now. Oh no, I can't wait. No, no, it's four TCs. Very early fourth TC here from Kozrel, oh, wow. who yeah. has quite an expansive yeah. farming eco in all honesty. Has three relics, like we said. And this is now the problem. If you're trying to go pikes against Lithuanians and their knights have soon what could be plus four attack, how are you supposed to be able to even counter them with pikemen? Yeah, no, I, I don't think there's a chance here. Even look at the eco difference too. I don't know how Blue got so far ahead. I didn't even see it. And a fifth TC now. He loves this Lithuanian TC bonus. Wow. So that's two minutes and 30 seconds of vital TC time in this entire game for Kozrel. After getting hit on water, getting hit with the man-at-arms, lots of aggression happened, but 
Cosros just made a lot of this look very easy. That's going to be relic number five. These are some early relics, people. This is like, some people are going to get three, but they're going to be like, okay, I go out and fight now. But, but some players are a little bit greedier with their relics. Yeah, and at this point, you can just literally keep snowballing these knights with all that attack and it just you, you'll pretty much take out anything at this point okay so that tc right there you see that that tc from sigismund is a i didn't practice a lot for hidden cup tc in my opinion <laughs> i don't think it's <laughs> Look, bad take a... <laughs> but like the there is some level of energy from sigismund it's like uh the celt pick the uh some of the approach uh, some of the other civs I'm seeing it I don't love. I'm just like, I wonder who this is. I'm very curious to find out afterwards how disrespectful this is going to come off. But it's an interesting decision to drop. I think it was second TC on that food there. I hope this red wasn't the same player I used. AF, the AF, uh, that, you know what? AFK T90. thing. That, that TC, if blue wanted to... Uh, obviously, I can see we can see everything, so it's all nice and easy to make yeah, calls. Yeah, yeah. But I think sending all those knights down there, you could just wipe that thing right out. Yep, yeah, I agree. Or you could just wipe out the pikemen, or you could just castle drop it. Here we go, Kazra waiting with villagers. Villagers want to drop a castle on the hill there. Needs a little bit of help, so is going to buy the stone. Knights Love get in that. here. More Indeed. villagers dying. It's a 50 villager lead for Kazra, who kills that monk. Is going to drop the castle now, and we might be moments away from GG. That could be, could easily be a GG castle right there. Yeah, I love how those, I love how the game uh, turned out super well for Cosrow. Yeah, he, he did such a sick job. Like the man at arms accomplished very little. It's supposed to create a stressful game, but it didn't seem like Cosrow felt phased at all. His transitions economically on land were just perfect. And in the conclusion of that one, was about to have all five relics. Also, had 5,000 more res collected. And he made it look very, very easy there. Well played. I'm try trying to look at a point in that game where it took off for Kazrao. And I can't think of it. I, I think it was the er okay, I think it was red coming forward, investing those four vills and man arms to build towers, which I don't yeah, think yeah, yeah. paid off. And that's when blue had the earlier castle age. I think that's right when the game shifted because I, it seemed like such a straight kind of forward game. I didn't see, you know, it was hard to see when, when Kazrao took off, but I think that was the point. Someone says, usually people are guessing people were in the spirit of hidden cup. This one guy in my chat goes, come on, just tell us. <laughs> oh, buddy, I don't know. I don't know, okay? Um, oh, my, we could go for admin, a little interview, so... maybe. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I, I, I mean, I kind of wish I could tell you guys, and there's points where I want to know as well, but we, we do not know. So you'll have to wait until the final day of Hidden Cup to find out. But just the way he said that, like we were teasing, teasing him intentionally, was hilarious to me. Um, I, well, all right. So just, I just want to go ahead. Slam. I, I just want to say the, the whole hidden cup thing, the anticipation of that is just beautiful. You know, like you just it's subconscious too. like you're the, the day is approaching when that final day is here. And it's like, that's the buildup. It's like, everyone's excited yep. for that. It just, all, yep. this is a no brainer. Right. But it just to kind of think about that again, what makes the event so awesome. I didn't like, there's just so much prep in the buildup to make this event happen, to make sure the production quality is good. All these things outside of actually casting the hidden games. Uh, the maps had to be heavily tested, like the new ones especially. And, you know, a lot went into it. And so for me, it was like, I, I wasn't able to get to that point where I was excited for casting the hidden identities, you know, because I was like stressed with it all. And dude, when I sat mm -hmm. down on day one, and I feel it now too, this is just so freaking fun. You know, it's just like, yeah. It, it, and it makes you think about intricacies of players that any other tournament you wouldn't give a crap about, right? Like, you'd just be like, oh, you wouldn't think about it because you know who's who. You're not looking for clues. So I feel like now I'm actually learning more about each player more than I intended to learn, even just with the broadcast. So <laughs> it's yeah, fun. Yeah. I'm, so I I'm curious to know... Sorry, Tina, I, I, we don't have to mention it, but just something to think about, like 
to you who or to anyone watching like who that the biggest surprise would be for making it to the end but maybe that's just something Ooh. to think about yeah maybe i mean well, let's uh let's save that conversation after we do the poll after this i do want to just on the topic of really interesting stats here okay uh, i would love to pull up the gg stat sheet all right we've dove deep here for hidden cup and uh we have everybody calls gg okay but some people call gg in all caps and some people call gg in lowercase and we've got percentages and then maybe ganji for example ganji typically ggs with a capital g and then a lowercase g which is why it says on those options 47 percent so you know what this means guys i mean we just saw all lowercase ggs from these guys so far this means it is uh, very likely to be everybody. So there we go. Exciting times. Anyways, we can uh, wow. move on to game number four. I hope everyone's really excited about that. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think for myself uh, back in the day, and I, never once would I type capital GG, but in, I put a hockey on my caps lock, so it makes sense. And I'm wondering how many other players use caps locks now. That was my speculation that maybe Sato, because his is pretty 50-50, that he has a hot key on his caps lock. But mm -hmm. we'll see. Wow, look at this. We've got Aztecs, Bohemians, Hidden Forts, game number four. And Stats Guy was prepared. Neither Aztecs or Bohemians have been played in the main event yet. So we have the showdown happen now. This is the home map of Emperor Sigismund as he looks to tie this up. And I, I could see both civs being awesome here. But let's talk about what the options are on this map because it's so complex you have the outer resources where there's plenty of wood there's there's some stone there's some gold but then with the food a lot of players have prioritized chopping through to the middle um to the area which is somewhat shaped like the batman symbol you can chop through you could take rhinos we've seen up to seven or eight rhinos collected from a single player against a player who doesn't chop through at all and who simply prefers to take their uh, their sheep and their cows slam. So uh, I, I take it you probably haven't played any games on this because this is new. It, do you have a gut feeling here, Slam, on if there's an approach that's better than others, or is it still all up in the air for you too? Yeah, I would love to talk about this map. So um, <clears throat> I did watch that set earlier, and uh, you guys noted how the, the player getting the rhinos actually didn't necessarily have an advantage in eco, I think it was. I, I, I think they're up against Bengalis. I'm not sure. Um, Bengalis maybe it's good with yep. power. Yeah, maybe with power spikes and 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 things like that. Um, yeah, I haven't played this map at all. Um, I did come across an idea. I, I don't know if it's. Uh, it could. I mean, I'll just throw it out there. Uh, I know you mentioned you pudding um, about the Lithuanians, and in one of the previous Battle of Africa maps i remember um tourneys i remember mentioning or and testing that you can actually send two vills to wood with almost any sieve and still upkeep your food intake underneath the tc well some sieves maybe not but mm -hmm. you can actually send two vills immediately with that being said um i came across the idea of well what if someone armenians and then sent the, the you built the cart right there it's a little tight to keep the food going you cut through with two vills and then you send the card over to the other side and you the the uh, mule card actually takes up one tile i couldn't you know i couldn't move those across this so you can actually use the mule card as the like a palisade wall ah so so you want to are you saying use the mule cart to block the opponent's entry <clears throat> yes so I, I i tested it and um yeah you throw two bills on wood you'll you'll be a little tight on getting food um but you should be able to do it you upkeep your your villager production and once you cut through what's nice with the mule cart is you can shove it right in that the the next spot so the villagers <laughs> never have to move and then you cut through and then you bring your scout through and you go right to the other side and then you plant your mule cart right in front of the tile in which the uh the enemy <laughs> villagers would need to get out well i mean that I, makes I, sense. I don't know is that is that a little a little too out there I mean, no, that could I, be a good I, reason why I, I didn't qualify. No, no, no. I mean, this wasn't in the qualifier map pool. So, I mean, had it been, 
you oh, probably would be in the main event, but then we'd be down a caster. So, I mean, that would be horrible for everybody. So, so thank, to, thank God. Add, <laughs> yeah, I forgot to add too. The mule cart then went since it's out there. It can it can take in um, food from rhinos if you want. So you can send some villagers out yeah. there, and you got you got well, everything where, out there. I, that's where I thought you were going. I thought you were saying you know that that whole intro about the mule cart. <laughs> saying that you could use the mule cart to go into the middle and take the hunt. But no, you're going to use the mule cart as a wall, which yeah. I don't yeah. mind, but I guess it brings us back to kind of question number one. It's like, is it that big a deal if you don't have the middle on this map True. in the first place? And my, yeah. my feeling is it might not be. Now, it's still early, but both the players have initially lumber camped in a way where they're not rushing to the middle. Mm -hmm. So Sigismund... Yeah. He actually placed his initial lumber camp on an area with three lines of trees. He's not directly cutting through. And then Kazrao lumber camped the outside with the hunt. Or, well, he lumbered the outside with more wood. And then lumber camped the middle later. So, um, you know, I, I just I love it, Slam, how not only do you have a map where there's not an established meta in the main event, but I got to keep coming back to the fact at this, these two players aren't playing with the information that we have about how everyone else yeah. played it because this round was played behind closed doors. So they uh, are all going to have different opinions on it. And this is yet again a different matchup. We had it, almost in every other game, we had one player immediately cutting through the middle to go for uh, the Rhinos. Here, both players have delayed it. And we never had an archer opening. Now we have an archer opening from Sigismund. This is amazing to me. Oh boy, yeah. So as soon as he cuts through that wood, that's actually that's actually a really great idea because, I mean, are players ever expecting military to come through the middle once they've cut through? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so I, I I've seen scouts that way. So like sometimes what people will do is you'll see the scouts kind of wait for the opponent to cut and try and pounce. But more often than not, it's like. Yeah, actually, Slam, archers could be really smart if you cut through quickly because you could actually then sit archers behind the wood line the more I think about it. Yeah, uh, overall, Bohemians on a closed map, I think it's just super deadly. Um, I I'm not sure why they haven't been picked more often on this map. Maybe they've been banned uh, or used yeah, somewhere yeah, else, yeah. but it does seem like a, a nice straightforward pick because they, they have a tendency to do super well in uh, more yeah. closed maps. Yeah, interesting. So I see people asking, because I bring up this point, I want to clarify. People are like, okay, we get it, how the round of 16 was played. What about the quarters? The quarters are also completed before any games were covered. So pretty much right before day one of Hidden Cup is when the quarters would have completed based on the schedule. Obviously, if there's an issue with scheduling, you know, someone breaks a leg, they need to go to the hospital. Okay, that's extreme. Hopefully no one broke a leg. But um, <laughs> the quarters will be the same where the people go into the quarters having not seen what who their what their opponents did in the first round um the exception will be the semis will be played live at that point the players will have seen what their opponent did have that intel and then of course uh the final but i, I think that's important to bring up because i think it adds value to the aspect of hidden cup and right now kazrao knows his opponent is going archers is expecting the archers and finds the archers here with the eagle yeah, I was curious if Kozro actually spotted that, and it does look like he did. And it is nice to see, you know, a player being a little bit more more open on their side. Um, mm -hmm. From all the games I've seen, people will wall off of Palisades and just stay in that bubble and then kind of boom. So, um, yeah, this is a bit more of a unique game compared to what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, eventually here, we could see all these armies actually have some value towards the middle. But for now, they're not through yet. Uh, I actually think Sigismund just made it through. I'm seeing some movement. Okay, just made it through. Okay, he's going to get the Rhino. Good luck doing this and micring the archers at the same time, buddy. He's got to do it. Running back with the archers. Rhino's going in underneath the TC simultaneously. There he is. Good job. Weakening the Rhino yep. with the TC. Nope, not doing it. He's got it anyway, Slam. And I think he also has an archer behind the wood line, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. I do see that as well. I... I, I would like to say that, you know, going into some matches, when you see certain sieves, it may it may alter how a player will 
play the game. So, you know, the Bohemian yeah. for Siggy, he'll go and he sees Aztecs and he might think, well, I don't want Aztecs to get the relics. So let's, let's build a unit that can maybe go on the outside. Sometimes it's scouts, right? Um, but yeah, it can definitely change the game a little bit, you know, versus a game where Bohemians may just wall and oh. just boom and go for a fast stamp. <gasps> Yeah, that was that was a nice save there from Sigismund. The Rhino did not cooperate. Um, so Slam, that's a great point. Archer now is going to be used to bring in the Rhino. That's pro strategies here from Emperor. This is a first. All right. I think they're the same speed. So hopefully that Archer doesn't trip or stumble. <laughs> okay, should be okay. Good the whole stuff. time I was um, thinking, can this Archer just quickly build to slow it down? I'm, just, I'm so used to it being a vill. <laughs> so we thought that some of the tendencies from Sigismund would be very yo-like. Uh, picking Celts, maybe being a little underprepared for high tides because it's new, uh, newish. Um, Bohemians is another classic yo pick. He's obsessed with Bohemians and picks them all the time. So if you're thinking guesses, people, I do not think that we can discount Mr. Yo being Emperor Sigismund. Yeah. And Bohemians, like like I've said, they're just there's so much gold in the middle. You can make so many mistakes, but as long as you have a market and your gold income, it's just that you can just abuse the market with, with so much gold that comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And player safety is our biggest priority here in Hidden Cup. I'd like to reiterate that. Sorry about the leg break joke. Uh, Sigismund <clears throat> focusing on the middle. You know, Slam, your instinct when you have a middle position with all this gold is to go for a siege push, to go for a monk push. But if there's still trees there, what? Do you, I guess you just can't push at all then, right? <laughs> yeah, it is uh, it is annoying because, you know, if blue does cut through, there's going to be one little gap you can get through, which he can wall, but he didn't even cut through. So... I guess it's just a game where Bohemians, you just go for your snowball, whatever that may be, and just mass it. And yep. um, late game, if you want, the the the, the wood line is skinny enough that you could just use a treb if you want to cut through if needed. But I guess the only other way is, is through an onager. So every game that I've seen so far with the old Villagers Week, nice save. Every game that I've seen so far where one player takes the rhinos and then the other player does not, the player who's not taking the rhinos has more res collected, which is I find very interesting. So that's like yeah. three times, maybe four times now. I guess the food does help you afford different things, but still, at yeah. least based on res collected stat, that's what we're seeing. It, it really makes you think about sort of villager efficiency too. So it's like maybe there's some inefficiency when it comes to focusing on luring a boar and such so it's sometimes why a player may steal someone's boar but that player is not necessarily out of the game if they keep their eco efficient and balance it out you know it's not the end of yeah. the world but that is an interesting stat to bring up because i would still think if you have like eight rhinos or something you know you're going to be ahead somewhere yeah I'm, I'm getting i'm getting some some yo and accm vibes the more i watch this in terms of strategy we had instant chemistry from sigismund he wants to go for a hand cannons here in Castle Age, which could be devastating. But it would be so much stronger if he could use the gunpowder directly next to his opponent's TCs. But because the trees aren't chopped, he's actually going to have to use this surprise and go the outside direction. Um, and actually, yeah. fun fact here, Slam. If, if Khazra is looking at those archers, he will know chemistry's in because of the fire on the arrows. So that could actually give him an idea oh, good point. that the hand cannons are going to yeah. be coming. Yeah, a, a player's got to be on point to 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 do that. And it's, like I could I could see how Kazra would miss that because you know those archers have been shooting there for forever now. It's like oh, you know, let's go yeah. click on them again. So it is a good point, but you know the, <laughs> the player needs to see it. He's trying to chop through. Sigismund wants to chop through. <laughs> he's bringing bills. Like, he wants to attack through the middle. So he's bringing Vils. Now, Khazra's made an outpost, which which only shows those other three Vils. But there's... Okay, so there's 90 wood remaining there. That's going to take some time. I, I love this. And and it, so what should happen now, if Khazra sees this, is fortified wall. You got to wall that stuff yeah. up. You, you can't let him get through. And yeah, he's walling up already. 
Wow. And I was going to say with red, I, I mean, that's a long way back to lumber camp. Maybe he could, he could click on the gold and it drops it off. But you know what? As you mentioned, blue is on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a, a little back and forth either way. So I guess you can prevent the walls if you have the gunpowder there. But great job from Kazra to recognize this. Kazra's building up a nice little eco lead here. Four TCs. Kazra's also getting a lot of the relics on the outside. So Sigismund's insistence on pushing through the middle hasn't come with enough reward for me so far. Yeah. Uh, the Aztec's yeah. getting 33% more gold per relic is, is insane. He's going to have maybe all five relics soon, Mr. Cosrow. Yeah, I, I, you're correct. I think that's where uh, Red's making the mistake like with you know that investment. Um, I, I really think Bohemians is just going to be strong as they are if you just hold the middle. Blue's going to feel a bit yeah. panicky later knowing that all the gold is in the true. middle. So if you're going for that he long imp fight and Bohemians is castles and everything in the middle. So um, I understand what Red, Red was trying to do, but I mean, it may put him at a dis disadvantage now. Archer gets converted. Some villagers go down and Kozrao is microing the archer. He just converted like a nerd and he kills... <sighs> The other archer does run into the TC here, though. But Kazra's like, you're not coming to my base, dude. And this monk is trying to, to get home <laughs> because the hand cannons are coming. Run! <laughs> Run! You know, whatever I said about Red and the, the investment, now that these bad boys are here, like, okay, it is actually looking a bit intimidating now, and it may pay off. <laughs> It's so true. It's gotta, so easy for us to be with like, guys. I know. yeah, it's so easy to be like, he's not doing anything. And then when we see it, we're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I kind of forgot about this is hand cannons yeah. and castle yeah. age here. Um, yeah. I would really like to see long term, like if this goes late and wow, Kozra was ready to convert. Did you see that? One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to I mean, see did you, did you see dude. how those were approaching? <laughs> He's probably yeah right. <laughs> and fingers are just like shaking right now with how that monk went down. Well, so there's a couple players that I would say that are the best with monks when it comes to more than like four, right? You got Ganji, yeah. who's actually my number one. You got Barrels, who's always a good shout, and then you got MBL for me. Those three. So the boom, one, yeah. two, three. That's not like, that's not quite to the Ganji level. I would expect. I'd expect all those monks to be on a different target. So I don't think this is telling any this to any telling us anything. Sorry, but yeah. we still have to think about it. Yeah, to to number of monks. Oh God! It's, it's oh God! The... Oh God! The monks are getting shot down. Slam! Sorry to interrupt, but you looked away for a no second. No worries. Yeah. Painful. Let's see how this goes. Split oh, micro man. siege goes down. Monks are on the move. The idea was to use the monks to convert the siege that's coming in, so the skirms could work. That'll be a bit tricky. Kosra with a 20 villager lead, has four relics, has the eco lead, goes for the conversion here, doesn't get it. Good micro from Kosra though, against the Manganel, still making skirms and still making monks. Man. Yeah, HC, their hand cannoneers at this age, it's just such a powerful unit. It reminds me of uh, Conks as well, right? Just one of those units that just are ridiculous in Castle Age. Oh man, he's desperate for the conversion here, oh, and he didn't get the conversion on the siege, but he did in the end clear all this up, which is what he wanted to do anyways. So maybe a good opportunity to drop a castle just to make sure this doesn't get too crazy. Yeah, and that score difference, I don't know why it is so big. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a villager difference. Oh, I'm actually, there's, there's actually considerable uh, villager difference there, but still, I mean, blue is just skyrocketing with score here. Yeah. I think you've got a couple extra technologies researched for Kazra, more vills. The 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 resource income's looking pretty solid, but I mean Imp is on the way right now for Sigismund. And it what probably it will like be for Kazra as well. Yeah. What does it look like for Aztecs here on out? Like going into Imp, uh, you know Bohemians has got a great snowball of units. You know, you got you know, hand cannoneers, you got um, bombard cannons. Uh, or hoof nice i'm curious what kind of composition you want to go for with aztecs here slam i'm gonna blow your mind when i answer this i, I can't wait right it's just monks and skirms nothing else 
What do you think about that? That's great. I like that. I really do. <laughs> what, but with, with, as that's what blue is doing, right? Um, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But Bohemian's infantry, um, is not too bad though. It sucks. Is it? I'm, it sucks. I think, I'm pretty sure they, I'm pretty oh, I thought sure they had champion. Great. <laughs> Actually, I think they, Sorry. I think they do maybe have champion. Okay. So, so, okay. So let me, let me tell people why I said this. I've seen this matchup on arena like a dozen times and skirm monk you have the monks to convert the cannons you have skirms which are superior against any of the ranged units the bohemians are going to add the bohemian cav is not good enough to beat the strong aztec skirms and then the uh like the champions get in the mix and you mix in like let's sorry add like five jags and get a couple conversions and suddenly you're, you're winning the fight anyways i actually think this is a really good yeah. matchup for aztecs long term okay yeah i i love how they're all setting up in the middle now with the castles but that dreaded wood line is just going to be so annoying for uh yeah red and blue a knight well what's interesting is that if the treb is on the way or bomber cannon's on the way for sigismund he will have the edge in the initial treb war here and he, he is making a bomber cannon immediately so it's very likely mm -hmm. that we will have the situation we mentioned where like Sigismund has all the gold in the middle, and then Khazraou has the outside, but has the relics. Yeah, and, and yeah, if Red keeps that in mind, yeah, there may be some annoying monks that may come out, but they're eventually going to, you know, dwindle out a little bit here because of the, the lack of gold. Yeah, that's a fair point, yeah. That four relics is still not going to be enough to compare with all the gold income that the Bohemians are going to have towards the middle. Now... I don't think Sigismund sees that castle right now. I think he actually sees the outpost, but not the castle. I could be wrong, but he must be mm -hmm. missing it because he's not targeting it right now. Yep, he doesn't see it. Sees the Vils trying to chop through. Bombard cannons can take down entire cities, but they cannot take out a tiny tree. So there's no uh, risk here <laughs> in doing <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Super nice for for uh, Siggy, just the, the instant Bombard can rain to Imp because he got that early chemistry built with Bohemians, which you can get in Castle Age, obviously. Yep. This will be interesting. There's no... I, I was thinking maybe some stone walls on the side would be helpful. If you're pushing middle, you don't want a headache from the sides, but the headache is coming from both sides, and these will be at lateral skirms, so they have extra range, extra attack, very hard to deal with with anything Sigismund has available right now. And Khazraou has positioned his trebs wonderfully on the side of his own castle. And he's trebbing that castle. And the Bombard Cannon from Sigismund can't do much in the middle without getting converted by monks. Yeah. I, I feel like if that... I keep mentioning that wood line. But if that wood line wasn't there, I, I think Bohemians would, would maybe, you know, be able to push or be much more efficient at, you know, making ground here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe not, actually, because those monks keep coming out and they keep converting those Bombard Cannons. Couple knights there from Sigismund. He wants to go knights against the Skirms, but it's it feels like desperation if you're going for some knights here with the Bohemians. The Skirms are doing so much damage. Sides are still open. Khazraou's at 200 pop. Khazraou's ability to macro slam is insane yeah. like I... it felt like he had a slight lead before then it turned into a solid lead of 20 bills now he's 40 bills ahead like what in the world is this you know yeah i don't know i was thinking like because sometimes hera can do some i mean hera can really make use of any unit to be honest but sometimes he's very good with skirms and early imp and everything and i thought him he's like oh could this mm -hmm. be hera still and i'm thinking ah that's a that could still be a stretch i have no idea but <laughs> i just want to pick a name and be right t90 i'm, I'm getting, <laughs> I, just, I just i just i just don't know so one of these players yeah right well now. i mean according to according to the votes we saw hera on day one but we hadn't seen leary we hadn't mm -hmm. seen viper we hadn't seen Yo yet today, or yet at all in this tournament. And like, there's only so many possible names remaining. So like Viper comes to mind, Hera comes to mind if people were wrong about Vasco de Gama on day one. But it's just the consistency in which Khazrao is booming and pressuring. It's just ridiculous. So we do have Eagles now. There's oh. not many hand cannons anymore. These Eagles have Garland Wars, so lots of extra attack. And 
I don't think That's the Eagles are actually going to do much at all here. But it is a nice switch to get some raids in. I, I, I love seeing those kind of unit composition switches because it's like Red's thinking, okay, uh, there's a lot of skirms coming out. Let's make the counter unit. And then Blue is like, well, let's get the counter unit going. And... Um, it's almost good just to always get the next unit going, whether you see the opponent yeah. making the unit you want to counter. Because you know, like, it, the high, level's high enough that players are going to counter, so you counter and counter this and counter that, and GG. GG. Well, it turned into a boom game, and it, it really felt like the, the deciding factor for me in this game was that Sigismund, probably in all of his practice, probably from what he assumed people would do on the map, he simply assumed his opponent would cut through to the middle and he could pressure him. And his opponent never cut through to the middle. By the time he yeah. got the pressure on Khosrow, Khosrow had four relics and then the economy and slam. I, I just thought of one interesting little point, actually, when I was saying all that. Didn't, wasn't it Sigismund that actually prevented Khosrow from cutting and opening up the middle with the archers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, he, he kind of did, which... I mean, looking back to it, I'm like, oh, maybe yeah. it would have been better for him to let his opponent cut through to the middle so his, his mm -hmm. gunpowder could have ran right through the middle. I don't know. It's just kind of fun to yeah, think no, on good it. Point. I, was, I was a little slow on that one. I'm like, and? And then I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes sense now, yeah. It's like, no, don't come out. And, you know, let's not engage. And then five minutes yeah. later, okay, all right, can I come in now or what? <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what it was, actually. And by the time uh, Sigismund was ready, Khosrow was, was fully boomed. So Khosrow up 3-1. And Khosrow has Arabia and Bay remaining as home maps. Maps that I'm sure he's pretty comfortable on after his performance on High Tides. Sigismund uh, lost on Hidden Forts, which I'm sure will be reflected here in a moment. Uh, and then Cup is the final map remaining. So with Cup being the final map remaining for Sigismund, we'll see if he wants to be creative there or if he feels like if he has any chance to win the series, he's got to go over to Bay or, uh, or Arabia. But um, I would say Civ-wise here, Slam. And I guess skill-wise as well, you would assume Sigismund is going to be capable on Arabia. And I think Portuguese, Incas, both two solid picks to go to Arabia if he wanted. Yeah, there's definitely some... Pretty good Civ still left out there. Like uh, Malians, for example, for Cosro, that's just an overall great Civ. Same with Portuguese for for Sigmund. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing Incas is probably going to be Arabia for um, Sigmund. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I actually and Malians is probably going to be more so for the uh, any any map you know where it involves a lot of you know building building foundations early. So um like docks and barracks and such so i um yeah i'm very yeah if we see cup i think it would be koreans for Kozrao, and i'm sensing a theme because um let's see it was king stephen earlier today who went koreans on cup and then we also had uh another cup koreans game in on the first day it was um Ooh, Vasco de Gama went for Cup and Koreans on the draft. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, it, it, I wonder if it's like a planned thing from multiple people or if it's possible that like a certain group of people, maybe some teammates think that that's really Ooh, strong theme. and they're in separate brackets. So we got the goths so maybe on um evacuation which is common and now you're saying koreans on cup yeah yeah but then it's also like the goths on the evac we had i'm trying to think of the players that actually did it so we had a player that we had gregory do that and then we had uh shoot um <laughs> I forget already. Slip. I forget what it was. There, I'm trying to listen, look through. Yeah, there's a lot, and I for a while there, I'm like, uh, how is T90 able to pull up all these names? Oh, Stephen. Well, I mean, usually it's from my memory, but for this, I had to go back. So it was Stephen, and well, maybe maybe we shouldn't talk about the overlap right now, but there's definitely some strategic overlap, which I think when you're trying to guess people will be fun 
for later on. Uh, anyways, we're going to move on to game number five here, where hopefully Sigismund, for your sake, Slam, will turn it around. But I warned oh, you, dude, if you right. pick yeah. a player as a, my co-caster, it's not going to work out for you. That's what I've learned. Oh, yeah, it's not looking too good for Siggy. So we got Hindustanis so and Malians. Yeah, so... Yeah, a fun matchup here. Cool I think Malians are, as we continue to run into each other, it's totally my fault. Uh, I think the Malians are a little bit more of a common pick, uh, a bit more flexible. They can combine the archers with knights and castle age. I, I think Malians are like a do no wrong civilization. I think they're one of the best civs in the game right now. The Hindustanis I consider to be more matchup oriented. Like Hindustanis versus Franks matchup might feel good because uh, Franks are a bit more one sided towards knights. Or uh, Hindustanis against like Mayans can be great because the Mayans are stuck on archers or eagles. But what what do you think about the matchup on Arabia we have here? Hindustanis against Malian Slam. Yeah, I thought for a while, sort of like Hindustanis went through a period, or or when they were Indians as well. Uh, they're you know before there was change to Hindustanis, everyone was using them for Arabia or quite quite often, right? And then I think there was a few changes, and now not as often, but. Are they sort of making a comeback again? Was there something changed that I wasn't aware of? Or are you seeing Hindustanis more now? Yeah, um, I think what changed is people stopped going for the two militia drush as much, which I don't think suited them. Uh, and then yeah. people started to realize that the uh, having additional scouts when your opponent walls with the Hindustanis can actually give you some nice value because you could destroy their their walls and their houses and whatnot quite quickly so um yeah. i think it took time for people to for that to really click and now i'm seeing situations where we saw it earlier today where someone even if the opponent's walled will still go up to like six or seven scouts it protects the map and then they could just like melt a house with the scouts and really force reactions from their opponent unlike another civilization can yeah i i personally i i would prefer Malians here. I just think there's just so many benefits to them. Uh, they're just, they're so mm -hmm. smooth in Dark Age. If you want to go for Man at Arms later or, you know, uh, whatever it may be, right? So the gold is, the gold income is a little bit better and the, the cheaper buildings, um, everything's just so smooth about them. So you can go into like a follow up with a range and Look you'll at... just, yeah, love it. Look at the scouting with the sheep here. He's got four sheep scouting. That is something we could maybe do our homework on. Kazrao is APMing it up here, like scouting everything. Usually yeah. you're scouting a little bit, but I don't know if people are scouting with four in a tournament match that frequently. It is really going crazy I mean, there. But I'm loving the vision Blue's getting, though. It's just, it's, it's super, <laughs> super nice, man. But I don't think he's pushed any deer, which is fine, which is fine. You scout your enemy early, it's is just it? as important. <laughs> well i love pushing deer be but... honest slam would you would you prefer to have all the deer or would you prefer have all the deer to have okay all right good i was gonna say a, a billion dollars but it's good to know where you sit on that topic so yeah uh, what what is being oh, yeah. wealthy it's if you deep. don't have all the deer underneath your tc that's what i say so <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, they may rush me. Like, that may be surprised by a rush. My villagers may all be dying at my wood line, but just give me the deer. <laughs> well, there's some sheep going back home for Khazra. So this is the reward for not pushing the deer and moving forward early. Thanks, Sigismund knows those sheep are on the move here. Sigismund is up. Uh, Khazra is going to be up as well. And yeah, there's some win rates the Hindustanis and yeah I don't really know what shifted I think it was at NAC5 when uh well no I, I embarrassed myself quite a lot at NAC5 actually because the first two days the Hindustanis were losing and typical caster I'm just like I don't see what people have here I don't understand why people are doing this <laughs> and then suddenly once the Hindu yeah. start Hindustanis started winning I was like telling people oh I I think I see it now I think I see it which is just yeah this is more about such a gamble as, but... as as a as a caster because it's so rewarding when you when you can predict something and you know about a save yeah. or situation and it follows through and you're like yeah uh, i knew it and then it can go the other way as well okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna say on the prediction front that 
if the Viper map hacks were more than a meme, more than a joke, which of course it is just a joke, Kazrao is the Viper confirmed because those golds are very, very good for him on this generation. We've got the main gold on the back, the two golds in the back, and then you've got Sigismund with golds more forward here. So I don't know where people sit yeah. on the map hack situation here, but Kazrao certainly has a lot to work with. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. 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 Oh. Okay. All right. Sigismund stealing some sheep oh. here. Very nice find. I mean, two of those are his sheep, but still. Yeah. Still the idle time, too, for Vils and, and such. It's, it's very annoying. This is mm. something that Hera doesn't, started to do recently. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't Sigismund... Hera do that all the time? Yeah, he started the trend, and I'm going to say yeah. it's not him because the scout died. And also because Sigismund uh, accidentally ran underneath the TC. I don't think that was part of the plan there. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I actually yeah, I have... Okay, I'm going to make a statement on players here. Slam. I, I can't keep yeah. my mouth shut on this. Okay. I think Vasco de... I said Vasco de Gama on day one was, was either... Was thinking Hera or Hart. And I think we might have found the the other side of that either hera or heart here I'm, I'm leaning more towards vasco de gama on day one being hera and this here mm. being heart i'm just getting seeing some For some similar Kazra? tendencies with how they pick their maps and how they play yes maybe a leary yeah. actually oof yeah i completely forgot about leary man there's so many names i but who's not who's mentioned the least uh that's a great question i think like sebastian is probably for a player that's so aggressive sebastian is probably mentioned the least out of everyone so far in hidden cup yeah so we got um malian's going for scouts um usually do they follow up with a range or not with malian's i don't really know how you know, Malian should always be played, but I, I think it's pretty versatile. Um, mm -hmm. oh, is that a black? That's a range, I think. There. Okay. Who builds their archer range behind gates and not as part of the wall here? That's that's a little bit interesting. I think a lot of players are going to build their range as part of the wall and not go for the gate. I like the gate. It's just something to pick up on here. I don't know who. I mean, I'm trying to think of a player that's trying to be like sneaky or something, but I don't yeah, know. just to throw a name. Like, would Gan Ganji do that or Sato? I don't know. Possibly. Hard, I feel like would normally put it out front, but I mean, maybe we're looking too. I don't know. <laughs> Range placement. <laughs> we're, we're yeah. We're, we're really I, getting into I the mean, weeds just, here. <laughs> I know. I know. But. uh if you add it all together, I think we can confirm with certainty eventually. Yeah, I think with the hidden range gonna, though, tomorrow is going to be interesting. The, the hidden range. Sorry, go on. Yeah, did Red even see this coming out? Because like he's prepared skirms. I don't know if he saw Blue's range, so he must must have been a shot in the dark, thinking that. Um, uh, oh, I got the sieves confused earlier, by the way. I said Malians was going scouts, but it was actually Hindustanis, which actually makes sense now. Um, but yeah, I don't think... It's okay. I didn't notice, but now I know, so... You didn't I, notice? It, okay. It's okay. Apology expected. <laughs> <laughs> or apology, apology accepted, rather. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. But yeah, Red Red just built the range and went, went for skirms. I don't know if he saw Blue's range, Blue's range um, but good job for Red. Just expecting what was going to be coming. Is that what do you get that a lot as a Canadian? Instead of apology accepted, <laughs> oh no, people just say apology, <laughs> apology expected. Is that something? <laughs> I, I love how it was like, like I was waiting for what you're gonna say, and like I just could sense in the air that there was gonna be a follow up after that. Um, sorry, <laughs> apologies. I uh, uh, well, I yeah, will we, say we, we say the, we the, the micro apology. here for Sigismund, the Sigismund micro here has left a lot to be desired um Kazrael had four spears now granted they're malian spears there's four spears and like five or six archers and while this will probably be cleared up the majority of the scouts went down 
the, a lot of the skirms went down, and and that to me was not a fight that was good for Sigismund at all. And, and behind this, is oh. going to add more archers. He's going to mix in some scouts and, and could be in a really solid position with this next attack. Yeah, e even... Oh, we got a little market going up here as well for Khosrow. Um, But yeah, that was a really good engagement by by Blue. You can just tell a little bit of a... I mean, you can't, you can't look into score difference too much sometimes, but um, it is definitely looking good for him right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the archers are being rather sneaky at the moment. And he chose not to make the scouts. So sometimes you'll see the scouts come from a player in Khosrow's position just to push back skirms. Yeah. What I find interesting here, T90, is Red keeps adding scouts. So he's committing a bit more into Feudal Age. So this is one of those situations where if Blue can hold off for a little bit longer until he gets his, you know, yeah. up to the next age, Red's going to be left behind because he's invested that food in, in, which he cannot go up earlier now. Um, so let's, let's see if blue can hold off here. Yeah, it feels like it just brings me back to that other engagement. Khosrow did such a good job focusing down the opponent's scouts that now Sigismund is adding, has had to add more, right? If the engagement would have gone a bit differently yeah. and some food is saved and Sigismund could maybe have a better castle age time, yeah. those archers could be devastating, but it is walled now. So sometimes players... Maybe this is more old meta slam, but I remember some players back in the day, they would just sit those archers in the corner and they wouldn't move them or show them at all until <laughs> Castle Age. Yeah. I don't know why. Now all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, maybe this could be Viper. I always have thought as Viper as being someone who does a good counterplay when, when he's, you know, under pressure or he, he, he sends some extra units somewhere. Um, for this example, is, like this. This is really smart and really patient. Yeah, putting the arch there. There's a lot of players in the top 16 who would want to attack right now. But, you know, hiding yeah. them, chilling, not taking any losses here. Some great patience here from Khosrow. Yeah, and, and this is a little bit tricky for Red as well because he's he is Hindustani, so it's not like you can just build a couple knights or something just to clear off archers. Um, so he's going to have to find a way to deal with those archers in the back, um, and it's probably not going to be camels. Yeah, do you want to get crossbow and bodkin for nine archers? It doesn't feel the best. You're not going to one-shot villagers with the amount of archers you have on the front. Nice shot from Sigismund to keep... Keep applying some pressure here because yeah. at the very least like with the exception of the crossbows you're not too worried when you see the three archers here a little sloppy there from Khosrow always... loses another crossbow i've always found with a player like leary for example um he don't he always excel so much at just building you know one range and one stable and and just constantly keeping them keeping them producing and then making a nice uh mix of an army um, uh -huh. I don't know if he does that more now, but in the past, I've always respected that. I'm like, wow, he's always got so much army out of just one building of each. Yeah, that's a fair point. Also, Leary wants to rush ballistics early, which we've seen here from Khosrow. Khosrow kills two villagers there with those crossbows. And that knight is actually going to loop the whole way around. This is super annoying. That knight's probably going to yeah. go to where the crossbows are on the wall, which is not an ideal scenario right now for Sigismund. Yeah, and for Red, like, to stop those archers, like, what's his option? Is he going to invest into Skirms? It, skirms is so expensive. On Just off of thought, you're like, oh, just go Skirms, it will be fine. But getting elite Skirms is, it's costly. Yeah, I think maybe he's thinking Camels with upgrades because he gets plus two armor. But this Knight, it, Red knows it's weak. He's trying to hit it, but the Knight gets more value. The Crossbows now dive in killed another villager it's been five villagers killed because Khosrow I think also killed some on the front and oh, wow. wherever it's happening it's just pressure everywhere from Khosrow who's dropping TC number two TC number three, three and just seems so comfortable right now on Arabia slam yeah I'm I'm oh man I hope he still has just one range and one stable uh, there's something the idea behind that I just love because it's so efficient right sometimes if you go yeah. two stables or two ranges there's some idle time but if you just hold the one of each for a little while but make sure they're constantly producing it yep, gives you yep, so much yep. efficiency you can get you can keep eco going and everything you are you are correct that is a very leery thing to do 
um, to go one range, one stable, and and max out on upgrades with those units, and not add the extra military buildings. That, that's a very good call here. Yeah, yeah. And it's tough to really know with Leary because he doesn't. Uh, it, it, it's tricky with him because you don't know what shape he's going to be in. But mm -hmm. I, I think the most obvious version of Leary is on a map like Arabia, and that's precisely what we're seeing right now Ooh. from Kazrael. Wait a second. Was it Cosrow that we were kind of commenting on the maps being a bit more, a bit more open? I don't know. Arabia. Like this, this was his. Yeah. Arabia. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Okay. That's. I'll have to write that down. Yeah. Interesting. Obviously, did land on islands, which I wouldn't associate with Leary. So uh, I'm suddenly convincing myself that that yeah. prediction makes no he... sense. But ended up winning islands, though. Um, like Bengali's was, was a later pick. So maybe, you know, if it was Leary, he'd be thinking, well, you know, I'll just use a later pick for islands. Cause I maybe don't care about that mm -hmm. map as much. At least I don't, at least I think he doesn't care about islands, but yeah. Yeah. Well, this is wonderful stuff right now from Kazra, whoever he is. And he's, he's using this small group of crossbows. It's getting much larger, but yeah. he's using it very effectively so far. Great archer micro. Yeah. And the camels have armor, they have attack, they're hoping to still kill these. They're not a direct counter, they're trying to get around the crossbows. They should be able to with mobility, so they get the hill. There is a problem here though, and it's just you do not have that much attack with camels. So you're losing quite <laughs> yeah. a few camels either way. So when you do the one range, one stable play, once you get your TCs going, this is definitely where you want to start adding military buildings. So I'm sure he's probably adding something. I don't know. Yeah, those two ranges now. I, I don't know if it was going to mm -hmm. be two stables or two ranges, but yeah, because you kind of, you invest a little on the military, but you make it efficient and then you go for eco and then yep. you've got to swing back to military to keep that map control. Yep. And camels from Sigismund, camels really tough unit to raid with which is what i've always found is a problem for hindustanis in these situations yeah they're good at like controlling the map and taking it late game but actually finishing off the opponent or catching up in a game is so difficult oh we got the stone yeah. gate there uh, stone gate and the house here from Kazra. beautiful little oh, trap oh. and he's gonna trap on the other side with the blacksmith no and another side with the university Tell me this can't be one of the biggest names associated with traps again, people. All right. I'm Beautiful sold. Beautiful stuff sold. there. That was a triple. Talk to me, Slam. You're sold, You're sold on who? <laughs> I am so sold. Yeah, it is 100% Sebastian. No, I'm just kidding. It could be Sebastian. <laughs> no, but... It... No, okay. I, leaning towards Viper here, I think. But this okay, still leaning could be towards Sebastian. Viper. He's an upcoming player. He's playing excellent. He Sebastian is looking a whole Sebastian lot like a... Viper right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the idea. But between you know, you got these young guns in here. They they can do that too. I I actually think Sebastian Hart. I think there's just so many players this could freaking be in Slam. It just brings me back to what we said earlier. We should probably shut up about the identities because I know it's just so tough this time. It is so tough this time because everyone's playing so good. Yeah, it just feels like the game is getting uh, more and more optimized. So some players aren't sticking out as much as they used to. Um, so yeah, it's making it a whole uh -oh. lot harder for us. Okay, nobody said doubt over the last few moments. Oh God, oh, that's a oh big God. Hit. That is a really big hit. There's gonna be another one. Oh no. He's got a wall of this bills. This castle could be denied. There's gonna be another Manganel at some point. Maybe camels are on the way. Quick gate, quick wall. Okay. That was fast. Yeah, that, that was, was impressive. Fast. That was yeah. That was... <laughs> yeah. Okay, Castle um, will go I think, up. I think. I think he's gonna be okay. He lost the military, but again, focusing on that avail count. I mean, it's that. That's a significant, significant difference. Yep. And we also have Gabetto on the way. We've got some farming eco being expanded now. Gabetto is actually a great unit against Camel. Crossbow's not that great with Malian's long-term anyways. We've got Relic number two, I believe, coming in for Khosrau somewhere. And I remember when Khosrau almost had all five Relics and know what I was thinking then. There's Relic number two. The yeah. your, your boy Sigismund right now needs to make something it's happen. Not good. It's not yeah. looking good. No, not at all. Um, 
So it does look like Viper, sorry, it does look like Kozrao is on, he's on four TCs currently, which is, okay, they're both on four TCs, but yeah, the eco lead is pretty big right now. Um, what do you, th what do you think we're going to see from Malians going into Imp? Okay. This is coming from the guy who said we have to stop guessing, but I can't help myself. If this is Viper, <laughs> he will actually go Elite Gabetto. I think you think like so? Elite oh, Gabetto, I'm excited. Yeah. I think it's a yeah, really good unit. So. It's a little worrisome against... Um, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely worrisome against hand cannons from Hindustanis, but I could see Elite Gabetto being a long-term option. Like, Gabetto, like yeah. have or something, could be strong. Yeah, what do his Hindustanis have against um, Gabettos? Like, I guess you can go Bombard Cannon. Um, Gabettos just seem really strong, especially once you mix them in with mm -hmm. something else. Yeah, this is a little sloppy here for Khosrow. His opponent's finding some damage here. Khosrow, 50 villager lead. Still trying to mask those Gabettos. It definitely feels like Khosrow... He's ready for this red army to die in a way where he's like... <clears throat> He almost feels like he should have won the fight already. That's how I would describe this engagement. I, I don't know, like yeah. a lazy yeah. engagement almost slam. I don't know if you mm -hmm. ever have those, but. Oh yeah, all the time, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't turn out too well though. It does look like um, Siggy is gonna be up earlier. Um, but again, like the Vill, the Vill difference is got even larger since the last time I checked. So this is just gonna leave mm -hmm. so many options open for uh, cause row you could probably get this point get away with many unit compositions whether it be you know camels or gabettos yeah and could probably just still like win casually here. casually building this mining camp even though the fight's not completely won yet this is just like i'm gonna win eventually again it it doesn't feel that concise it doesn't feel that calculated right now for cause row. but again maybe it's because he feels like he can do whatever Mixing in some camels again, making more Gabetto again. Full castle age for him. We do have imp for Sigismund. I mean, Sigismund is staying in yeah. this. Yeah, I'm. I'm surprised that um, Kazrao is. He's, he's going for more uh, castle age or blacksmith upgrades, and he's not too rushed to get into imperial age. He did. Did he can't? I don't know if mm -hmm. he canceled one or not. Oh, no, he didn't. Or I think it went through scale barding armor, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe he just wants to do more damage early on in Castle Age. Sometimes staying in one age is not the end of the world. Yeah, I want to see. At, at some point, I'd really like to see the buildings next to the castle that Kazarel built on the left side. If these buildings are not spaced, now granted, Viper might want to hide his identity here. Viper's got this idea of spacing his buildings. That's those aren't Viper yeah. stables right there, Slam. Those are not Viper are, stables. Or, they are not spaced. Oh, they're evenly. not. No, they're not. Oh, nope, boy. they're definitely okay. not. Wait, are you being serious? I, I Does think... he actually space him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He always has one tile gap oh. between a lot of his buildings, and it's always like somewhat satisfying and orderly. I would say. I, I'm I'm serious. Okay, okay. that's my feeling. I, I okay. You. No, that's great. Yeah, I'm not being sarcastic. I, it was crazy. Cause at that same moment, I was thinking, oh man, the wave. I you know, it blew with that castle to get map control so early. I know other players do it too, but it just I, I was like, this has got to be. That is, you're the same right. Second you said it's the, not. You are right crazy. though. You're right. No, I 100 agree with you. But there's another player, <laughs> as we've gotten very guessy in this series, uh, because it feels like Kazra is going to win, who is known for building castles that doesn't go up. And apparently, this is doubt versus doubt. What have we oh, been doing? No, people? we're what back have we to doubt predicting? again. It is clearly I doubt can't. versus doubt. Both castles fail. Both castles are a struggle. I suppose maybe Emperor's castle will go up, but yeah, oh my goodness. I mean, there's a whole lot more army on the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, it, like the castle age army that from Khosrau is just doing so much damage. Um, I just didn't expect to have like see so much dominance in castle age still. Usually, you know, someone hits imp and it's like they start taking control right away, but yeah, it doesn't look like that here. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, Bracer just kicked, so now you're going to see those Cav Archers become a bit stronger. But it was just a lot of additional army here from Khosrow, and just confidence with his eco. He's flying right now, and he will complete that castle. And these Cav Archers are getting their kills, but pretty soon Khosrow will be upgrading these units. And I think we could see yeah. Alika Beto, which was the thing we talked about. We could see Camel. Mm -hmm. We could see endless opportunities here for Khosrow. 
Yeah, look at the the extra little placement on those gabettos on the right too. You know, like that's just that's just an extra thought. You know, um, to do yeah. something like that, just place little unit placements, castles here and there. It just seems like Blue just is ready just to secure the win. He, he knows he has it, um, but he's just making sure and taking his time. Yeah, agreed. And really expanding now. Um, not rushing to build the other castles. Uh, certainly could see more of them. Getting the upgrades mm -hmm. that we're missing here. And I, I think Khazra on those, this is probably it. I, I've won this game, but poor yeah. Emperor Sigismund doesn't want to be knocked out of Hidden Cup. So it doesn't want to accept that the dream is dead just yet. Yeah, and Siggy had, he played some good matches as well. Like for this game too, it could have gone head to head, but I think it's just that one small mistake of, you know, maybe investing a little bit too much into Fetal Age, a few extra scouts, yep. you know, that didn't help pay off. And then all of a sudden the Malians just get up earlier and they take off and they get their TCs down and, you know. Yeah, and that's that's what the best, the best Arabia players will do to you. If you over invest, they'll kill you in Castle. Or in this case, Imp. Yeah, like, they absolutely. would just out-boom you completely. You have no chance. That's what Arabia has become, especially a version like this, which is a bit safer. And, yeah, unfortunately for Sigismund, there, there's going to be light cav everywhere. There's going to be castles everywhere. And this is just complete and utter domination from Khazra, who has played mm -hmm. so amazing with Eco. It might actually be the best boomer so far of any of the players yeah. in Hidden Cup. I, I remember, like, five TCs from Lithuanians. Here we had five TCs castles everywhere and yeah this this cav archer army is not long for this world will be killed castles will go up then could be the end of the game right here yeah and there's just there's so much going on from from Khazra on the map like all these extra details where i'm thinking um like just the castle on the right on the left a unit behind the wood um a lot of uh complexity here yeah, Khazrael wins the series, and it was a dominant display from Khazrael. Made 68 Gabetto, 52 crossbows, and 51 light cav. Beautiful balance there, and I'm very curious to see the rest of Khazrael, because Khazrael, we only had five games, and we didn't see too many of some of the other maps we've seen in the other sets. A very, seri uh, very curious, excuse me, uh, it's been a long day, to find out how Khazrael performs in the quarters. And, uh, of course, we know that Khazrao is going to be up against King Steven, who was an amazing player earlier on in the day. Uh, just boom, domination, eco game from Khazrao there, Slam. And we're going to go back through mm -hmm. this series. So, so because we're going to do a vote soon. People need to vote. How this started was Khazrao landed on islands, so went for the transport ship. Almost denied that castle, but kind of the thinking here, Slam, was if mm -hmm. the landing is decently successful the late game with the Bengalis on water would win. And I don't know. What are you thinking about Bengalis on islands after this? Yeah, I mean, I, all of a sudden I realized they're actually a really good Sith for islands, especially as the game goes on, because we mentioned so much about the healing of the ships, um, even the yep. extra vills. Um, again, though, I'd have to see a few more games because I don't know how much we should give respect to the landing. Maybe the landing mm -hmm. um, did, you know, set Cosro much further ahead than the Civ itself. Yeah. That's fair. It was a really successful landing. It was very well timed. I think maybe Sigismund thought that maybe a bit of Italians overconfidence could have happened there for Sigismund. Because mm -hmm. I thought the yeah. relics were good. Maybe the thinking was if I have five relics, my opponent doesn't. And I'm mm -hmm. Italians and I'll dominate in a galleon war, but it didn't happen. Sigismund almost bounced back though. Like it was getting a little bit even again, but sometimes it's hard to see the you know the earlier advantage you have kind of come through as the game goes on and this was a beautiful trap by the way by six sigmund mm -hmm. yep you know another thing to mention from the start here granted the first islands game in the main event both players went yeah. double dock into like market blacksmith fast castle which i was expecting a lot mm -hmm. more like double dock into the third into the fourth dock lots of navy yeah they were both very relaxed about how they did things on islands yeah, it's like they were expecting one of the, you know, one of them to land almost. So it almost makes yeah. you wonder if you just commit with three docks at one point. Um, but uh, well, I mean, these guys have been practicing. I, I don't know what's best, but uh, I'm going to assume <laughs> that the two dock approach that they're doing 
is probably the yeah, right yeah. way at this moment. I'm not laughing at you, Slam. I'm laughing at the chat and the highlights. <laughs> During game one, there were a bunch of comments. Someone said two medium players, nothing better. And then very oh. much like the very first thing I saw in chat on the highlight medium. here, it was the Viper versus Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you gotta love this it. This is great. It's great. I love how it just can, it's swinging all over the place. Um, there's no certainty. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this was a crazy game, man. Like this, let's not forget oh. about Sigismund's win here. This was crazy. Yep. Denies this castle. We're thinking like Japanese cab archers and samurai. What can the Celts do? Because we are so one track yeah. minded as casters. We're thinking Wodies and the Wode Raiders mm -hmm. played their role, but it was the siege that finished off the samurai. That was a great moment right there. Like, I just love how Red just parked those scorpions behind the trebs, fought on the left with the woads. It, perfect engagement. Um, you know, sure, the set went, you know, to, for Cosro, but uh, Siggy did some brilliant moves. Yeah. And here, it did feel this like is where he lost didn't one bill. really know. Yeah, th this is where you predicted one bill would die. <laughs> it was a brilliant prediction oh, slam. Shoot. Why don't they pull away the, but, uh, the highlight soon? Why are they stop? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, uh, stop. even though Slam was wrong and he can't bear to admit it, um, I think that the approach from Kozrael was so smooth here. Here was the yeah. trap. Little patience on the trap there, waiting to wait till the Knights went in a bit further and placing the Palisade, converting the Knights. But behind this, man, mm -hmm. we, we eventually saw five TCs from Kozrael, which is why so many people think it's got to be one of the greediest players in the game. Yeah. Again, on that previous game, um, Cosro kind of took off with the earlier Castle Age and extra TCs. That, I kind of seen that theme. Same with the last match yep. and that previous one we're looking at. Yeah, this one too. Lots of aggression from Sigismund. And by the time he got over to Cosro's base, Cosro had collected 5,000 more resources and was prepared. This was an interesting fight. In some ways, mm -hmm. seeing the monks go down, you might think this is bad for Cosro, but he, he did push back all the siege because of this. And yeah. then an imp, it was just, he just needed skirms and a couple monks, and that was the death of the Bohemians. Definitely a, like a promising strat on paper when you think of Bohemian hand cannoneers and castle age. Like it can be deadly, but it just, he didn't seem to be able to execute that one with the wood line. This is a fight. Some of the, some of the poor moments happened just before this. This is a fight where I think Sigismund was expecting to clear this already. And this micro, yeah. the distraction there from Kazra was sick. And he just got a lot of value. Now, did end up losing these archers eventually, but he just wanted to get to Castle. And in Castle mm -hmm. Age, his eco was flying it again with a 20 vil lead. Yeah. So, yeah, in between those two scenes, you can just, as you mentioned, the, the eco difference. And again, that would, I think, the kind of unseen thing is the added scouts, perhaps, and staying in Fetal Age a little bit longer and not getting that damage done. Easier to see yeah. from our end because you can see the whole map, but perhaps uh, Sigmund you know saw an opportunity where he could maybe you know engage somewhere okay so this oh. was maybe the most highlight worthy trap so far of hidden cup five we had a university a gate a house and a blacksmith involved in that and that's where people started to scream must be viper then this happened and i saw a whole lot of doubts for some yeah. reason but uh you know the castle was still gonna go up yeah. for Kosro that was really the biggest problem he had in that game and then these quick walls on the castle were we, we both said oh that was pretty fast at the same time uh when those walls went yeah. up on the on the castle so but yeah yeah I'm I'm not convinced this is Viper I think we haven't seen Viper oh, yet, no. and I think we see him tomorrow <laughs> yep I think this okay, is I think Kosro right, is Sebastian right. yep well, then he's playing I, I great. think people he's underrate Sebastian massively games. Yeah. yeah, I think I, I, my prediction coming into Hidden Cup was that Sebastian and Hart would be the two players for the qualifiers that would re that that people would confuse with some of the biggest names. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm curious to see what people think on the votes, which we're going to do next, guys. We're going to have the polls pop up and you can vote. Don't worry, we're not going to, you know, hunt you down if you get it wrong. Please tell me who you thought the winner was. Kozrao, vote away in the chat. Uh, again, to my knowledge, this does not work on YouTube stream yet. It may in the future. It may not. We're working on it, but uh, it does work on Twitch. Just vote. Was Kozrael the Viper? Was it somebody else out there? Give me your thoughts. Oh, Tina, I just want to throw it. Just like Dave was had some power. He just started throwing out a name or something, and people just yeah, started going it. that way.
Well, I mean, we all noticed uh, cause route. No, it's not, you know, it's not going to work now. I mean, <laughs> basically telling everyone, oh, I don't want to try and trick you. So here, come into my <laughs> trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I should, I should have never said anything, but yeah, I think, I think a lot of us were feeling Viper on that one in all seriousness. Yeah. Um, I can, maybe not so, you T90, but. So the thing that I'll say, having done hidden cups in the past, I've never really felt like it was Viper in the first round because I was expecting like super 120% in shape Viper dominant display and Viper especially these days, he can have a slower uh, build in a tournament. So mm -hmm. I, that definitely could have been Viper, uh, maybe a bit of an easier matchup for him, more of a relaxed situation um, where we didn't see his peak all the time, or, or maybe a Viper who wants to hide who he is. But Viper, three-time Hidden Cup champion, apparently yeah. is Kozrao at the top mm -hmm. vote there, according to the community. Yeah. Well, I mean, with how much we were mentioning Viper on the last game, I mean, I'm not too surprised, but um, yeah, it's so hard to say. Yeah. Well, so that one, that one might actually be the easier one to speculate on slam. Then you have Emperor on the other side who I feel like his draft in some situations was very yo, but I felt mm, like his yeah. level, even if it's Viper on the other side, would maybe be a bit higher there. I've got to lean towards players who maybe we don't know as much about this hidden cup. Uh, maybe a player who came in via the qualifier I could see. Maybe like a Jordan there, possibly. Um, maybe I could see a Barrels. I could yeah. see I could see a heart on an off day, a Ganji, a Sato, one of those guys. Yeah, so I've been yeah, I don't know. So before this match, I've kind of been watching some of Mihai, Mihai's games and sort of what he's been liking to play. And the yeah. maps he chose were kind of catering towards, I think, what Mihai was really um, kind of into with the games I was watching. Um, okay. So I'm really actually getting a super strong vibe for Mihai right now. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Dave, yeah, I, I mean, mean T90, um, that meter is not going up at all. And uh, <laughs> you no, tried. I, 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 I tried my best. Uh, okay, so <laughs> never mind. <laughs> that thing, that thing didn't flinch. <laughs> and I called you I Dave also, too. I fell, I fell apart yeah, within all... like ten seconds there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me when I get four nights into my base. Um, I, I think. Uh, I think ACCM is actually a solid shout there. If ACCM is out of shape, it has an off day. I mean, up against Viper, maybe senses it's Viper for various factors, but people are saying that is the Viper against Hart. But it was very close. It was not close at all. We had yeah. Sato on there, and, and yo, I think Sato has been second place on like four of these votes so far in Hidden Cup 5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was pretty uh, low percentages and quite even. Just goes to show you that, yeah, we maybe we, we have no idea who that is. Well, we can use process of elimination. Uh, if we could go to the bracket that has all the community votes so far. Community, we've done a great job. We haven't voted in the same person more than once so far, which is impressive to me. I'm also a little disappointed in you guys. Like, I thought it'd be funny if you did, but no, everyone's taking this very seriously. So according to this, right, if this is correct, which I highly doubt, but if it is correct, we are missing Sebastian? Sato, Leary, Yo, Sebastian Sato, Leary, Yo has a real ring to it, and those would be bangers tomorrow, like absolute yeah. bangers. I think. So, um, I I don't know, dude. I mean, I think there's a very good chance tomorrow we see a series and everyone starts rethinking this whole thing. I think it all falls apart. Like if we yeah. see a more Viper esque performance from somebody tomorrow everyone's gonna have to think who was Kazra, and then if Kazra was uh, that guy who was who was vasco de gama on day one you know i can't take oh, it man. anymore t90 that and with how fun. much yo has been has been mentioned i'm surprised he's he's not on there yet yeah that's true well it was that yo accm situation i think uh the player everyone thought was yo 
they didn't want to accept that Yo could have lost in the first round. So they maybe leaned a little bit more towards ACCM because they have similar tendencies. But uh, anyways, it was fun slam. I had a great time. Thank you so much for joining, my friend. Yeah, yeah I appreciate the invite. It was That was quite uh, quite fun. So appreciate it, T90. And uh, guys, thanks for all the uh, all the support for everything about AOE, all right? All right, guys. All right, see you, Slam. All right, salutes in chat, please, for Slam. That was a fun cast. I had a great time. It's become a Hidden Cup tradition to have a Slam cast, and it's been too long. It's been too long since we've had a Hidden Cup. So, um, listen, we I got a little guessy there towards the end, but it felt inevitable Kazra was going to win, uh, and, and that, I think, is why I did that. It's so tough. I always look back. I say, man, you should have casted the game more and not guessed, but the guessing is kind of part of it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the series. A very, very crazy day. We had um, a lot of unique games, like Celts winning, Goths with his crazy strategies. Uh, you got different things on hidden forts. Like the, the variety of strategy has been amazing. So uh, on top of the guessing, I've been very happy with how the games have gone so far. Guys, listen, the support's been unreal. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've had subs flying in throughout every day. Thank you, everyone who contributed to that. Um, thanks for the love and just the energy. I know that as the chat's moving, it's uh, usually most people aren't chatting, right? So um, just collectively, even if I'm not seeing your name, thank you for watching so far and giving Hidden Cup a good start. Um, to go to the bracket now and talk through the schedule, okay? Because it's starting to get serious. We have one more round of 16 day, which is tomorrow. It is Alfred the Alpaca against Jan Zizka, okay? Big, big, big names coming up. People have, have latched on to Alfred ever since he was voted in by the community. And then Jan Zizka. Now, people say the people's hero. I don't know who they're referring to there. Could be either. Uh, very well could be either. Um, and then also um, Alexios Komnenos versus Robert Giscard, which is a historical matchup, FYI. Yes, a historical matchup, which uh, we'll have more information on, obviously, tomorrow, which is just fantastic. So, ah, oh, man, if you want to support the show, best way to do so is subscribe with Twitch Prime. I don't have this many viewers that frequently. So if you've got it, take a look at it. We'll add more emotes this week. I'm uh, going to have a game planning session on what we can add as you know, a little bit more fun for you guys. Um, but like the, the bracket said, we have the round of 16 tomorrow. We have two days of quarterfinals. Then we have the semis. And then we have the final. And that's it. Well, technically third place, final, and then the big reveal. Um, starting tomorrow, we should have some more special videos for you guys, which if you've watched Hidden Cup in the past. Actually, I don't want to speak out of turn here. Maybe you have to wait an extra day. But we, we're adding more things into the show. So throughout the day. Uh, you guys can have more entertainment. And I expect the games to get better. And I think what gets really fun, if you've never watched one before, or it's been a while, coming in towards the quarterfinals, those guys didn't have the info and they didn't have the intel of how their upcoming opponents played at all. But we do. So we can be like, oh my God, this guy prioritized this. Let's see if he tries it again. Best example I'll give of that, for example, is like someone like Tato. A lot of people have voted that Gajimata was Tato. Tato loves the Cumans. Tato would have never, if it wasn't a hidden cup, got Cumans for bypass. Never. But because his opponent didn't know it was him, he was like, oh, I don't think I want to ban it. Poop. Tato takes it first. And, or, or sorry, uh, Gajimata, we still don't know. I still think it could have been someone else. And um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the fun thing when you come to the next round, too, is. They don't really know what they're preparing for. Obviously, to an extent, that changes come the semis, which at that point, of course, is great. Thank you, Attila Tree, for the 25 gifted. Yo, thank you, thank you. Uh, also saw some, some raids flying in from people who finished at the end of that series, casting in Spanish and whatnot. Um, whew, we had a dono from Leros, over 100 bucks that went direct, half went towards the prize pool. Thank you, Leros. Thank you, Camp. Thank you, everybody. Um, I, I, I feel showered with love and support. That's what the prize pool looks like. We are very close to getting the first round losers up above 2K. I think it's very likely we'll end up getting there. Obviously, that is evenly split. Um, when we're bringing in more money, it is evenly split, however, which way towards all the placements. So 
Uh, yeah, someone says new headphones when. When these stop being the most comfortable for casting, I will get new headphones. Maybe we'll set a sub goal for new headphones so I don't have to look like a nerd in front of you guys. But uh, that's going to be it for me today. Sorry, the start to the day was a little bit weird. I had a pounding headache. Uh, I'm going to try and, and make sure I hydrate up so I'm good tomorrow, but everything should be good. More games tomorrow. Final uh, round of 16 matchup. And guys, please tell your friends. Tell your friends about Hidden Cup. Let them know what's happening. Let them know what you're watching. If you haven't talked to them in a couple of years, cool. Talk to them. If they're like, dude, you're weird. We stopped talking for a reason. Good. You weren't talking to them anyways. It's all good. We're saved, right? Um, I'm going to need all your friends. I'm going to need people who are interested. Obviously, you, don't, you want people to stay um, to, to break Hidden Cup 4's record. So you guys were the start. And uh, thank you for being that start. Final thing on the topic of like spreading the message of Hidden Cup because I'm incentivizing you to spread the message. There's the potential to give back. If you go down below the stream, there's a giveaway panel. And if you click that giveaway panel, you can enter in a bunch of different ways. And one of the ways that you get an extra uh, like entry into that is by retweeting the tweet, which is like 60 seconds that explains what Hidden Cup is. Now, you might not have a Twitter presence or a Twitter account at all. And maybe you're making your Twitter account now so you can get an extra entry. But I thought it was smart, all right? I thought it was smart to try and get the word out there in that way. Um, that way people can see this and be like, oh, that game? Oh, that's the concept? And then that's basically it, okay? What's a Twitter? You're a Twitter. That's what you are. You're, you're a freaking Twitter, okay? Cool. Thank you, guys. Normally, I would sit here and I would answer questions at the end of streams, and I very much want to, but it's been a long day. And we have like 20,000 people watching. So I am going to not do that because that would be very, very overwhelming. Uh, if you want to watch any of the action that you missed today, we are starting a rerun on stream immediately after I go offline on, here on Twitch side. So if you want to chill out with rerun chat, that'll be live too. YouTube, you have to wait for the videos. Sorry about that. But guys, day four of Hidden Cup, final day of the round of 16 should be tomorrow. I'm telling you, I'm not convinced we saw Viper or Leary yet. I'm not convinced. I think tomorrow's going to be insane. We could have a big matchup. We'll definitely have good games. We know that much. See you guys then. Thank you. Opening to the side of the house wall and is keeping a close eye on things to see if a castle is going to go up there. Now, we'll get that information. We'll see the castle foundation. It would be interesting to see if these players stay in this fight. There's lots of situation, mm -hmm. but power drops here from King Steven. The Conquistadors are oh, way too close to these towers. It's it's a doubt tower times two. And uh, we now have another tower here from King Steven. So the oh King my goodness, there's no potential to repair this castle yet. The villagers are quarantined inside, and it's a cavalier skirmisher. Too early to speculate, but things are not looking good for Slim. Obviously, it could be the most important moment of this person's career, right? But there are two players who are known to love unique units and who are known to not resign when they are dead. Yeah, it's a lot of units, and, and this is not something we have seen throughout the qualifier and even the main event so far. I wonder if Slim will think of the fact that if his opponent has a dock, he needs to be characterized by an enemy transition and immediately goes into the market. Oh man, that tower is needed here for King Steven. You could lose villagers, the tower will likely go up. They're defending on water and land right now. It feels like the Steven to take wood here. I mean, if a demo can get through, oh, the demo gets through and the demo lands. And a lot of wood available on them and great investment onto the Navy here by King Steven. There's... From our perspective, there are monks there, though. Risky. There are monks and the houses on each side were genius. And if he converts the fires, he could switch these naval numbers around really, really quick. And look at this. The fight is suddenly going in favor of Salim and Salim's going to... And uh, he's going to try and drop a castle no, there. Alert. What? We have a doubt. This is doubt. We have a doubt. Day three hidden cap alert. This is doubt. A hundred percent. I mean, he's be. either he's going to win be. the game. He's going to lose the game from this castle. A lot of players he's with house lose. trick. Fine. We have no house trick. He's got one. This is okay. so doubt, dude. This is this, this is, so, is doubt. so no. Don't lose that other villager on the left side. Just there's a, there's a path up for the wrath. I like that. And there's also a path up for the latest. And this is not something Salim wants to deal with. And the pikemen are disappearing. And King Steven says, thank you, bud. He's going to run right through with these latest. And the sea. Halb numbers now up to 20. And there they are. 
And this is normally where King Steven, even with the latest, would want to have some. Oh, other look at them just the shred the helms. Uh, I don't know why, because he killed the monk, but whatever. Dude, he's killing everything here. The latest have found. If he gets the walls up to the edge of the map. That's a really nice map setup. Two golds, two stones, and the berries back there. Really solid. But here we go. Maybe a villager kill. As Salim comes in, he's blocking with the scout. He's trying to get it with the camel. And. Huh! Yeah, it gets the villager well played. I agree with that. Yep. <clears throat> Definitely agree with that. <clears throat> and uh, the turtle ship pops out. And the turtle ship and the... we got a lot of siege from Slim. He wants to stop this tower. And he lands an insane shot. Oh, my God. He actually denies it. The plan here for Slim was probably to use the Bombard Cannons. There is a Bombard Cannon there. A lot of the helps are going to say about that. They're looking in different areas, right? So Bombard Cannon could swoop in. That's an attack round between the Trebs to do damage to both of them at the same time. One of the Trebs goes down. The next one needs repairs. And the repairs aren't going to be there. Oh, and the Trebs nice, falls. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's, he's over on this side, yeah. I, I just oh, wonder, like, oh. do you... So, Tristan, do you go... That Rhino with the Scout, actually. And Salim knows that there must be goats on the move. And uh, is like, okay, one was going that way. What about the other? And then finds a cow nice. and then finds the other goat. Oh, they're like, I, I got this. Surprise. And there's the militia. That could be a dead bill for Salim, but he does react right away. The micro here from both with the siege is incredible. There go the light cap. Now the monks need to be ready on both sides. You need to be careful that, that we might end up seeing light cap get converted here. Or, or maybe the light cap will just get killed oh, and caught the cannon galleons against the castle. He has to back away. And this is just, this is a special game right now, man. <laughs> this is amazing yeah. what we're witnessing. So... From the start of the match, when you saw these two sieves, did you have any sort of feeling as to maybe if one was better than the other? That's not good at all, Slam. Yeah. I, I, li I like what you mentioned about like late walling, because I know Hera does that, doesn't he? Like when I wa I've watched this stream before and there's army moving in, I I'm stressing out. You need to build this TC after losing that. the skirms. That tells me he didn't notice that the skirms went down and this TC will be denied by Khosrow, and Sigismund reacts. Now, he has actually sent his army sort of, I mean, it's a small a small difference, but yeah. Um, yeah, the um, villagers will definitely add up over time. Oh, that was, yeah. oh geez, forward castle from Khosrow. Oh, needs to go up, it needs oh. to go up. If it doesn't go up, this could be horrible. This could be a doubt castle when Khosrow has yep. the lead. We do see some villagers repositioning and walling to get into an area, and he just abandoned. You can't, you can't go back I, now. I know I'm committing. Three. Okay. All right. Well, we're he gonna see. But as soon as I said that, he went AFK for a second. Well, okay. Not <laughs> AFK. That, that's not like he, he was focusing somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. So how many oh, wanted? He's wanted, so I'm curious yeah. once they see the draft again. If I look at the ship and I go, oh man. I oh, look at the trap! The trap from Khosrow Viper confirmed! Beautiful. Not only does he trap these knights, but he's got monks lined up with conversions, so it's either join us or be killed. And the other guy, yeah, he's walling up already. Wow. And I was going to say with red, I, I mean, that's a long way back to lumber camp. Maybe he could, he could click on the gold and it drops it off. But you know what? As you mentioned, yeah, HC, the hand cannoneers at this age, it's just such a powerful unit. It reminds me of uh, Conks as well, right? Just one of those units that just are ridiculous in Castle Age. Oh man, he's desperate for the conversion here, and he didn't get the conversion on the siege, but he did in the end clear all this up, which is what he wanted to pop. Khosrow's ability to macro slam is insane. Like, it felt like he had a slight lead before, then it turned into a solid lead of 20 bills. Now he's 40 bills ahead? They're hoping to still kill these. They're not a direct counter. They're trying to get around the crossbows. They should be able to with mobility, so they get the hill. There is a problem here, though, and it's just you do not have that much attack with camels, so you're losing quite yeah. a few camels either way. So when you do the one range actually finishing off the opponent or catching up in a game is so difficult oh we got the stone gate there uh, stone gate and the house here from Khosrow. beautiful little oh, trap and he's gonna trap on the other side with the blacksmith no and another side with the university tell me this can't be one of the biggest okay. things nobody said doubt over the last few moments oh god oh, oh god hit. that is a really big hit there's gonna be another one 
Oh no! He's gonna wall the bills. Castle could be denied. There's gonna be another Mega L at some point, maybe. Camels are on the way. Quick gate, quick wall. Okay. 